The time has come to usher in a new brand of dirt bike race. Some of the most courageous motorcycle riders in the world have accepted the challenge of a racetrack without turns. It's the first ever Red Bull Straight Rhythm. From Pomona, California, they've set up a Supercross track, the likes of which we've never seen before. It's the Red Bull Straight Rhythm. Hello, everyone. Jason Wygant joined by seven-time AMA National Champion Rick Johnson. And RJ, this is going to be something incredible. It's an unwound Supercross track. And we'll show you the race format that we're going to do. We're not going to do laps today. Instead, it's basically side-by-side -side drag racing motocross style. The format has two classes, 250 and open, generally 450 bikes in that division. We'll have a round of 16, then we'll work our way to quarterfinals, semifinals, a race off for third place, and of course the finals with the fastest two riders throughout the afternoon in both classes. But the real key, it's a two out of three matchup in every single round. So if you make one mistake, you better bounce back and get back to work very quickly. And that's RJ, where you've seen a lot. What's going to happen, man? And that's where stamina is going to play key. So you have to be fast every round, but if it does do one and one, where each guy wins an event, it goes to an, into a sudden death victory. So the third, the winner of the third event transfers. So you want to make sure you're as fast as you can be every time out. Now, we've never seen a race quite like this before. Some of the riders have ridden a track like this, but what's going to happen when we actually drop the gates and make it happen? Oh, what's awesome about this is that you take all the elements of a Supercross track and you set it best. You unwind it. You make it straight. So we're not going around a circle. We're not doing anything. And a couple elements have changed right now. 50 seconds of fury. So there's no waiting. There's no pacing yourself. and There's no waiting for the next lap. It's one lap. Get to the finish. Absolutely. Let's get a rider's perspective. We'll send it to Kelly Stavist, who's with James Stewart. And he was the fastest qualifier in the open round. And yesterday we saw you gain a lot of ground on your brother Malcolm through that whoop section. Where do you see the biggest opportunity to gain ground or, or potentially lose it against the rest of the field? Uh, probably this rhythm section up here. These guys are going like three, four, four or something. So uh, got to figure that one out. And, and the whoops again. Uh, the track's a little drier today than it was yesterday. So the whoops are getting a little tougher. So the speed probably be a little slower today. As you move through the field, how might your riding style change depending on who you're matched against, specifically Travis Pastrana on that two-stroke? I just got to try to stay away from him. <laughs> no, no, me and Travis are joking around. I told him to stay on the white side of the line. He'll be all right, so we'll find out. All right, James Stewart will face Scott Champion in this first round of 16. For a look at our 250 class, here's Tina Dixon. Thanks, Kelly. I am with the number one qualifier in the 250 class. And Marvin, you've had a chance to race out on the track some practice time. How confident are you with your lines at this point? Well, I am confident, but uh, you know, it's not easy. You know, one mistake and then the guy next to you can pass you right away. So it's uh, it's going to be really interesting. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, looks like lots, lots of people are here today. So uh, it's a beautiful day. It's really hot. But uh, yeah, can't wait to get out there it's, uh, and try to win every run I, I, I'm in there, you know, and then try to make it to the, to the main event. It's going to be some great racing today. Back to you guys. All right. Th thanks, Kelly and Tina. And thanks, of course, for 16 fast guns at 250s and the Open Clash for coming in racing with us. But we want you to be part of the program as well. So here's your call to action. Give us your hashtag straight rhythm on your Twitter and your Instagram and everything on social media and follow along with our live webcast here. All right, RJ, we're going to put a little pressure on you before we put it on the riders. We've seen qualifying. Give us some favorites. What do, who do you expect to be up front? Well, I want to start off with the two guys that are the, the no one's expecting to win. It's Travis Pastrana and Grant Langston. But both of these guys, we watched them yesterday, and they threw down great runs. With 50 seconds, not 20 minutes, it can be all the difference in the world. And Travis has that big two, uh, 500 two-stroke, so he's going to be fast later on. But it's getting dry and slick, going to be a little bit sketchy. So the guys that were fast, James Stewart, Malcolm Stewart, I got to go with those guys in the, in the main event for the 500, or the open class, I should say. And Marvin and Hill, they looked dynamite when it came to, to the lights. And what was really cool is when you get these guys together, they really seem to push each other to another level. So once we get to some racing, it should be really fun to watch. Let's get a little more perspective from the riders here on this first ever event. I decided to race in the Red Bull straight rhythm because it just looked like an absolute blast. I mean, I still ride dirt bikes all the time. And this year I've been really focusing on the fun events. And for this event to come out, really excited. I think the event's going to be awesome and the reason why is a straight rhythm. It's a half a mile and it's down a drag strip. No turns, just straight, wide open. Hit everything as fast as you can, hair ball it. Just try and get to the end first. 
I've always been a, uh, a jumper kind of guy, so to be able to just have pretty much a straight rhythm section in a row definitely kind of suits my style. A track with no turns definitely plays to my strengths. I've always been known for the guys that's been most aggressive, uh, wheelies and the whoops, and if you don't have to come out of a turn and hit the whoops, you should be able to take uh, more chances than everybody else. I don't know if I'm still willing to do that, but for one race, hell yeah. I think the concept to the race is really cool and unique. It's something new. Just the kind of breakdown in the bracket racing of being able to race against a few different people a few different times before moving on to the next level. So, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect. That's the cool thing about it. It's kind of going to be challenging, and you know, you also got to think it's not that you got to worry about the guy next to you, it's also you got to think about what's in front of you half a mile. It's just different. I mean, no turns. You just got to be really precise with your uh, your timing and your being really smooth and limit your mistakes and you know, try not to case anything. It's really hard to say how I'm going to stack up. I haven't raced these guys in forever. I feel like I'm as good as I was when I was racing, but uh, times change, man. People progress. Everyone gets faster. So, you know, if I can just be competitive with these guys, I'll be pretty happy. To me, I'm excited for it. It's going to be fun. Like you know, it's, it's something completely different that we've never done before. So I'm really excited for it. There's a lot that can happen. So I think this event is going to put every rider kind of on a more equal playing field. I feel like everybody is so excited about it, and they, they can't wait to, to see uh, to see us racing. Well, this is unbelievable. We did lay it out side by side with a drag racing course, but it's double the length to get to that 50 so second lap time they're used to from Supercross. It's crazy. Well, we got everything. And right in the middle, you can see at the midway point, we have a sand section where they separate. So you lose contact with the other guy. And that's where Travis with that 500 has been making ground. I don't know about my prediction here. A minute ago, I was talking about all these. I see all these different guys. It's open. Let's show you the course here with our animated track map and give you an idea of even how they built this thing. We start out with a flat track race facility. They bring in a ton of dirt. Well, several thousand <laughs> tons, as a matter of fact. They start out with a very tricky rhythm section. A lot of riders think that's the most difficult part of all. Well, in Supercross, normally when you take off, you just got a long section. So you go first, second, third gear, or second, third gear into the first turn. Now, they, before they hit third gear, they're already going into a roller section. Then they have to go into a hard braking, into a wall, into a uh, rhythm section where they're doing some two, three, Three, some three, four, and then they're doing step on, step offs with that long old school roller section where we're seeing guys where I think it looks kind of cool hanging off the back of the bike like we did back in the 80s. And as they generate that kind of speed, they're up to fourth gear, which they normally don't hit as Supercross. They're hitting a 90 footer at the finish line, which is much bigger than a typical Supercross jump. Well, but and when you watch these guys doing it, they're just having fun with it. They throw it sideways. We've seen a little tribute to Jeremy McGrath's a couple knack knacks and things like that. So at that point, they're having fun. It's really what it's all about, although we're going to get down to business and actually do some serious racing in a moment. We'll give you some of the facts behind this track. There are 80 jumps, so good luck figuring out all the fast lines with a little bit of practice they've had. And what's really interesting, that section five back-to-back -back tabletops are just going on and off, on and off. Exactly. 30 feet of whoops. The longest jump is 90 feet, 10,000 cubic yards of dirt. Unbelievable. 1,000 semi-truck loads. I mean, that's a lot of dirt. Absolutely. Okay, so let's see what it's like to actually be on board and ride. We set Kerry Hart, one of the big names of this sport, out here with the helmet cam. He'll show you what it's like to actually ride it. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Kerry Hart. I'm here to give you the course preview at Red Bull Straight Rhythm. All right, here I am pulling into the starting gate. At this point, race is getting ready to take off. RPMs are up, waiting for the gate to drop. Pop out the start. Now keep in mind, this is coming from a very old, washed up super cross rider's perspective. So I'll make it through this thing as fast as possible. This section right here is probably one of the most technical parts. The guys are doubling to that single. At any point through here, you're gonna see different rhythms, doubles, triples. A couple guys were quadding this section right here. This is gonna be where the race is kind of won and lost in my opinion, because this is where the guys are having the most trouble with. Speed bumps up, double, double through. This part also, you have your step up, off, 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 and a third off. At this point, my heart was beating pretty hard, but uh, you know I was able to keep it on two wheels. This section actually works out really well. You kind of get to take a couple deep breaths. It's a you know tricky sand section into a little speed check. Now right here you have ten different singles. Some guys are tripling through. I saw a couple guys quadding through, but these are all the exact same size. Coming into this technical double, I did not do the double because I was the guinea pig out there that day. But actually watching some of these guys are really struggling with that section. Here we go into the whoops. Once again, 
Supercross has changed quite a bit since 1998 when I raced it, but uh, I got my way through it. They start to open up here. These are more like sand rollers off the back of the bike skimming. And here you come into the big finish line, 100 foot jump. Once again, I did not feel like guinea pigging this sucker today, but uh, you'll see all the, all the big boys doing the proper job and that's your rhythm. Not bad for a guy who just rides a motorcycle for fun <laughs> nowadays. That's not money for him anymore. He lets the riders do that. Fans really starting to roll in here to Pomona, and it's going to be a very hot day out here as well. So that might test the riders also. And you see the water in the track. We expect it's going to change a lot because of that sunshine. Exactly right, Jason. And some of the guys went from uh, intermediate tires yesterday because that's what you're going to want from the start. But as they're going down and building speed, the sun is drying out the track, and it's becoming hard and slick. So a lot of the guys went to the Dunlop hard pack tire. We're going to start our racing today with our 250 class. Let's show you the lineup of riders who qualified yesterday. Some big names, guys like Justin Bogle, won a Supercross title this year. Marvin Muscan, a two-time world champion in motocross from Europe. Then some other riders on the comeback trail, some amateurs, a great mix of veterans and newcomers. We'll show you what it looked like yesterday when we ran our qualifying. Justin Bogle, fourth with that Supercross title under his belt. I think a favorite coming in. I'm sure he wants more than fourth place today. Well, he's one of those riders that, that have been on his bike for a while, but some of the guys, this is their first actual riding competition. Like right him. now we're seeing Jesse Nelson, who is, who's been there with, with uh, TL, the TLD team, but now they're not on Hondas anymore. They are on KTMs. And KTM was on fire. They had the two Red Bull KTM factory riders, Justin Hill, New to the team, Marvin Muscan, who's been on it for a while, they were facing off together in practice, and they pushed each other to be first and second in qualifying. Right there, and you, I love the way Hill just wheelied off that tabletop. Didn't he has so much confidence, doesn't even put his front wheel down, just keeping the rhythm and going forward. So at least from what we saw yesterday, the KTM bikes are going to be the ones to beat their 1-2-3 in the qualifying times, Muscan, Hill, and Nelson. And that leads us to this bracket. Essentially, you have the fastest riders against the slowest early in the program. So Muscan, who was number one, will go against the 16th fastest, McNeil, the freestyle specialist, and they'll work their way forward into, again, quarterfinals, semis, and then the finals. And to give everybody an idea, the gap that we've seen from Marvin and the 16th place rider was seven seconds. So there is a pretty big gap, but those guys have also gotten a chance to move forward. And they got to see what the faster riders did to try to pick up their times. Here are the matchups. Again, it'll be Muscan against McNeil, the Australian rider who's ridden freestyle, but did quite Qualify for a couple of motocross nationals this summer as well, so he's no slouch. And then the next round, this should be a fun one. Hill, you really like the speed that he was showing. Darren Durham, a new member of a KTM squad as well, he's on the gas. Yeah, as well. And these guys, they're learning as the day goes on, and they're going faster and faster every run. So yesterday was their first day on the track, so I'm not going to put all of my faith in qualifying. Jordan Smith, an amateur rider, moving up to the pros against Cody Gilmore, who's a real veteran, has raced Supercross and Arena Cross in his time, so that should be interesting. Justin Bogle, let's see what he can do. And also Ryan Surratt, uh, son of uh, a guy that I used to race with, and so did Jeremy McGrath, Willie Surratt. So it's going to be interesting. He's a young guy. Let's see what he can do. Chris Blows, the veteran, normally races a 450, plans on racing Arena Cross on a 250 this year, so he drops into this division against Austin Politelli, a popular privateer from not too far from here. Also, Jesse Nelson with the TLD team against Keith Tucker. So this is they're starting to get a little bit closer matched at this point. And then beyond that, Tucker, one of the amateur riders. Then you have a rider who was sensational as an amateur and has had a rough go of it as a pro, making a comeback today. Nico Izzy taking on the very popular privateer, Tevin Tapia. Just uh, jo Justin Hill is out there against Michael Lieb. Michael Lieb, another local boy from California, did some phenomenal things, went to Europe, came back. Should be a great run. Let's send it back to Tina. Well, I am with one of the favorites in the 250 class, Justin. As you guys prepare out here, you'll be racing head to head. It's a little bit different format. So what's the greatest challenge when you got the other guy right there next to you? Um, you got to get a good start and you got to not make any mistakes at all. That's the tough thing is there's not enough time in the race to make that back up. So. Just being clean with your lines and uh, trying to minimize the mistakes. And it's hot out here. How do you think this heat's going to affect the track? I mean, the track's already pretty dry, and it's going to get dusty. So not ideal conditions, but we're out here. It's hot. It's, you know, 100 plus. So it is what it is. Everyone's got to race it. So Best of luck. I know you guys are hungry to get out there. Guys, I'll send it back to you. Now you would think with just a 50-second lap time, ah, oh, they can't get tired. The heat's not going to be that much of a factor. But these guys were very winded by the end of those 50-second runs. And you throw this heat in here, it's going to be a big factor. Yeah, as, as Justin said, it's 100-plus, and they're doing intervals. So imagine if you ever did any kind of workout that you run a, a sprint around a lap, then you walk a lap, and then you do another sprint. It, the first one, not so bad. Second one's starting to get bad. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, they start to get painful. So it's how fast you recover is going to be the key here. Now the other thing, though, that you've experienced in your racing days, these guys do 
you train in the heat. It's not a complete shock to the system. These guys have ridden in these conditions plenty of times. Well, <laughs> Kelly and Tina have, have more. They're going to be in the heat more than the riders. The wind's actually going to feel good, but they're going to sweat like a ton as soon as they stop. Interesting. Okay, we're getting opening ceremonies underway here in Pomona. Let's send it down for our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stones. That's Seedless performing the National Anthem. You hear the crowd in the background starting to get fired up. We're not too far away from racing here. One of the big stories, well, the comeback from this rider. For more, let's send it back to Kelly. Motocross events are normally divided into two classes, 450 and 250, and that would be the case here at Red Bull Straight Rhythm. If not for the unique taste of one man, Travis Pastrano will be riding this 500cc two-stroke Suzuki, affectionately called RM Zilla. Earlier this week, Travis sat down with us to tell us why he thinks this bike could give him an advantage and just how he plans on winning here at Straight Rhythm. The Red Bull Straight Rhythm is right up my alley. I mean, it's everything I'm good at. All the jumps, all the aggression, minus the turns and the slowing down part. The beauty of this event that the Red Bull's putting on is you can pretty much run anything. It's a drag race. I'm a two-stroke guy. The bike that I'm running is a 500cc two-stroke in an RMZ 450 frame. The RMZilla is basically my answer to everyone saying you have to ride four strokes because they're just so much more powerful. Now I've got the most powerful bike on the track. I'm excited. I feel really good on the bike, but even though I'm as fast as I was in 2003, uh, I don't know that's really good cutting. Everyone else's strategy is to stay as low as possible. Well, I'm going to use the 500. I'm just going to try to jump as many things as possible. So my strategy is to touch the ground the least amount of times, and uh, hopefully that'll get me to the finish line first. The Red Bull Straight Rhythm course is going to be so much fun. I just can't wait to see everyone out there and have a good time. Well, thanks to this 500 two-stroke, it truly is an open class. And you can explain to the folks who used to ride bikes like that, a two-stroke is faster than a four-stroke CC to CC. And then he's got 50 extra CC on top of that. Exactly. What we saw yesterday was Travis was making time at the end of the sections. But what had happened with that four-stroke is so much torque, it's, it's, he's getting pulled right from the very beginning. But when it comes to top speed, nothing matches that 500. It's going to be fun. Let's show you what it looked like in our open division. These are the riders that will be competing. Travis, certainly one of the big names amongst them. Good to see James Stewart back in action. Grant Langston, my broadcast partner in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, like Pastrana again to be a racer again, at least for one day today. He looked pretty good in qualifying yesterday. Josh Hill, that's Justin's brother. He had some phenomenal battles with Dean Wilson during, throughout practice yesterday. But then also one of the guys that did one of the most remarkable things in Supercross, Kyle Partridge. He did that wheelie where he 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 he, uh, he rhythm, uh, doesn't rhythm, but manualed like yep. six whoops, so unbelievable. Yeah, he's a big, tall guy. We'll see what that does on a track like this. Here's some highlights from the riding yesterday. 
Justin Brayton, new to the BTO Sports KTM team, was matched up against Pastrana in their practice and qualifying runs. Makes a mistake and Pastrana goes by. His one mistake, he was kind of lollygagging a little bit, and then Travis pulls off the first win. He's swapping side to side. Great job. And it was cool to see Malcolm and James Stewart hooked up in their runs together. Malcolm gave his older brother all he could handle, and for that he ends up fourth fast. It's pretty impressive. And what was great, these two guys went back and forth. You know, everything, nothing's the same. Different bikes, different body types, but they, are, they do come from the same household. Brayton ended up third fastest. A lot of people think he's a dark horse pick, always fast through the whoops and the jump combinations. He's back on KTM. He loves it. We talk to him, and he really enjoys riding the bike. And then Wilson adjusting to a new KTM himself. Again, you see these highlights. We've mentioned the battle that he had with Josh Hill. Once Wilson figured it out in his final two practice runs, he ended up second fastest. I have to tell you, I was watching Dean Wilson yesterday, and he was figuring out the bike every time. He said this is the third time on the bike. He's getting more and more comfortable every time. And the fastest overall, perhaps no surprise, James in those runs with Malcolm. Malcolm ended up fourth, and James was the fastest qualifier, nearly broke that 50-second mark. We'll see if he can get under that today. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Does he have something up his sleeve? Because he was talking about, well, should I maybe do three or four? We don't know. But James Stewart, always spectacular to watch. That's usually the style, keeping that stuff, as they say, in the back pocket and using it come race time. So we might not have seen the best of Malcolm and James and the rest of this field until we go racing today. Here are the brackets that were seeded by those qualifying sessions. Again, the fastest against the slowest in the first round. So Scotty Champion's got to go up against Stewart, champion of privateer. Pastrana will be racing against Josh Hansen. That's that is going to be a great race. Both guys <laughs> very tall. Both guys very fast. Josh Hill also against Vince Freezy. It's going to be a great race. So again, champion against Stewart. That will start it off. About a four-second gap between champion's lap time and Stewart's. We call it a lap time or call it a straight time? Yeah, the, you, you, you can't. You don't go around in straight rhythm. You go through. <laughs> Excellent point. Second round. This is the one we're really intrigued by. Travis Pastrana and Josh Hansen. Josh has come back and forth, back and forth. He's done everything from X Games to freestyle. Best whip and all that so both guys unbelievably talented and then after those two square off in their best two out of three the next group hill that's the older brother of justin from the 250 class switching over to a kawasaki after racing super cross on suzuki's last year against vince freezy who's a privateer on suzuki then we got Malcolm Stewart and Brett Metcalf. Malcolm looked very good. And he's also got in his back pocket the guy with the fastest lap time. So he can converse back and forth with James. But I think once it gets to a main event, and if you see a Stewart main event, all bets are off. Oh, that would certainly be exciting to watch. And Kyle Chisholm, who's been racing all over the place, including his summer in Canada, back down here in the States. He'll be going up against Kyle Partridge. You mentioned earlier Partridge, the tallest rider out here. We'll see how that plays on a long, rough course like this. Justin Brayton and also Ryan Morris. Ryan is one of those guys that's a test rider for KTM. Uh, a spot opened up. Ryan came out, was very fast yesterday, getting more and more comfortable back into the Supercross. But Justin Brayton was on fire yesterday racing against Travis. Next up, you'll see Shane McElrath, normally a 250 rider. He'll be on a, a 350 KTM now, debut for that uh, team TLD on those bikes. Jake Canada, a privateer here from California, will be facing him. And then, then we have Dean Wilson, who was who looks very, very comfortable, getting very fast, and also Grant Langston. Great to see the old boy out there. Yeah, and he looked good. Speaking of Dean Wilson, who is second fastest, he's down trackside with Kelly. Second fastest after making the switch from Kawasaki to KTM and from 250 up to 450. Dean, with all the changes, you come out and qualify second. How were you able to get a handle on this bike so quickly? Yeah, it's good. Uh, I feel pretty good. Just uh, I don't have much time on it, so I'm just going to have fun. It's a fun event. It's only straight, no turns, so just uh, yeah, go, go as fast as I can in a straight line, and hopefully I get to the finish first. Can you, and is there any reason to hold back in some of the earlier rounds and save a little something for the end? Yeah, I think uh, in the earlier rounds, I could maybe try some different things to see what's faster. Uh, I was kind of tinkering around in practice, seeing if I could do this one rhythm section. It's, it's really big, but uh, if I can make it happen, it would be fast. So we'll just see how it goes, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, just do my best. All right, Dean Wilson off to a good start in this open class. Almost time to go racing here, but first, let's send it back to Tina. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. I am now here with Sal Masakela, the host of the Red Bull Signature Series. Sal, you have seen a lot over the last couple of years, but what, what is it about the Signature Series that sets it apart from any other show or event? I think my favorite thing about Signature Series is that we take existing sports that people already love and figure out ways just to put a little salt, a little pepper, a little spice on it, and, and try something new. And you get to do them in the most authentic places, in the, in the places where the sports are really 
the, you know, the audiences are used to seeing them and they, and, they, and they get amped up for it. And something like this, Straight Rhythm, is like, this is crazy. You know, here we are in the IE, a place that, you know, is known for, for its dirt bike love. And then you take like Excite Bike, which I used to play as a kid fervently, and now it's in real life. And when I walked up here and I saw this track and, and, and seeing these guys just have at it, uh, it's exciting. It's one of the things I think that makes the Signature Series special. And when will this event be part of the Signature Series? Uh, this is going to be December 20th on NBC. So just think of it as like your pre-Christmas party. It's going to be a good day, guys. Kelly, I'll send it over to you. With Zach Freeberg, who qualified ninth here in the 250 class. Zach, all weekend long, all the riders are talking about how much fun this event is. But now, as we get ready to get it started, how are the nerves? Uh, not too bad, you know, you just look at it like you do every other race and uh, just go out there and have fun. You know, it's tough and it's technical, but, uh, you know, as long as you, you know, keep it on two wheels and stay in your lane, I think you'll be good. You'll be facing Darren Durham, or Durham. anything that you need to do in relation to competing against him to come out on top? Not really, just be consistent. I mean, that's going to be the main key, you know, not screwing up in some of the rhythms. Just, just be consistent. That's going to be the, the key. All right, we're ready to get these 250 class races underway. Jason? Thanks, Kelly. We'll show you some of the rules here that the riders are going to have to follow. You're not able to block pass and take guys out in corners, but you do still have to be careful to stay in your lane while you're riding. Do not change lanes. It sounds like driver's education, but here's the <laughs> deal. These, this is a drag race. You're going side by side, but if we, we've seen guys, the way they scrub, some guys favor the right, some guys favor the left, so the wheel has it leaks mm -hmm. over a little bit, but do not change lane because the guy could have so much speed coming up on you. Yeah, and also different than a typical Supercross or Motocross race, if you go off course, normally the rule is you can just drive along the side, skip the obstacle as long as you don't gain time. Here, you have to clear every obstacle. So you'll have to turn around on the side of the track, do a 180, come back and make sure you do all the obstacles. No matter how bad your run is, you have to do all the obstacles, get to the finish. Well, that was where Grant Lanks and I were talking because they asked me, the producers asked me, hey, Rick, do you want to take a lap? Uh, lap, which is not a lap. Do you want to take a shot at it? No, I do not. Carrie Hart, thank you very much for jumping on that grenade for me. But Grant Langston, we joked about, hey, why don't you just start, go off to the right, go all the way down, don't, don't, don't make an advantage, and then go for the end. But you can't do that. If yes. you go off, basically your race, your round is over. Save your energy and come back for the next round. Well, that brings up something you were saying all throughout practice yesterday. You cannot give up. If you make a huge mistake early and fall behind, you can come back. But if you end up winning your race, you can celebrate like Travis Pastrana likes to. I think he does a backflip coming out of bed in the shower. <laughs> it just, he backflips everything. That guy just, and as a matter of fact, Travis, you didn't backflip the, the, the short course truck at the race this year. You side flipped it, but you still were successful in getting that thing over and over and over and over. <laughs> it's interesting mix sometimes of on purpose flips and flips that he didn't mean to have happen. Let's give you the race format again here. Again, we have two classes, 250s and the open class, which is primarily 450 four strokes and a few wild cards in there. And it's a round of 16 and then we'll break it through to eight riders, four riders, two riders to battle for third and then the finals with con uh, conceivably the two fastest riders here and every round is best two of three. Riders are in the gate, and we're ready to go racing here. We're going to start it with the 250 class. We previewed it earlier. Marvin Muscan, the Frenchman, former two-time world champion, against Jared McNeil, who's a freestyler, who is no slouch on a motocross bike, qualified for two Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Nationals just this summer, so he knows what he's doing. Now, let's point out the lane choice. Faster time gets the choice, but they have to flip right. going into their second run. Right, so a lot of guys, we've seen guys winning on both lanes. So as the track deteriorates and guys are watching it, the lane, the preferred lane might change. Also, these gates are wider than an average uh, Supercross gate, where in a Supercross you get one rut. Here, you can move slightly to the left or slightly to the right, because I used a, a term when I was a riding coach, condition before position. You want the best condition of your starting spot, so you go straight over the gate, and so the jump is, so the gate is not your first obstacle or jump. Here it is, we're starting Red Bull Straight Rhythm for the first time ever. Muskin with a good run, both guys run side by side. You see uh, Marvin get a great start and now he's up to about a bike length lead. And this, the rider saying, maybe the trickiest rhythm lane of all, and you see Muskan stretching it to get onto that table. Step on, step off. Some of the guys were jumping over the top of that table, but with that lip, it helps him out quite a bit. Marvin staying low over the dragon back and pulling his lead even further. And now picking up a lot of speed, but they're gonna have a wall jump, and now the sand section. This is labeled as the midway point of the run. You might not think that the riders know what's going 
going on, but they can hear if a guy is right beside them. So right now, Marvin can relax a little bit and take his eyes off of not just attacking 100%, but looking for other lines for the next round. And once they hit this double, it's into this tabletop and supercross style whoops. Then as you like to say, those old school rollers, this is where they pick up the most speed they're going to have at any point. And the finish line jump, Luskan takes the first matchup. Again, it's best two out of three. He'll be back to race McNeil again once a few other riders have come through. Let's show you some of the highlights. Watching Marvin, he's, he's got a combination of, of absorbing the, the jumps to stay low. Watch his head. This is what I'm going to focus on all day long. But right here over the top of the rhythm section, he gets over that dragon back nice and clean, clears the thing, scrubs the next jump on, step off, and watch this. Nice, stays, stays real low. Now gets on, off, into the big whoops. Stays pretty balanced. Then he starts to lean back, old school, straight to the finish. And we'll follow it up with this. Darren Durham up against Zach Freeberg. Durham just now adjusting to this new team. He's going to be on the uh, Lucas Oil Troy Lee squad, which is switched from Honda to KTM. So a new ride for Durham. Let's see how he does up against Zach Freeberg, who we talked to earlier. Great starts by both racers. Looks like Durham gets a slight advantage going into the first wall. Freeberg then able to get back in front of him. They say that this double is one of the trickiest because it sets you up for this rhythm lane, and Freeberg holding his own right now. Still about a half bike length on Durham. Freeberg is a, is a very tall, lanky rider, and he's using his height as an advantage. Some of the old school guys like Ron Lachine were very good at using his long legs to help him out. We'll see that later with Dean Wilson. Durham making a run. This is a wall jump and into the sand, and this is a great race. They are absolutely side by side. When, when, when it comes to betting, you would think that uh, Durham would smoke him, but right now Freeberg is doing an awesome job, and that's what we said. These guys are going to get more and more comfortable each time, but that was a game changer right there. Yeah, triple through the center of that for Durham. Freeberg only doubled, and now Durham's just got to put his head down and get to the end of these whoops. Careful, don't hit the white line. <laughs> Durham takes Great it. Great job by both drivers, but want to give it to Durham. He's the one that, as you said earlier, do not give up. Don't, don't, uh, don't relax at all. We're going to show you in slow-mo here on the tables. Both riders getting on and off very, very cleanly, but Durham stays a little bit lower right here, and he also gets right up on top. So both riders doing great, doing, using everything to their advantage. The next matchup. This is interesting with a lot of the uh, amateur riders coming through the ranks. Jordan Smith. Who I believe we'll have to race a couple of rounds of arena cross to earn his supercross standing for next year against Cody Gilmore, who's done the arena cross thing and the supercross thing. He's a real veteran at this. But Smith, a lot of people buzzing about this kid yesterday, showed some great style in practice to see how they do. Smith with about a bike length going into the whoops. We'll see if he can carry it all the way through. Right now, where they break, you can hear and you can also feel when a rider's next to you. Smith tripling out of that first big double, trying to get a run. You see, he's got the three-digit number because he's yet to earn any professional points. This is essentially the first professional race of his yeah. life, but he looks strong. But these guys come from Loretta Lenz and Ponca City and everything, so they're no slouch. They've been racing at a top level for a long time, and right now he can, he can hear that he's got a lead. He can relax just a little bit, but not too much because we've seen riders come back. Yep, you were saying, Key, do not give up if you're back there. You're always one mistake away from catching right back up. But Jordan Smith seems to have this course handled pretty well right now. He's headed toward the tabletop and then the whoops. Now he's into the tall Supercross style whoops, and we can see it starting to get dry and slick, Jason. And now he starts to lean his weight back for the old school rollers. But right there, Smith with a uh, 53 seconds. So he's about a second off of Marvin. Well done, though, for Jordan Smith taking the win over Cody Gilmore. We'll go right back to the starting line. Justin Bogle, a lot of hype coming into this one with the Supercross title last year. Ryan Surratt, still an amateur at this point. He'll probably race Loretta Lynn's next August before turning pro. So this is a great opportunity to get some experience on a Supercross type track. These guys will remember this for the rest of their life. They're rubbing, <laughs> they're rubbing elbows with the guys that they want to beat in two years. So to get a chance to go out and preview what, you're in, what, what you have in store for you in a couple years is priceless. But Bogle is the defending champion in Supercross right now. You can see him getting ready all fired up, but he cannot see what that rider's doing next to him. That's the difference between here and Supercross. You don't have that elbow. And once we complete this run, that's four straight runs, and we'll go back to the top. We'll have Muscan against McNeil, Durham, and Freeberg, Smith, Gilmore, and then run these guys again. We'll have an A group, and then we'll follow it with a B group. So everyone will have their second runs coming up after this. Talked to Bogle this morning. He said, man, this is fun. This is his style of race. He's having a good time, but now it's time to get serious. Exactly, exactly. But he also knows where he was at uh, from yesterday's qualifying right now. Got a great jump, about a half a uh, bike length on Surratt. 
But right now, Surratt looks like he might be coming back. Manuel's the last four bumps, so there he goes. He's coming right back in the mix. Yeah, good job by the kid. You're dealing with a Supercross champion here. He's just an amateur, and he was side by side with him for a moment. Then one jump combo that Bogle was able to get down a little bit quicker allows the Geico Honda man to open it up. If you're wondering what some of the guys, if, you, if you're not a Supercross fan, you're wondering what the guy's doing hanging off the side of the bike. That's called scrubbing. What he's doing, he's trying to keep, keep his body and his CG as low as possible. So as he comes up to these jumps, he wants to stay as low as he can and jump as many obstacles as possible. Again, it's best two out of three. So if Bogle wins this one, they'll still come back and race again. If a rider wins two in a row, the other rider is eliminated. If they both go one and one, they will have a third one as a runoff. Bogle has this one over Surratt and a little leg swag as they call it over that big finish line jump. He did a 52.5, so he's still about a half a second off of Marvin. We watch him uh, Bogle, you see he's taking his leg off. What he's trying to do is force the front of the bike down. So by him, what, the, what looks like spurring the, spurring the motorcycle like a cow, he's <laughs> trying to get that front wheel down, get his weight forward so he can accelerate as hard as possible as soon as he gets back on the ground. You don't have time to land, set up, and go. Bogle is charging 100%. But you mentioned that lap time. Bogle sure looked impressive, but the quickest run there was Muscan with a 51.7. He's now back at the starting gate. Run number two between he and McNeil. Again, it's best two of three. So if Muscan wins this one, McNeil is eliminated, and Muscan will move on into the quarterfinals. If McNeil wins it, then these two will be back for the rubber match, which would be the third in the best two of three format. So as a rider, you're going to prefer one lane over the other because, like as I was saying before, sometimes guys favor scrubbing to the left or to the right. What I mean by that is when you throw the back of the bike out, do you like it out to the left or to the right? Myself, I always preferred throwing, throwing it to the right a little bit, but that was just my style. Most guys prefer left. And again, they flip-flop those lanes. Muscam was on the opposite side the first time around. So we'll see if McNeil can fare a little bit better here being on the rider's right. Good launch from Muscan, a little lead going into this first set of rollers. Oh, this double. A lot of runners said Marvin very is, tricky. Marvin is flying. I wouldn't match that against any, any open bike time. Marvin was right on the money. And Marvin's not a real big guy, so he matches up very, very good on the 250s. Got the most power to weight ratio working for him for sure. And you can see what he's doing. Getting a nice lead on McNeil. And then the other thing, some of the guys, you might hear the bikes popping a little bit. That's not because the carbureted wrong, that's a rev limiter. So he's taking it to probably 12,000 RPM, and right there's where the rev limiter kicks in so they don't blow the, blow the motorcycle up. Muscan holds on to win this one, looks like he might. Well, he's still got, he's, not, yeah. he's only halfway right now. And if it was you or I on that bike, Jason, there's It'd no, there, it's, it's not, we would be done right about there. But Marvin <laughs> running very, very strong. And look at this time, 51 seconds. So he's still consistently the fastest guy on the track right now. And McNeil now eliminated the best two or three format. Muscan wins the first two, and that will complete the first round for them. Muscan moving on to the quarterfinals. Let's check it out. We're watching the end of the race with Marvin Muscan. You can see he stays low, letting the bike bounce up, but focus on his helmet. Stays nice and smooth. The bike, the KTM is running very, very smooth over the over the whoops, doing a great job. So we have a first rider to advance. Let's send it down to Tina Dixon. Well, that's right. And you guys said that so far consistently, you've been the fastest guy on the track. How key was that start for you? Because you just ran away with it. Oh uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, it's only the the first uh, first runs. You know, so it's gonna get tougher and tougher. Uh, as we go to uh, close to the to the main event, so uh, just want to make sure you know I hit my lines the perfectly and then uh, go through the until the main event and see how it goes. Best of luck moving forward, guys. Heard some heavy breathing there. 50 exactly. seconds of fury. <laughs> I was going to point that out, is that we're doing intervals here. So you have just enough time to really, they've given you just enough rope to hang yourself. And you can see here, and he's in great shape, but you are using 100% effort. Durham against Freeburg here again. Freeburg was able to lead Durham about halfway through their first run. Then Durham was able to get back in front and win it. So this is a real close matchup between those two. They flip-flop lanes. We'll see if that works in the favor of Freeburg on the 65. Very impressed with Freeburg in their first round. He actually got the jump off the gate. But here we here we see, well, Freeburg with the whole shot to the first wall. And then this very tricky rhythm section. Freeburg, like you said, one of the taller riders out here. Able to handle it this time. Doing a great job. Let's see what Durham can do here on the right side. It's a big series of on-offs. 
Riders are saying they don't even bother rem memorizing how many there are. They just keep hitting them until there aren't any more to hit. Exactly. When you get up, you look out there, you see a whole bunch of brown and go. And here we see Durham <laughs> making a slight advantage going over. We talked about the, the riders were saying that they don't like it when the guy's in front of them. And here we see him making an advantage. Freeberg, remember, got passed by Durham by not tripling that lane the last time. This time it is two triples. It's side by side. The crowd comes to life. It is going to be an all-out drag race to the finish. Freeberg on the back wheel pulls up close. Durham, I think, is just going to edge him out of the line. Unbelievable race. Great job. Freeberg has nothing to be ashamed of. He raced his guts out. Unreal. Taking a look at this, you see Durham just starts to pull him right at the end. I think he beats him by a nose. Freeberg, though, I really got to commend him. He did a great job, and it looks like that left lane might be a little bit faster. And you see Freeberg in midair over that jump. There's Not your shaking advantage. His head. Wow, a that's half close. a bike yep. length, a half a bike length in 50 seconds of, and I said it before, 50 seconds of fury. So it's a wide open deal. So Durham will be matched up against Muscan in the next round. We'll see who's going to be facing off in the next round after this group. Run two for Gilmore versus Smith. Smith, very impressive. The young amateur sensation of the Geico Honda team. See how he does against the veteran Gilmore. He did get the edge on Gilmore the first time they raced a few minutes ago. The lead for Smith as they head into this first wall double. But this is where the race will be won and lost, and oh, Gilmore Case. Gilmore Case, and that's going to take a lot of momentum away from him. But as we talked earlier, do not give up. Keep pushing 100%. Just make sure you, if you can make it back, you got to do it. Yeah, because all, all Smith is is one chase away from exactly. Gilmore being right in this. And it, it, he didn't crash, so he's only about a second behind. So one small mistake by Smith, and, and the race is back on again. But how about Smith carrying the front wheel all the way across that stand section and throwing up a little dust while he's at it? Well, and he's throwing it backwards. You watch it. You see the guys are <laughs> braking, and they're roosting forward. It's awesome to see a guy push the brakes that hard. Here we go, whoop section away is Jordan Smith from advancing to the next round, trying to make it 2-0 and over Gilmore, and he makes it happen. Well Great done job. for the young man in North Carolina. Smith hesitated a little bit going to the whoops. If he, wants to, if he wants to beat these guys for the next round, he cannot hesitate. Watching this, you, you see Gilmore coming up short, casing it, lands, he braces. He absorbs everything. Boots are so much better nowadays <laughs> that guys don't hurt their ankles, and he just keeps charging away. And here's that whoop section you're talking about with Smith. Yeah, Smith just slightly hesitated coming in where you watch Marvin just grab the next gear and go for it. You can't hesitate. So Jordan Smith is advanced, and he's down on the track with Tino. Well, that's right. Jordan does advance, but it's still very early in the racing. So what are you, how are you treating these first couple races? Yeah, for sure. These uh, first couple, uh, you never know what might happen, you know? The rhythms are pretty tough out there. If you mess up one, it's easy for the other guy to win. So you just try and stay consistent and uh, be able to advance. Guys, we're just beginning down here. We'll see who uh, Jordan Smith matches up against in the next round. It could be his teammate, Justin Bogle, or Ryan Surratt, who Smith actually has some experience racing against in the amateur ranks. Bogle and Smith, the two Geico teammates, had some phenomenal side-by-side -side runs yesterday, and that might be a preview we have in round two, but Surratt ha wants to have something to say about that. Well, Surratt is definitely not going to sit because this is your chance. This is, you want to you want to sort of draw the line in the sand, cast the gauntlet, whatever you want to put it, and you want to show these guys, don't get too comfortable because I will be on your heels. And they're locked in. That's actually a freestyle ramp, believe it or not, laid down. That's what they're actually launching from, that steel kind of graded surface. And they actually say it's better traction than dirt. Exactly. It is a, it's almost one-to-one -one traction. They, it's got expanded metal, and it stays constant all day long. And Surratt, I think, has got a wheel yes. on Bogle. The Bogle comes back. I love it. These guys are manual. What I mean by manual is that they're riding the back wheel, like wheeling all the way across those whoops, which is not easy. You see Bogle pulling his leg over and pulling himself back into his lane. Great job by Justin Bogle. Man, that could have got crazy there, but Bogle able to control it. He's got that leg off on almost every jump here. Yeah, he's just he's trying to do as much as he can to keep his body mass as low as possible. But when we get to the rhythm section, now they're trying to preload the bike and jump as high as they can to try to clear three and sometimes four jumps. So he goes two, three, back to three again, back to two, into the wall. 
They get it easy on the mechanic. They don't have to change the foot pegs out as often. <laughs> on the peg about halfway through the run. It looks like Vogel may have young Ryan Surratt covered. He takes it. It's 2-0 and in the first round. And there's a little flare. Yeah, a little respect for Jeremy <laughs> McGrath. Showtime. A little knack-knack. Neck necks a little bigger than they were about 20 <laughs> years ago. So are the jumps. The bike's a little faster, too. Let's give you the replay of the whole shot. Watching the start here, Bogle gets a great job, does a great job making it back. Surratt actually with the whole shot, but Bogle was able to pull him back in before they got to the wall, and he had about an eighth of a bike advantage. So that's it. Bogle has advanced. He'll be racing against his teammate Smith in the next round, and Tina has him. And Justin, you were able to pull your competitor back in there at the beginning. Just walk us through that. Yeah, I uh, didn't get the best start. Kind of messed up the first rhythm, but pulled it together through the rest of the track. I made some bike changes. My bike's working a lot better through the whoops. So uh, hoping, hoping to keep that as a strong point for me. But uh, yeah, Geico Honda, it's, uh, it's, it's running good. Dunlop tires looking up great, so I'm feeling good. All right, best of luck moving forward, guys. All right, we've completed one side of the bracket here in the 250 class of Red Bull straight rhythm. So next up in the following round, you'll have Muscan against Durham, Smith against Bogle. That'll be quarterfinals. But we have another round of 16 here, the B side of the 250 class. This is the other group of eight out of the 16. And our first run will be Politelli against Blows. And uh, Politelli, like you mentioned, a local product. So the heat, the soil conditions, things like that, probably not going to have a big impact on him. Uh, Austin lives about, I'm going to say, 20 minutes from here. So this is old school. He knows this. He also has some standout races in Supercross on the lights class. So keep your eye on Austin Politelli. And Blows has been there, done that. He's been a pro for a long time on a lot of different bikes. And he's very cagey. Blows able to try to pull up on him. A little edge, I'd say, right now for Politelli. It looked like Blows, well, the Blows cases it right there and loses a bike length to Politelli. But, but Austin's one of those tall kids that's going to use his angles. But here comes Blows firing back. Once again, you cannot relax in straight rhythm. Little mistake for Blows early, but nice rhythm through these sections here has allowed him to pull right back on Politelli. So one of the young riders against one of the veterans. And at midway point, they're dead time. Dead heat. Right now, they're going back and forth. Blows with about a half a bike. Going into the, the next rhythm section. Right now we're going, they're going double. Close goes triple, triple. That's gonna pull a little bit on Austin. And now he's about two bike length lead. That made all the difference. And we saw that in a run earlier with Durham. Triple tripling through that 10 pack. That's gonna change it all. At one point, it looked like Politelli had the lead, but Blows comes all the way back to take it. So it's one and oh, and then we'll go back to the starting line and race again well, as this best two or three format. Jason, we, we heard that we heard about the guys saying that that middle is going to be the difference. Here we take a look at Blows. He cases it, and he loses some momentum. He comes up short, cases right on top of it, loses some momentum, but only about a bike length, and then he forces his way back. And here's that midsection you're talking about. Right there. That was the game change right there. Triple, triple. Austin did double, 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 and that's what lost the race for him. Blows able to pull that out, and I guarantee you that Politelli knows exactly what he needs to do that next time around. Well, that's one of the things, man, is you see it and you go, oh, I have to do it. If I want to win, I have to make, I have to make that leap of faith. And uh, Austin's one of those riders that I think he'll do it. Here's Jesse Nelson with, with a TLD racing team. Jesse, you know, obviously has Supercross experience under his belt. And he's also won multi-national championships as an 80 rider. And Keith Tucker is another one of the amateur riders here. You're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your top pros. Let's see how Keith does. Jesse with a slight advantage going into the first wall. Tucker just casing that one a little bit. The riders say that's so difficult because it's blind. You have a huge takeoff and a short landing. Another mistake for Tucker, and now a big lead for Nelson. One of the things that I'm seeing with Tucker is that he's nose high. Some people might think, oh, you don't want to have your nose down because that's going to end you. But you have to have the bike flat because you're charging so hard. And uh, right there, if he's got his wheel out high in the air, when the back wheel hits, it takes another instant for that front wheel to come down. And Jesse Nelson right now has the right combo, but he's still doing 2-2-2, two, 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 then three three, then three again. So that's what I'm saying. What's awesome about this straight rhythm is there's a whole bunch of different songs that, that, you, can, that you can dance to. Roller section away is Nelson from moving on. He goes 1-0, and we'll see if he can do it again against Tucker and try to advance to the next round. He's got the first one tucked away. Not bad for his debut ride on the KTM, and he gives a thumbs up to Tucker.
Taking a look, he's got Jesse's got his body sitting forward, uh, scrubbing down as much speed as he can. What I mean by that is trying, he's trying to stay low, keeps his head and his body low, so he's jumping as far as he can, but keeping that CG low so he can get right back on the ground and accelerate as hard as possible because it doesn't matter if you got the throttle turning or not. If it, those tires aren't digging in the dirt, you're not going anywhere. Look at that in the XMO. You can see, I mean, he is millimeters away from that head. He uh, helmet hitting the handlebar exactly. getting as low as he can this is a game of inches and right with him it's a game of millimeters and he's going <laughs> that fast now a great story here nico is he back in action he hasn't raced for over a year uh he said he's only been on the bike about five times but he feels like he hasn't missed that much time very comfortable on the bike got a little bit of help here from yamaha and rockwell watches gonna get back into it against tevin tapio is one of the nicest and funniest guys to talk about a long time privateer in the 2-1-1. So we'll see if Tapia can top Izzy. Tapia with a slight advantage to the first wall, but here comes Nico coming back. They both get that double clean. Sets him up nicely for this rhythm section. It's still anyone's race. A different rhythm from Izzy allows him to pull out front. And you see that he crowded the line a little bit. So that even though it's we're, we're basically going to drag race in your, own, in your own lane, you can lean on another guy. And Nico is one of those guys, even back when he was on 80s and even 60s, he will stick an elbow in if he has, if he can. But Tapia determined every time Nico's able to pull away, Tapia comes right back. Big mistake. Tapia able to recover and still make it through the 10 pack. <laughs> Tapia basically scrubbed and crashed, saved it, and made time. So hats off to Tapia. Tapia. All right, this is just pure will and grit. These guys are making errors, but Tapia. they're keeping the throttle turn wide open down to the finish. Woo! Awesome job, and listen to the crowd. They love that. That's the one thing that no matter how spectacular everything is, everybody loves a race. And the way we have this set up, by the way, they start at the finish of the drag race track and race to the end where the bleachers are. So you see the fans here get to see this action right up close. You see Tapia starting to make a comeback, but Nico Izzy hanging off the back, just going, giving it everything he's got. And he hears the bike coming, but he does not hesitate. Great job, Nico Izzy. All right, good to see Izzy back and in good spirits. I talked to him earlier today. He seems very, very happy to be back at the races and probably looking forward to another good duel with Tapia. They'll be back again. Look how close that was. Not even a whole bike length. That was an awesome race. It was awesome to see the guys not give up. So we're hearing them breathe more and more because once you throw the adrenaline and competition into the mix, you start holding your breath. It's just natural. You see the finish line, but then all of a sudden you get there, you realize, I got to breathe. I got to breathe. <laughs> yeah, that's secondary. <laughs> Breathing secondary to riding on a short track like this. Justin Hill switching over from Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki to now Red Bull KTM. His debut ride for that team. He's up against Michael Lee. Privateer out here in California, and Leib gets the whole shot on him. Michael Leib, I worked with this kid back in the day. He's also another local boy that has so much intensity. He's not he's not real tall when it comes to stature, but he makes up for it in intensity. But he'll able to get the edge. Hill was second fastest in qualifying yesterday and looked darn good for a rider who has not raced KTM before. And the team says it's a great opportunity for them to get to learn him, his family, his crew, and work with them in a different type of environment instead of a very high pressure event. They're just learning right now, but uh, it appears to be a quick study. I wish I learned like that. I know, right? <laughs> that would not know it. But How Michael Lee is coming back. As I told you, he's, whatever he lacks in size, he's going to make up for intensity. So Michael Lee is charges. So it's going to it's going to come down to who wins this whoop race. Oh, I thought Lee had a wheel. No, late in the rollers. Oh, Hill is able to handle him and he over jumped that finish line. Something fierce. Ouch. We talked about the mechanics checking the spokes and they are definitely going to have to look at that front wheel. That was a way large over jump. Here's uh, to the finish line. Both guys running running side by side, and now you see Lee make up a little bit of ground. But now we go and now we go into the now we go into the whoops, and they're going side by side. Hill just charging as hard as he can. He is not going to hesitate whatsoever. But watch this whip and watch how far he lands out in the flat. A huge Man. whip. Watch it from this angle. Over jumps the landing. This is how tough the bikes are. Bam! Mm. Lands completely flat. Drives away. So we've run the B group through their first run. So now we go to run number two. If you remember these two raced just a couple of moments ago, Blows was able to just get the edge on Politelli. And a lot of it came down to the 10 pack of jumps. Blows able to pull out a couple of triples. So we'll see if Politelli can learn that here. If Blows wins this one, he'll have him beat 2-0 and and move on to the next round. Well, Austin saw what Blows did, and he has to do it this time if he wants another shot. 
Austin with the hole shot and now using his using his leg to carry himself to the to the wall first. Good smooth landing ah, there. Yeah, not bit. quite, yeah. Yeah, blows a little bit cleaner over there, and that pulled the advantage right there. He stepped on, stepped off. That's going to put him ahead of, of Austin. But right now, these guys, pretty close. It's anybody's race at this point. Headed toward the sand after these tabletops. That's the midpoint. Palatelli's got to try to pull something out. Wants to stay close like he was last time, and now try to nail the 10 pack of jumps that's coming up. This is where Blow was able to get the edge last time. Here it is. Blows with two, three. Uh, Austin did the same thing, but he does three in the middle. Uh, pretty close, but still, it's coming down to the whoops. Who's going to put it together? palatelli has got a little length here. He's a tall guy. Let's see if he can use that. The whoops. I think Blows has got him covered. Chris Blows is going to win it. And that should move him on to the next round. Should have Palatelli beat two to nothing in the best of three format. And Chris Blows, he's going to be racing some arena cross, so the rumor is coming up this year. See, he's got the Babbitt's Monster Kawasaki, and it'll be on a 250 in that series. So he's on a 250 today after racing a lot of 450 Supercross. Our next matchup after uh, Blows and Politelli should have Nelson versus Tucker pulling into the starting gate area here. We see Nelson in the in the far in the uh, left side gate closest to us, and then Tucker in the far side gate. Uh, Jesse won the first round, but uh, Tucker was strong. Absolutely, and a Tucker, again, another one of those amateur riders. And uh, the amateur riders, they don't always practice on Supercross tracks, so whoops and rhythm lanes like this, uh, they got to prove to be quick studies. I'm sure they've ridden it here and there, but it's not a daily thing like it probably is for professionals. Well, well we're in Southern California where all the test tracks are. At Kawasaki, Yamaha, KTM, Honda, Suzuki, everyone's got their, their test track. So all these factory riders have a, a test track at, the, at their own facility. These amateur guys, some of them have them in their yard, some of them don't. You can go to like Lake Elsinore, go to Star West, and, and practice a little bit. But the guys with the factory support definitely have an advantage here at Straight River. So let's see if Tucker can pull off the upset here on Jesse Nelson, who won the first round of the 28th. Jesse with a slight jump on the start, and he also pulls out to about a three bike thick lead into the first wall. Oh, and Nelson jumps long on that first double, and I think it was short for Tucker. It worked out about the same. And we saw Nelson look over because he could hear that rider coming up next to him. So he's wondering, well, when I made this mistake, is someone coming up next to me? So right now, Jesse seems to got it back underneath him, and now he's into the second wall with about a bike length lead. Now, an interesting thing to watch, the riders are telling me that the normal instinct is to ride in the middle of the track. It's kind of weird to scrape along the side. You see that Nelson with the lead has gone right to the center. He's not over the line, but he's about as far as he can be without doing it. Well, it's a great strategy because if I was leading and I knew someone was behind me, if I can sort of cloud their vision of what's out there, I'm going to do it and make them uncomfortable. But Jesse Nelson with a great ride, made one small mistake, and he makes his way back up with a 51 second. So Jesse, Jesse Nelson advances. Yeah, one of the fastest times. Only a handful of 250 guys have been able to get into the 51s. Here's that jump, long and see, short. <laughs> yeah, completely flat lands on the face of the third jump. Loses a little ground, but I like what Jesse does. Look over to make sure that he's not uh, in the way of the other rider, then gets right back after it. The great, the one thing about great motocrossers, they have the shortest memories <laughs> known to man. <laughs> and Tina has our round winner. Well, and Jesse, you had that small mistake at the start, but you were able to recover. Tell us about it. Yeah, the track's tricky. Uh, kind of hard to judge some of the jumps so yeah I just came off it a little fast I was uh, I usually scrub to the right off that jump but had to go kind of straight jump on it over jumped it but was able to recover and put in a somewhat all right of a run you know it was enough to move on best of luck yeah thank you and next up this was maybe the closest battle we've seen so far we had Nico Izzy and Tevin Tapia really battling they're on the gate let's send it back to Kelly and Jason, these 450, excuse me, open class riders are now gathering here in the staging area. Malcolm Stewart was fourth quick in qualifying. You've been watching some of these 250 riders go. Is there anything that you can learn by watching them or anything that's caught your attention? Uh, I learned a lot from just watching these guys. Uh, I mean, it's just it kind of what it seems like, just trying not to make a mistake, you know. Um, but it also seems, too, like one of the guys made a mistake in the beginning and then made a mistake at the end and help, helped the other guy to catch up. So. It's all about getting the run down clean. I think that's that's the key, but it seems like everybody's making mistakes because it is a half a mile track, so that's what makes it so tough. 
Dean Wilson told me he might use these opening rounds to try out some new lines, different things. Will you do the same? Oh, yeah, I'll definitely be doing the same thing. But uh, like I said, it's definitely it's kind of reminds you of uh, uh, like Supercross, you know, just getting everything down. It's technical out there. So hats off to Red Bull for these guys to put this rim section to go on and for half miles. All right, thanks, Malcolm. Jason? Thanks, Kelly. Izzy and Tapia, what a battle they had the last time around. Tapia just wouldn't give up. Izzy was able to get the edge by half a bike lane. Well, and you saw it go back and forth. You saw Tapia get the whole shot, Nico come back. Tapia, you know, it went back and forth. So that was a great thing to watch these guys and not give up. We talked about that, uh, you know, as Malcolm was just saying, some guys made a mistake at the beginning, some at the end. You have to be clean. So clean is important, but speed is everything. Only seven hundredths of a second separated Izzy and Tapia the first time they raced. And it's all on the line for Tapia now. Backs against the wall. If Izzy edges him again, he's out. So Tapia has to win this one to try to extend it into the third in the best of three format. But it's got to feel so good for Nico Izzy. We talked about he's been away from racing for a long time. To come back and get a win, a W is a W. It doesn't matter where it's at. So great job for Nico Izzy. And he gets the whole shot here. He's got about a half a bike length going into the first wall. Tapia launching into that wall to catch back up to Izzy and even put a wheel on him. But the jumping combo a little bit better for Izzy on the 341 and he's back out front. I love how gritty both of these guys are. They are both, their foot picks are hanging over the white line. They're rubbing <laughs> on each other. So they're like, it's like two dogs with a fence between them. They're barking at each other, but they just can't quite take the other guy out. Yeah, they, they think that they want to be able to get to find a place to have some contact. Yeah, Izzy with a small edge again. And yeah, Nico with a small advantage, but we saw that Tapia came back in these whoops, so Nico's got to do everything right, and he does. He does the triple-triple and gains about a two-bike link advantage. All right, so we're seeing in this 250 division, you've got to get at least one triple jump through that 10-pack, if not two, if you want to win. Izzy is going to make it happen. He goes 2-0 on Tapia and moves into the next round. Looks back, and I am so proud of this guy, man. You know, he's on basically a production bike, so we're going to watch a little slow-mo right as these guys go back and forth and back and forth. It's awesome to watch every little advantage of body and twitch. You see how high Nico's getting where he does the other rhythm section a little bit better than Tapia. Gets on the tabletop, hits the small lip, clears himself off, gets his body down, leaning forward, accelerating. It's, it's a work of art, man. I hate to say it. I don't want to sound like that guy, but it is beautiful to watch this in super slow-mo. And our mm. round winner, Nico Izzy, is down on the track with Tina. <laughs> well, and you guys were neck and neck, but talk about those triples. Those seem to make the difference for you. Yeah, coming in, it was uh, a little bit tough that first one, but pulled it together for the second one and uh, sat here having fun. Well, yeah, and you've been away from racing for a little while. How good is it just to have won that first heat? It was good. I mean, just like I said, I was having fun and uh, pulling it together, <laughs> trying to catch my breath. Keep the racing going, guys. <laughs> hey, he said he's only been on the motorcycle about five times in the last <laughs> year and a half or so. I've watched Nico come from 80s, going to 125s back then, and the 250Fs and all the different stuff. And that's one thing about him. He does not sugarcoat it, and he tells it exactly the way it is. He gets that from his old man. Um, it was just great watching them you know, back in the, back in the day, and it's great to see Nico back. And one more uh, matchup left in this first round of the 250s. You got Michael Lieb against Justin Hill. If Lieb is able to beat Hill, they'll have to be back for a third run. Hill has been very fast, though, every time he's been on the bike so far this weekend. But Lieb gave him a great run. On paper, uh, Hill was supposed to kill Lieb, but we saw Lieb come back. And, and I think because Lieb, you know, does some other racing, a lot, of, a lot of national and stuff like that, doesn't do a lot of Supercross. So he's getting faster as the day goes on. So hopefully he can put it all together right now. Here we go. They're locked and loaded. Will this be the last matchup of the first round of 250s, or can Lieb extend Hill to another run? Actually, Hill with the whole shot, but Lieb is able to get to the first wall for, uh, in, in the lead. But right now, Justin Hill making a, a slight way, making his way back. Lieb, though, every time you think that Hill's got him covered, figures out a way to get right back into it. We're at the midpoint after these tabletops. That's the sand section. The table section right there, Michael, uh, Lee, I shouldn't say Michael, but Lee uh, fell back just a little bit, and Hill took a pretty significant advantage right there about two bike lengths. All right, so Lee might, may, might need a mistake out of Hill to get it now, and Hill able to get the triple, triple at the end of the 10-pack. Well, that was beautiful right there, and I think that might be enough to keep Lee covered. Lee's going to charge all the way to the end, you know that. Yeah, Lee is pushing it, but it's Justin Hill with, the, with uh, to advance to the next round. So that's it, our round of 16.
in the 250 division is over. And that will move us on to the quarterfinals. We'll show you what it looked like right out of the gate. I love watching the watching the technique there. Uh, Hill with his body forward does not does not move a bit. And with these guys running that supercross or not supercross, but that gate with the expanded steel, there is no wheel spin like dirt. So you just have to get your launch in the right position and go. Here we're seeing they're adding a little water to the to the track. So we got to make sure that it's not too slippery. And let's send it back to Tina. Well, the round of 16 in the 250 class is finished and you will be moving on. And what have you learned so far that you can take on to the next races? Uh, it's getting drier for sure. The sun isn't uh, being kind to us. So, you know, it's uh, pretty straightforward, pun intended. So, you know, we go into this same game plan. You know, you just got to kind of be like, you know, earlier it was technical and you need to be like precise. And now I think it's a little bit more wide open. So get off the line quick and just chase. And we talked to a couple of you guys earlier and you said it wasn't about conditioning because of the track, it's only about 52 seconds, 55 seconds. But is this heat affecting you guys at all? I mean, I don't know about that. You get, you're, you're pretty out of breath at the end of this thing. You know, it's pretty intense for the whole, whole time you're on it. So um, I think definitely the heat takes it out of you. By the time you're at the end, like your, your mouth's dry, it's, it's, it's pretty hot. So maybe it'll uh, come into play later. It's gonna probably be even hotter. We'll get some water and we'll look forward to seeing you racing down the line, guys. And we'll update the bracket for you here now that the first round of 16 is complete. The next time out, you'll see Muscan against Durham, Jordan Smith against Justin Bogle, Hill against Izzy, and Jesse Nelson will square off against Chris Blows. We are down to what we'd call the Elite Eight of the 250 class. Give it the hashtag straight rhythm with your Twitter and Instagram, all the work on social media. Big crowd here in Pomona, California. They're brave in the heat, just as are the riders. We've completed the 250 division. We'll be going to the open class in just a moment. What do you think from what you've seen so far, Ricky? I'm out of breath. The, you know, the format is unbelievable. The guys are going head to head. We're watching the riders. You know, at first they're like, ah, oh, yeah, it's just 50 seconds, no big deal. But everyone's starting to breathe more and more. Mm -hmm. And here we, we hear Justin Hill talk about how hot it is. Your mouth is getting dry. You start to get dehydration. All of this stuff starts to slowly creep up on you. So uh, fitness is definitely going to play a part. It's only 50 seconds each time out, but they have to do it back to back to back. And their body has to perform each time. Yeah, so we've completed the round of 16 in the 250s. We'll have a round of 16 coming up in the open class. Then it goes to quarterfinals, semifinals, a third place race off, and then the finals. And all matchups are best two of three. Here is the brackets in the open division. We'll start with the left side of the bracket. That's group A. And we'll run this group of eight uh, until they move on into the next round. So your first match will be Stewart against Champion, then Pastrana against Haney, Josh Hill against Vince Friese, Malcolm Stewart against Brett Metcalf. They will all have their best two of three runs, and we'll see which one of those riders move on to the next group. In paper, the top rider is supposed to win each round, but let me tell you, as we saw before, anything can happen. The guys are going faster and faster each time. Here we're taking a look at the guy, the fastest qualifier at straight rhythm, James Stewart. Uh, this guy has so many tricks up his sleeve, and, and he sees he sees the matrix. He sees things that people do not see out on there. So keep an eye on James Stewart. And this is the difference when you get into this first round, when you're taking the fastest qualifier against the 16th fastest. There's a big gap on lap time from yesterday. Right. Yeah, yesterday we saw James Stewart do a 50.76, and we saw Scott Champion doing a 54.6. So that's four-second split. Um, but right, as we said before, James is more comfortable. He's done this before, so maybe Scott has something up his sleeve to give that boy a run for his money. Well, you're always one mistake away on a short run like this so if you're champion you're hoping that there's a uh, opening and they're still doing some track maintenance down here and good thing I mean this sun is absolutely doing a number on this track well it's what it, yes it is and it's they throw a little water down and they can't run immediately because the it, what it does it makes that slime on top and with the guys pushing as fast as they are and their wheel is only on the ground for a fraction of a second to get that traction so they have to let that water soak in a little bit but I'd like to take a little bit of time right here mm -hmm. I got viewers from all over the world I have people from England I had die uh, David Powell hit me up going I can't wait to watch straight rhythm I also had uh, Blake and, and Jeff Ben Rood back in North Carolina and also um, Clint LaRue up in Virginia. I have guys from all over the world that can't wait to watch this. So shout out to those guys and also to my family that couldn't be here. Cassidy, Jake, Luke is here, but Steph and my mom and dad, everybody love you guys. Wish you were out here, but it is hot. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not so bad to be watching uh, from home. Now you mentioned at the track, you know, it'll get dry and then the water, it'll get extra slick after that. 
you were talking about some of the things you can do to try to adjust and get more traction. It could be as simple as tire pressure could make a difference. Yeah, what's funny is that I, I went around and I thought maybe some guys would try a lot of different things, you know, like maybe a steering stabilizer. You're not turning right, you're not turning left, crank it in there so the thing goes straight. When we race down in Mexico and in Baja and stuff like that, you put a steering stabilizer so you can relax your arms and you don't have to hold it straight. But these guys are so in tune with their bikes and they are getting ready for Supercross. They don't want to add another element. So they would, if they put that on there, they might fight that. But there's other things that people go, oh, maybe put a lot of rake into the bike so it goes so the back wheels gets more traction and it wants to go straight but the balance of the bike we've seen that happen in some of the 250 heats where if you jump nose high and you land with the back wheel first that's going to screw you up so having that bike balance is key yeah from talking to the teams this morning it seems like the changes are not as drastic as you would think usually suspension folks are trying to make this compromise between soft enough for turns and stiff enough for jumps so you think they would just go nuts when they're having to put turns into the mix but for the most part they're pretty close to their typical setup well if you start to stiffen up a shock you start to add spring or add compression you take away traction you want that shock to be pliable and soft so it wants to return fast and also stay on the ground and keep that pressure to keep forward bite so if you take that away so you can jump far you're going to lose traction so what's important these guys know what they want travis Pastrana says i want to touch the ground as little as possible james stewart says i want to scrub and be on the ground as much as possible so two different strategies strategies by two great champions. Well, Travis says the scrubs came along after my full-time days racing. Now kids on 50s and 65s are doing it. Travis said, I'm not going to be able to stay low. I'm going to have to jump over everything. Well, there's that, and his knees don't bend so well anymore, <laughs> and he's over six foot tall. So watching James Stewart, how how and also Bogle, we saw that in the 250 heat, that how he gets so contorted and getting his torso down and staying as low as he can, where Travis has been beat up a little bit, as yeah, we've seen, okay. and so his knees don't bend real well. So he's got high horsepower, wants to jump as far as he can and just let it all go. But, um, you know, but we're poking fun at Travis, but I cannot say enough great things about that guy. If you look under the dictionary under stud or badass, there's Travis for strong. And he certainly looked strong yesterday. This is not a gimmick. This not a joke. Travis was right in the mix. He was eighth fastest out of 16 in the open class, so right in the heart of the order. Now we've got the track maintenance complete. We fired him up, put the goggles on. James Stewart against Scotty Champion. That will be the first of your open class. Take a moment, listen to those motors. Both, both are four strokes. You're not going to hear that all night long. No, we're going to have one guy <laughs> in the two stroke out there. And remember, it's best two out of three. Champion trying to pull a huge upset here on James Stewart. Scott Champion, a local boy, but James Stewart with a slight advantage. And about for the first time, we're seeing him uncork league. these big bikes. Stewart already pulling it out a bit. Exactly. What you're, where you're going to see the difference is the, the short explosive speed that a 450 has. It's, it's not quite double the horsepower, but there's so much more. Every time they touch the ground, that wheel's going that much faster. So these step-on, step-offs are a lot easier on the 450. And of course, still pretty darn wet. Yeah, it's wet right now when, when James Stewart is looking and watching, paying attention, and looking for, for dry spots. So you got to pay attention to not only what you're doing, and here we see he just does a triple, 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 and nice and smooth all the way through there. And they're going to jump onto a tabletop that will lead him into the whoops. And Stewart trying to win this first matchup against Champion. He looks to have it. James Stewart going to go 1-0 and oh here up against Champion. Takes a look back to see the lead he had. Just give you slow-mo through the tables. Watching the tabletops, James Stewart, eyes forward, looking forward as he as he starts to accelerate, gets his body into it, just like a skier leaning down as he balances bounces off the top of that dragon back, comes over, downsides it perfect, absorbs the next thing, gets a, a next jump, gets on, step on, step off, step on, step off, and now the finish line, nice and relaxed, a little helmet adjustment, and away he goes, all the way down there through the rhythms, or actually through the rollers, old school. Cool. I wanted, right, I wanted to send it back down to the racetrack and Kelly. And Jason, I'm above the starting line here. You can see that there's some of the riders. We see Shane McElrath, Dean Wilson behind me just hanging out. They'll be in the B group here in the open class. Up here, the atmosphere is pretty relaxed. Guys have monitors to kind of watch the uh, other riders go through the runs. Now, down below is the actual staging area. They'll eventually migrate down there. Once these guys get downstairs and get their helmets on, their goggles on, the intensity seems to pick up just a little bit. So as much as everyone's been saying how much fun this Red Bull straight rhythm event is, when they get downstairs, it's all business. Well, I think what's cool when you get to first time events like this, 
the riders want to watch. They don't want to go to the semi, even though it's hot out, sit in the air conditioning and get some water. They want to watch all the other riders compete. You get an idea. That's the starting block. They're up and overlooking. But here's the thing. When it comes to motocross and truck racing, all this different stuff that the different Red Bull athletes do, and I, I'm fortunate to be one of those guys, I'm a fan. I love watching all of it. And these two guys, they've done everything from X Games to backflips to double backflips to West Coast Championships, all the different stuff. These two guys are the two dark horses in this event. Unbelievable, and this is all based on the qualifying. We ended up with Pastrana and Hansen, two of the most polarizing, two of the most <laughs> popular guys. Hansen, by the way, said he wants to be back as a full-time Supercross racer in 2015. So a lot of these events, he's trying to show where his game is right now. Let's listen to that bike from Travis. Yeah. Hear that two stroke per. CC two stroke, yeah, and like you said, the four strokes seem to get the edge out of the hole, but the top speed is incredible on that 199. And there you see Hansen gets the edge early, then the top speed. And they come Travis out to catch back up. Travis with a slightly different rhythm. He rolls the first jump, then he goes triple triples. He, he clears the tabletop, but ah, that's going to lose a little bit of momentum for Hansen. But here he comes back. He made it work. I did not <laughs> see anybody attack that rhythm lane like Pastrana did, but he's pulled back up next to Hansen. Right now, side by side, oh. he over jumps a little bit into the sand pit. And a slight advantage to Hansen, but we've seen Pastrana come back at the finish, so Hansen cannot relax. Yeah, even James Stewart has said, you got to watch for Pastrana and those rollers at the end. That 500 can go. Oh, oh a case by Pastrana. Can he make up the ground down the stretch? Does Hansen have a cover? Hansen dropped the wheel a little bit. We see an advantage. Here comes Travis. He's making a run. <laughs> He's making a run, but no. Woo! <laughs> Hansen takes the win in a big over jump as he whipped it. What a battle between Hansen and Pastrana, and Hansen takes it by a bike length. Two tenths of a second. Two tenths of a second. That is not a lot. We see both these guys. I love it. You see Travis, even though he did not win that heat, he reaches over, thumbs up to Hansen. He, know Hansen, he knows that Hansen did a great job. Travis will con congratulate anyone, man. We've seen him in tremendous title fight battles, <laughs> running the sticker of the guy that he's racing against. That was definitely fun. And remember, it's best two out of three. So Hansen and Pastrana will be back to race at least one more time. Look at Pastrana. Ooh, almost threw it away here. He almost lands in the center on the sand pit. He loses a little ground there, but he starts to come back here at the end. And he has more a mile an hour, but it's only two tenths of a second, which is about a bike length away. Got to have a big lead on that RM Zilla down the stretch of those rollers because once he uncorks that thing, starts to close the gap back up. Good job by Hanny, though. It was smooth and consistent in that run. Didn't make the big mistakes. His fans are loving it here. <laughs> yes, they California. are. California. It's definitely hot. They, they're drinking the Red Bull, having a good time. And going into this round, we got Vince Freezy and Josh Hill, the brother of Justin Hill. So right now we got a little bit of family affair going on, not just James Stewart and Malcolm Stewart, but also the Hill brothers. And when we saw Hill yesterday in practice, he was so aggressive with forcing that bike back down to the ground, putting body English into it, trying to get every last tenth of a second. Well, we talked about what this what this race can mean to somebody. And for him, right now, he's trying to audition and show people what he can do. Uh, Mitch Payton from uh, Pro Circuit said, hey, I'll, I'll run you in two rounds. Go see what you can do, kid. Off the line, looks like the edge goes to the 45 of Freezy. Yeah, Freezy with a slight advantage, but here comes Hill coming back. They're both running really, really hard. Freezy with a triple out, and then uh, goes into a triple, triple. Freezy on the Moto Concepts Racing 450. As you said, to Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki for Hill. He's got to ride here into the Monster Energy Cup, trying to use that as an addition to get help full-time in Supercross next year. So far, the 75 looking pretty good. But what I just saw on a hill I like, he's staying to the far right, doing his own thing. A lot of these guys have been crowded the middle line. But right there, when uh, Hill passed Freezy, he stayed to the far right and stayed in his own lane. But here we see Freezy making a slight comeback. So Hill cannot relax. He's got to push this, this last uh, whoop section to get all the way to the finish. Whoops, and then rollers, and it looks like Hill has it. Takes the win over Freezy. They'll be back to race each other again in just a few moments here in the best two out of three format. So right now you got Stewart taking the win over Champion, Hanny edging out Pastrana and Hill ahead of Freezy to take you through it. Watch these two side by side. We see Freezy get a slight advantage, does the first triple, but then Hill bounces back. But both of these get, get on the step on, step off, and they're back side by side. At this point, basically at a dead heat, and it's only halfway.
Yeah, and that's what's exciting about this heck. <laughs> Even the biggest lead you have out here is not very big. Exactly, but that's the first time I've seen somebody in that right lane crowd the right side. Most everybody is running right down the middle. Final matchup here of Group A in the open class of the Group of 16. Malcolm Stewart against Brett Metcalf. Metcalf, the veteran out of Australia, won a championship in motocross in Canada last year that actually came down and filled in for Ryan Villapoto on Monster Kawasaki throughout the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship and finished in the top five like he always does. Medi is just a rock-solid competitor. As for Malcolm Stewart, they're calling it Team 7. He's on a Honda 450 that got customized for him. You see how he does. Metcalf with a slight advantage, but uh, Stewart ends up pulling it, uh, getting a lead to the first wall. Stewart tripling in. Metcalf's got a little different combination here. Wow. Big combos from yeah, Malcolm. It looked like Malcolm. I, I couldn't quite see if that was a triple or a quad. It looked like he pulled a quad off. If he is, he's the first one to do that today. And you see the momentum has given him all the way through that section. Mookie. We got Mookie Fever here. <laughs> he's on the gas. <laughs> well, just let everybody know what they know by Mookie. When, when Malcolm was a little kid, he would go to the races with James, and he didn't care. He'd go fishing. He'd hang out and do his thing. So he got the nickname Mookie. But he, I am really impressed with how he basically relaxes as a child. But man, as a man, as a grown-up, he is flying on a bike. So good job by Malcolm Stewart. And he gets a win with a pretty good gap over Brett oh. Metcalf. First mistake there was him casing the finish line jump. No problem. The lap time tells the story. Exactly. And he is faster. He's got the fastest time of the day so far. Malcolm Stewart, a little bit faster than Big Brother James. All right. So these guys continue to dissect this track, and it was that combo right there that helped them do it. First one, everyone's been jumping on, jumping off, or landing on the back side of that tabletop, and Malcolm was the first one to seat bounce. What they call that is they sit down and add preloads to the shock a little bit more and gives you a little bit more height to quad that. So great job, Malcolm Stewart. All right, so that's the gauntlet of 50.2 for Malcolm. We go now into their second set of runs, Stewart was ahead of champion the first time around. It's best two out of three. So if Stewart wins this one, he moves on to the group of eight. If champion wins this one, they will race again for a third time. Now, the question is, did he just watch his brother quad that? Is, and is James going to try it this round? And That's he's on the other side. So we'll see if that makes any difference. Malcolm was in the uh, rider's left side. James in the rider's right. Matched up against champion. James Stewart with a slight advantage, but Champion right there, not giving up. And here is that rhythm lane. Let's see if James is able to do the quad. The triple, triple, but he steps on, step off. So right now, just kind of business as usual. If I was James Stewart, if I know I have a little bit of a lead, I'm going to be looking more to try some crazy stuff at the end of the, of the semis and save some energy right now. I know it sounds kind of like, oh, you know, you're not in great shape, but you are giving 100% out there, and this is a max hit every time that you win. It's not just, oh, I'll take it soft. you got to do it hard. And you save energy, obviously, by winning two straight and not having to go to that third race in the best two out of three format. So I think he's just trying to keep it safe right now, make sure that he has champion covered, and he'll bring his A game into the group of eight because he is about to advance. James Stewart going two up on Scotty Champion. That will end Champion's weekend here at Straight Rhythm. Good run, though, for the privateer. But he is still not faster than his brother, Malcolm Stewart, with a 50.22, and that time, James Stewart with a 50.62. So he's three-tenths off his brother. So interesting to see what's uh, what's going to happen in the next round. All right. And we can hear the big 500 two-stroke idling in the background <laughs> as we're going to have Pastrana against Hansen. But first, let's send it down to Tina. And James will be moving on to the group of eight, but what was your assessment of those first two runs? Uh, they was a little slippery. They just finished uh, watering the track, so uh, a little slippery. Uh, go back and uh, make a couple of little changes to the bike, but it's definitely fun. I, I appreciate you fans giving me the, the hoover and Holland over here, so uh, hopefully we can continue on. Now, Malcolm, your brother went right before you. Were you able to watch him? No, I don't know who won. Who won? Malcolm did. He set a good time. Oh, boy. Oh, man. <laughs> and it's the fastest time so far. Yeah, no, I... Uh, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, giving you some fire under the belly, guys. All right, that's going to be fun if we end up with Stewart against Stewart later on in the program. Right now, though, James is going to meet one of these two riders in the group of eight. It will be either Travis Pastrana or Josh Hansen. Hansen won the first run between them. If Hansen wins this one, Travis is out. It was darn close. 
Yeah, we saw some bickering going on back and forth. We have some B-roll of that somewhere. Of those guys giving thumbs up and Travis slapping his hand and stuff like that. So right now, Travis, you know, he seems like, oh, gosh, golly, shucks, really nice guy. The most competitive person I have oh, ever yeah. met. Everything that you do with Travis, okay, who can go to the bathroom faster? Who can eat faster? Who can run faster? Everything he wants to win. Slide advantage for Hansen. Now watch for this strange combination that Pastrana did the first time they raced. Let's see if he does it again. Yes, he's going to single and double. No one else is doing this. Let's see if it works at the end of the section. Uh, but see, right in the middle, it robs time. But he did get back in front of Hansen. So right now, the race is on. It could be going into a third heat. Travis Pastrana with a slight advantage over Josh Hansen. Starting to pull away. And as they hit the midway point of the course, this is where the bleachers are. You know the fans are going to go crazy for this one. Another close battle. But this time, Pastrana in the lead. But he's got to be clean through the 10-pack. Hanny triples in. Hanny triples oh. again. Hanny triples a third time. And still Pastrana in the lead. And now we come into the last step on, step off of the whoop section. This is where we saw Travis make time, and he does it again. The 500 two-stroke cannot be matched to the rollers, and Pastrana pulls the backflip. And lands oh. flat. Prob <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? That guy is an animal. <laughs> I know it's only for 50 seconds at a time, but it is awesome to see I'm Travis was trying to back at the races. Okay, here it goes into the last round. We got the slide tabletop, and here Travis gets an advantage, and this is where he's been strong. We see Josh lose a little bit of traction. Travis hanging off the back, gaining so much horsepower, and next thing you know, he crosses the line, but watch this. Backflip, almost under rotates, then lands flat. Shoulder comes off, take another look at it, leans back. It, for a second, I thought, uh oh, he's going to under rotate, lands, boom, throws his arm off the handlebar. <laughs> Hopefully, oh, the crowd loves it. How can you not love Travis Pastrana? A lot of the guys have had a tough time spotting the landing, just doing a whip on the finish line jump. Now he's doing a wheelie down the drag strip. That is awesome. So we will have a third matchup between. Hansen and Pastrana, we go back to the starting line area. It's going to be Hill against Freezy again. Hill was able to get the win on Freezy the last time by a little over a second. So Freezy's got to try to bounce back here on the Moto Concepts bike and try to force a third matchup. Well, some of the guys have seemed to favor the right lane. It's gone back and forth between qualifying yesterday and today. And now I'm watching some of the riders. They're getting offline and they're starting to jump up. I saw James Stewart ride far to the right. I also saw uh, Josh Hill also, or also run for, farther to the right. So maybe there's a little something over there for Vince Freezy. And Hill, who saw his brother Justin advanced to the group of eight in the 250s. Would like to match him here in the 450s, but Freezy, he's a competitor, no doubt about it. He does not want to go down without at least getting one run in the books. Looked like Hill with a slight advantage, but Freezy coming back at the wall. Freezy super determined. You can see through those rollers matching up side by side with Hill. Same jump combo. Hill just a little bit more efficient through there, able to edge ahead. Yeah, Freezy overjumped that a little bit, took, robbed a little momentum, and that gave Hill the advantage. But you can't give up. He's got a hope now that Hill makes a mistake and lets him back in it. See Hill stomping on that shifter as they go over that wall jump, and now into the sand, up shifting, then down shifting again. A lot of work here in a short amount of time. On the brakes so hard that he's floating the back wheel. That's, that's awesome how hard these guys push, accelerating and decelerating. Still see the shadow of Freezy there on the right side, trying to keep some heat on. Does Hill have him covered? Checkered flag coming out. Josh Hill going into the group of eight. Awesome job for Josh Hill. No, re um, Watching him go, it's great to see him come back because he had a big injury a long time ago, was sat out for probably two years. Mm -hmm. To come back with that kind of integrity, my hat's off to him. And the final matchup here in this first round, it's going to be Stewart against Metcalf. Malcolm Stewart, who has still the fastest time of anyone so far today with a 50.22. He had a quad in one of the early rhythm lanes, and that's what allowed him to do it. Let's send it back to Tina. Well, yeah, and Josh, you were very efficient there with those jump combos. How key was that for you? Uh, I don't know. That wasn't uh, my, best, my best practice runs at all, but... I'm going to go back to the truck, crack open a can of Monster, and unleash the beast in these next motos. Got to give it up to the Pro Circuit Kawasaki guys and uh, Dirt Shark, everybody helping me out. And, uh, you know, just happy to be out here, and this is going to be a fun race. There's a lot of racing still to be had, guys.
Yeah, and uh, we'll see who Hill's racing up against. He's eliminated Freezy. He'll be racing against Metcalf or Malcolm Stewart. Metcalf's got to get the win here or he is out because Malcolm got the edge the first time. Yeah, and when you're, uh, he had about a two second advantage over Metcalf, but different lane change. We've seen a lot of the guys like doing better in the right lane, but when you're going up against a guy who has the fastest time, two seconds is a lot to make up. So he might need a mistake from Malcolm. And, you know, when you go big and try to quad triple through a rhythm lane, it certainly opens the door. The margin of error just gets that much smaller. So right. we'll see and if Malcolm can do it again. And, and even though he's, we we're talking about, you know, short runs, fatigue is going to start playing a factor here shortly because, like I said, you're, ma you're running a max effort every time you G out or you, you case a jump. If you hit everything nice and smooth, you use about 80% of what you got. <laughs> if you make a mistake, <laughs> you use 100%. Metcalf versus Malcolm in their second run. Metcalf with the hole shot, but Malcolm able to use what he's got to come back and be the lead to the wall. Well, a lot of riders say it's so tricky to hit that roller that close to the starting gate. That's when you're still doing some of your shifting. You're sitting down to the bike to try to get a drive. Then you got to stand up for that roller. So Malcolm able to maneuver through that section a little bit cleaner and Malcolm, get around Metcalf. Malcolm's got a rhythm through that first rhythm section. I hate to double rhythm it there, but <laughs> Malcolm is taking a slightly different rhythm than everybody else, and that's why he has the fastest time. So Metcalf got unlucky to get a draw like Malcolm because Metcalf is flying, but Malcolm is doing everything right. And I feel Malcolm a little bit stronger today than he was yesterday. So he has obviously learned something. Maybe he talked to his brother, but he's got this thing wired, and Metcalf is running out of time. It's over. Malcolm Stewart goes up 2-0 and oh, and is moving on to the next round. Very, very impressive. Let's watch the whole shot. Malcolm with a very, very clean run. Metcalf gets off the gate a little better, but these first couple bumps, you see Malcolm manuals it and constant traction with that back wheel and gets to the wall first. And would not be headed from there. Here he is into the whoops at the finish. Malcolm with a great style. You see his knees in front of his ankles, so that's what it's doing. It's not putting too much pressure on the back, still adding some weight to that front wheel to keep the bike balanced until he gets to the finish line. And Tina has our race winner. That's right, and Malcolm is moving on. And also, you have the fastest times that we've seen so far, faster than your brother James. Why are things working out for you? Um, I don't know. I think it's just because I'm so nervous. <laughs> uh, you know, Red Bull put a, such a great event for her, and. You know, these fans, you guys are hyping up right before the finish line. It's so awesome when, um, when you're going through the whoops and I hear you guys. So hopefully I can keep on going and uh, take the top spot. Well, you got some more racing to, to go, but looking good so far, guys. And he topped James's time again, a 50.60. James at a 50.62. So in both runs, Malcolm Stewart was the fastest of any of these riders each time. But we have one showdown. We've finally gone to a run of three. Hansen got the first one, Pastrana got the second, it's all on the line. One rider's moving on, one rider's done. Do you get extra points for backflips? <laughs> Stop points. That, to, yeah. to me, I think you should probably take away five seconds because Travis <laughs> pulls a backflip <laughs> up as he wins. If he wins this, who knows what he's going to do. But right there, let's just listen to that 250, I mean 500 two-stroke. I don't know if it's a nightmare for me, but I'm getting goosebumps. I know. Because when I used to race those things, you had about, you had 45 minute of moto, or back then 30 plus, 30 plus uh, two. You had a big beat coming out of you trying to ride those. He's got to hold on to it for 50 seconds, and Hansen is certainly a competitor. He does not want to come up short. Hansen gets the lead early. Let's see if Pastrana does that single to double combo here again. Yes, he does. These guys got to be nervous. One mistake oh. could cost him, and Travis has made a couple. He's still able to stretch out that triple and come back on him. But right Tra now, Hansen has the edge. Travis has been really fast in this middle section. He made up ground the last time out. So now going into the sand pit, he almost lands on the ban barrier again. He keeps crowding that. He's going to lose some ground there. But Travis has been fast in the finish. So one small, just one small mistake by Hansen, and now uh, Travis is going to be right there. Travis tripling, trying to get close. He knows he's got speed at the end of the whoop section, but he needs a lot of it because Hansen's got a good lead on him now. Hansen with a slight hesitation, and here he comes. But trying to make it a run. Hansen able to gather it back up and takes the win. And with that, Hanson will go on to the next round. Pastrana is eliminated, and what is that? Well, he's just basically mimicking what he was doing, side to side, swapping out. But Josh Hansen has, should be definitely, both of these guys need to be proud of that run. Different rhythms throughout there, but both of them flying.
Uh, I've got to wonder, Hanson making those mistakes in the rollers, Everybody knows that 500 comes on very strong there. Was he maybe thinking about what was coming up behind him? Uh, <laughs> well, you can see right there, Hanson makes a small mistake, and Travis gets closer to him, but not, not enough. Hanson has got the win. We'll send it back to Tino. Well, thanks, and it's racing, and nothing's finished till you cross the finish line. So how did you keep Travis from be beating you there at the end? I mean, I finally nailed the rhythm section from the beginning. I've screwed it up the past two times, and. I mean, him through the whoops is the best out here, so I don't have nothing for him for the whoops. So I had to get the first part down to beat him. Well, and it was enough to move on. Best of luck. Uh, that was some great racing. We'll give you the updated bracket. Pastrana, Champion, Freezy, and Metcalf have been eliminated. Stewart will race against Hansen. Josh Hill will race Malcolm Stewart in the next round. Now, that was Group A of the Open Division. Group B will have another set of eight riders to come through. First matchup there is going to be Kyle Partridge against Kyle Chisholm. We talked about Partridge quite a bit. I got to think the tallest rider out here. Chisholm's a pretty tall guy himself. So we'll see the different styles, how it applies for these guys. But also, you got to remember that these guys are a little bit closer in lap times. We're not doing the big brackets of like first and 16th. These guys are a little bit tighter. A couple tenths separated them. So now we should see a bar banging event. And Partridge able to get the early lead on Chisholm. And maintaining it through this first rhythm section. Partridge looking good. Partridge, when he uses his body to the advantage, it, it helps him so much because if he leans slightly forward or slightly back, it's so much traction one way or the other. But when you're that tall, if you make a mistake, it's really hard to gather it back up. But right now, Kyle Partridge doing an awesome job. Wheeling through the sand pit, balanced out perfect. He's really putting the heat on Chisholm now. Chisholm's got to find a way to respond to the number 11. Partridge has got him covered in each one of these sections, and time's running out. Chisholm getting a little bit closer, but right now Partridge, I like the balance where he's going, tight knees through the whoops, and he pulls it off. And the win goes to the 144, the Las Vegas native, Kyle Partridge. Smooth, solid run there, and he gets it done. And the time of 50.43, that's one of the fastest we've seen so far. Let's send it down to Kelly, and certainly one of the most popular riders out here. I've got Jay, Travis Pastrana, who certainly had the biggest trick in the round of 16. It wasn't enough to move you on to the next round, Travis. So where to go wrong on that last run? Oh, I went wrong from the very beginning. That first uh, rhythm section kicks my butt. I tell you, I haven't hit a backside the whole time, but it was, it was awesome racing against Hanson and uh, just being on the bike. And thank you guys, man. I crowds cheering so loud. I just, it's awesome to be back on the bike. I was, you know, obviously hoping for a little bit more, but expecting a lot less. So uh, just, just proud of all the guys. Uh, you know, thank you for Suzuki and uh, Cernix and Red Bull for putting on this amazing event, man. I, I can't wait to, uh, maybe I'll come and just uh, just practice on these courses if this uh, this event keeps going on. But uh, I don't know, I'm old, but it was fun. <laughs> old, but he still got it. An awesome backflip. You left us with great memories. Thank you, Travis. Appreciate it. All right, and uh, maybe we'll try to get Travis up here in the booth to hang out with us for a little bit, get some analysis straight from the course, and we'll show you the backflip one more time. Travis is not going to be in an event without leaving a mark on it. It was that slight pause that scared the crud out of me. I don't know about him. And then his arm goes off. We've seen him dislocate his shoulder so many times. And just a consummate showman. He just wheelies by Hanson like, hey, bro, what's up? <laughs> Next up, you're going to have Justin Brayton against Ryan Morris. Real interesting. Morris was a great competitor in Supercross 250 class. He came up short of championship time and time again, but was always right there in the thick of it. Actually retired two years ago, does a lot of test riding and work with the Red Bull KTM team. Exactly. So these guys work together out on the, on the KTM race bike. So Ryan helps out uh, Brayton when it comes to set bike, bike, race bike setup. And right now they're going head to head. And I'll tell you, when you see guys like Pastrana, Morris, and Grant Langston, we'll see later riders who aren't full-time racers anymore. They are not a slouch in this format. They still know how to get it done. And Brayton just did the combo and cleared over the tabletop and the next jump that uh, Malcolm Stewart did. So Brayton is the only one besides Malcolm to pull that rhythm off. Well, we expect Brayton to be one of the top guns in this. 
Always so quick to learn the different courses. Certainly not afraid to go fast through roofs. We'll see if this all comes together for him. But how about Morris staying right in it? Morris is no slouch. When you test that much and you try the different bikes, he's definitely still very, very much in tune. So do not count him out. But right now he's up against, he knows how good that bike is because he helped develop it. But Brayton is hauling. And Brayton in his debut ride with the BTO Sports KTM team takes the win. They will be back to race another in a few minutes. So take a look at this combo. This is the only, him, uh, Brayton is the only one that did it. He goes triple, then he goes into a triple again, and then he goes into a quad. He clears over the top, and then the next jump, and that's what made the difference in this round. So James Stewart and a bunch of other guys have said it's that middle rhythm section. If you can figure that out, that's the difference. Next up on the docket, you got Jake Canada, privateer against Shane McElrath, normally a 250 rider, part of the Lucas Oil Troy Lee KTM team. He's moving up to the big class today, and he's actually on a KTM 350. So we'll see if there's any difference there. If I was going to say the 350 has any advantage, it's stopping for the walls. When you, when you got a 450, it doesn't seem like much, but the bigger piston and the and the drive, uh, the crank, everything moving, it's a little bit harder to stop. Miguel Rath on the number 40 to 60. It's Canada. Canada getting the edge early. Into the wall jump they go. Big air time from Canada there, but he's still able to get the landing clean and maintain the lead. The two guys with a slightly different rhythm section, but here we see McElrath coming back and making an advantage and making a run at Canada. Yes, McElrath able to wrestle it away. Good to see these back and forth battles, and Canada wants some more. Oh, we're not done yet. We're going to the sand trap. Uh, Miguel Rath and Canada run head to head. Here they come back in. Miguel Rath with a slight advantage. Miguel Rath was a first year pro in 2014, but missed a lot of races with injury. So he's trying to get his form back here. And racing some off season events like this could help. Building the confidence here. Looking for a victory. Canada charging hard down the stretch. He's going to run out of time. Miguel Rath takes it. Nicely done on that uh, Lucas Oil Troy Lee Honda. Here's a mistake from right. Canada. Yeah, you see Canada over jumped that a little bit and that messed him up that robbed a little bit of momentum and that was the difference. We talked about it. it's a game of inches. Every little bit counts. Miguel Rath throwing down a 51.5. Brayton at a 51.7 and Kyle Partridge a 50.4. So Partridge so far the fastest rider in this group and that time would hold up to almost anybody in that first grouping. Now and Grant Langston, a racer for at least one more day, my buddy, and broadcast partner from Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, multi-time champion of Supercross and Motocross, both here in the U.S. and around the world, teamed up with Dean Wilson. Wilson, this is his first ride ever for Red Bull KTM. A week ago, he was on a Kawasaki at Motocross of Nations. He was talking about, oh, I got let, jet lag, I need a little coffee, I need a little Red Bull <laughs> just to get me going. But uh, Dean Wilson looking very, very fast. And my hat's off to Grant Langston. I work with him in the, the Torque Series. We do TV together, as you do as well. And for him to get out there and throw it down, he, we were watching him yesterday. Nothing to be ashamed of and everything to be proud of. So my China, as they say <laughs> over in South Africa, Grant Langston giving it a go. It's going to be tough against Wilson, who is second fastest in qualifying yesterday. Leaping into the wall are both of them. Oh, but he comes up short. And Grant Langston goes back into the lead. So Langston able to take the measure of Wilson for the moment. Side by side. Wilson edging ahead now. Over the dragon back, Wilson back with the advantage over Langston. Step on, step off. Very good up to that next wall, into the sand pit area. Slight advantage to uh, Wilson. And he had a little wheel tap all the way on that wall, leading into the sand. Give him a little edge. Hang on to it, Dean. Don't go all the way to the right side of the course, though. <laughs> right in the middle. They're mixing They're mixing it around a little bit. I know we have rules, but hey, this is Grant Langston. You can, you know, he's old. He's been around a little bit. We'll, we'll let him use both sides of the track if he needs to. <laughs> but Dean Wilson looking very, very strong this first round. A little respect to the showman or, you know, showtime. Jeremy McGrath, a little knack-knack over the finish. Wilson takes the win, a nice high five to Langston. You got to give Langston respect. It's been about three years since he's been a full-time racer, and he actually took the measure of Dean early in this one. Exactly. Dean makes a small mistake, and Langston, he's a gamer, man. That guy, he doesn't care. Any place, any time, anywhere, he's going to go for it. Wow. So Wilson has won it. Wilson, Miguel Rath, Brayton, Partridge were the winners in the first runs. We're now into the second runs. It's best two out of three. Partridge trying to get another win over Chisholm. If he does it, he goes on into the group of eight. Chisholm needs to win this one or he's eliminated. 
you can see the pressure on Chisholm taking a deep breath, knows he's got 50 seconds of fury. He's got to give it. It's 100% right now. Either he wins, goes into a round three, or he has to pack it up and go home. So Chisholm really needs to focus on this start and try to get an advantage over Partridge. Partridge, a real dark horse, sixth fastest in qualifying yesterday, and the fastest of anyone that we just saw in this first set of runs. Partridge on the 144. Again, they have to switch lanes from run to run. So he's on the opposite side of the track than he was before. Partridge looked like he got the gate. He actually rolled the gate a little bit, which is kind of kind of iffy when it comes to this. But right now, Chisholm with the lead. Oh, this is exactly what Chisholm needed. He's facing elimination here and comes back strong. And Partridge had a ton of speed down the stretch the first time around. He's going to need all of it if he has any hope of catching Chiz. Right now, we're about the midway point. Right now, we're going into the sand pit with Chisholm. He's got about a two bike length lead, so he cannot relax, though, because Partridge was really, really strong in the whoops at the end. Chisholm has become one of the real journeymen of the sport earlier this summer. Raced in American Motocross National at Unadilla. Drove all night, raced in Canada on Sunday, and won the race. So heck, race in 50 seconds. That's simple for him. Ah, I love it. He took a little, yeah. he took a little lesson from Partridge. Manual, the last eight whoops. So very, very good race for Chisholm. Great to see him make it into the, uh, not make it in the next round, but let's go into a, a sudden death. Yeah, so they're going to have to go to a third run. They've tied each other up with one win each. This is a big mistake here from Ch uh, Partridge allowed Chisholm to get away. Well, Partridge, he hesitated, and Chisholm did the triple-triple and step on, step off, and that's where he made the, made the advantage. So right now we're going back into um, going into the sudden death round. We'll see who's got it. Crowd really filling in here in Pomona. It's about 100 degrees out here, but that's not going to stop these folks. They want to all say they were here for the first time. Straight rhythm ever took place. Well, I have to say, you know, we're watching it on TV, and it's impressive to see that. But when you get down there and you see how big these jumps are, it is unreal. Next up, we're going to have another run between Brayton and Morris. Of course, they switch lanes as they do with each run. Brayton got the edge on him. But uh, Morris, like Langston, guy who does not race full time, you would not know by watching him. He nailed each of the combos successfully. No big mistakes. He's well, hoping Brayton makes one and he can maybe take the win. Well, Morris was there till about two thirds of the way down and then that's where Brayton started to turn it on. So we're going to see if Brayton does that rhythm section in the middle that Malcolm Stewart did. Advantage to Brayton at this point. Yeah, Brayton getting the edge here. Here's that rhythm lane. Can he triple and quad? He triples, double. Does not do it. Look at this, Morris right there. Both of them making small mistakes, keeping the momentum going, but uh, not as fast as they were that first round. Still Brayton able to pull away a bit. Wall jump and now the sand. This is the midway point. Ryan doing an awesome job keeping him in sight. So one mistake by Brayton. And Morris is right there. If Brayton takes this one, it's over. He moves on to the group of eight and Morris is eliminated. Another little mistake for the number 10 but not enough for Morris to get up on him. It's pretty easy for us to say, oh, he's making a small mistake, he's uh, all this different stuff. But let me tell you, that was a very, very clean run by Brayton. So I think he's going to be solid when it comes to the next round. And that's it for Ryan Morris. Good to see him back in action for the day. But he has been eliminated. Justin Brayton will move on to the Elite Eight. And he'll be facing either Partridge or Chisholm, who still have to have a third run to determine which one of those two riders moves on. Our next matchup will be Shane McElrath against Jake Canada, and we'll follow that up with uh, Wilson and Langston. In a moment, we'll have a chance to talk to Justin Brayton, and we'll send it to Tina. Yeah, and Justin Brayton will be moving on, and you had a little bit of a different strategy there in the rhythm section. Just tell us about that. Yeah, I think all of us all day have kind of thought about doing a little quad down there, but just going to stick to the basic line and just do one of the quads through there. And uh, But it's fun. This event is so awesome. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So. It's cool to move on and, and go to the next round. You know, you guys have the right lane, the left lane. Is one of them faster? You know, in the beginning, I thought it would be, but it's really not. It's, uh, you know, maybe the first part, maybe one side is better. Second part, uh, through the whoops, maybe one side is, the other side's better. So it's going to be interesting. Well, and the racing was enough for you to move on, so best of luck, guys. And Brayton talks about the different sides off the start. If you look down there, the starting gate is wider 
as we prepare for another McElrath and uh, Canada battle. The starting gate is wider than a typical starting gate, so the riders are able to move left to right on the gate, which you normally can't do. Right, but, but the, what they brought in is you see that expanded metal, so it's one-to-one -one traction and there's no rut. In Supercross, the guys can go in with their boots, they can't use any tools, prep the starting spot, build that starting spot up. We talked about prep, uh, uh, condition before position. Well, here, it's all the same condition. But out of the gate, you'll see there's a bunch of different ruts, uh, sometimes three different ones, because the riders can kind of be in the middle of the gate or the left side, the right side, and then they form a hole as they get over the metal, so a lot to deal with there. Well, but as, as you look at it, sometimes the rut will help you because now you're digging down to the wet dirt and you're going to get more traction. So it may be a little bit deeper, but you're going to get more traction. So it, it all depends on what a rider's looking for. Does he want to stay high or does he want to dig? You can see how beat up that spot beyond the metal starting gate is. Could be key here in this matchup with Yolan and Canada. McElrath with a slight advantage. Uh, Canada with a little bit of a wheelie going in there, and it's McElrath to the, to the first wall. Canada fighting back, though. Able to pull back ahead. We'll see McElrath's rhythm is better at the end. They both, they both did 2-3 and 3-2, but now they're right back side by side. Oh, great racing here. Canada needs to win this one. McElrath got the edge on him the last time. Canada goes down again. He's out, and you can see the desperation. He does not want to let the 40 get past. No, they're going head to head, and right now, halfway down the race, and they're still side by side. McElrath with a slight mistake, and Canada is able to get the three, but then here comes McElrath back. So it's going to come best, down to the loops. This is the best race of the day. So here it comes in. Step on, step off. Who's going to pull it McElrath off? McElrath makes a run. Oh, Canada had it all the way, and at the finish, McElrath's going to steal it and eliminate Canada. If it's a 3,000 foot course, he had it for 2,800. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you know what? That's what they you, you keep saying. You can't let off. So here we'll see McElrath. He just digs down, stays a little bit lower, gets a little more traction, and just keeps digging. Gets that KTM from TLD out in front and go and, and transfers to the next round. So good job for Shane, the uh, North Carolina native. It wasn't that long ago the Troy Lee team picked him up and said, well, how about you come out to California and do some testing with us? And he's like, I've never been on a plane before. Well, <laughs> rags to riches tail for him. Was, he was flying a lot on that last rhythm, so <laughs> good job for him. Congratulations. <laughs> Let's send it back to Tina. Well, Shane will be moving on, but it was neck and neck for you guys up until those whoops. Take us through that. Yeah, I just, I just got to relax. Like, I kind of put too much pressure on myself, but the, the second half, I was a lot smoother. I almost threw the whole thing away in the rhythm section, but yeah, I just, it's, it's really intense, but this is awesome. Well, it is intense, and I know you guys are having a good time as well, but what's the atmosphere like in the gates for you guys? It's just dead silence, and it's it builds up the intensity so much. You're just like, let's go, let's go, but it's it's awesome. Well, you're moving on. Thank you. These guys, these guys can't fight it. They have to admit they're getting nervous down there. It's like you're being iced, the kicker in football, you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to go. But one of the youngest kids, and, and he spoke exactly what we've been trying to find out. What's it like in there? And he says, normally I got the guy next to me. I can rub elbows with him. I can hear his bike. I can feed off his energy. Now I'm in this little glass cage of emotion <laughs> <laughs> waiting to run off. So great job by him, and congratulations to making it to the, to the next round. All right, we got GL8 Grant Langston against Dean Wilson. And uh, Langston gave Wilson a pretty good run and even pulled ahead of him early. First time around, Wilson was able to get him at the end. It's best two out of three, so Langston's got to win this one or he's going to be an announcer again. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he's pretty he's doing pretty damn good as a rider. Oh, he does oh, yeah. an old-school cross-up, a little flip to the side. But let's see if Wilson tries to pull some of these different things off. Well, he jumped over the top of it, but he's not moving forward. He's got a lot of up and down motion, but not moving forward. So this looks like Wilson is just relaxing a little bit. When we talked a lot when we were watching these runs about forward and back and pushing and pulling on the motorcycle to get maximum speed. Yeah, well, all right now, and so I think he might be doing a save with some energy and trying some different things. He's obviously watching the scoreboard. There he goes for the triple, triple, and then a double right up to, into the last uh, wall jump right before the last uh, step on, step off, and he's got a pretty comfortable lead over Grant Langs. Looks like Wilson's going to get it done. Second fastest in qualifying and wins 2-0 and over Langston. Well, that's a surprisingly fast time. It looked like he was relaxing a lot, so great for Dean Wilson, uh, pulling it together and also putting together a really fast time. Yeah, 50.82. Anytime you're under that 51-second mark, you're doing something right. But still the fastest out of this entire group of eight riders we're seeing battling right now is Kyle Partridge with a 50.4. Got to give props to my man Langston, though. 
Oh, didn't win to. it, but still looks solid. He was out there running, doing better than better than us. We're up here talking about it. He's down there doing. They say there's those that do and those that talk about it. <laughs> well, he'll be back to talk about it, I guess, at some point now. But well done. Okay, we're ready for the rubber game. One to one. It's a tie between Partridge and Chisholm, and this comes down to it. Whoever wins this one moves on. Whoever doesn't is eliminated. The other three riders are already seated. Brayton took down Morris. McElrath beat Canada. Wilson beat Langston. But who is going to come out on top? Partridge versus Chisholm. Well, they both know whoever wins has to go up against Brayton. So it just gets tougher from here on out. So this is your, e your the easiest race was your last one. Partridge knows he's got that fast lap time in his pocket, though, faster than anyone in this group. We'll see if he can replicate that again. He's back on the side of the track he was when he won the first run. Chisholm with the whole shot, and let's see if uh, Partridge can make it back up. Completely different combination to this rhythm lane. Let's see who's faster through it. Two, Will three, it be Partridge? Three, two. But oh. Partridge, is, Partridge is making his way back up. Sorry to step on top of you there. But Partridge is slowly working his way back up. And Chisholm making a small mistake and giving the advantage to Partridge. This is the kind of race that you want to see in an event like this. It's desperation for both win or go home. And they are side by side. It doesn't matter what happens after this. They are racing with everything they got. Chis uh, Partridge with a good rhythm section gets his way through there. Still with a half a bike length over Chisholm. And right now, it's going to be who gets the whoops. It's going to come down to this. Chisholm's got to find something special. Partridge hangs on. He wins it two to one and goes on to the group of eight. Nice bounce back there from Partridge, who struggled a bit in that second run. Taking a couple looks here. We see the riders are basically doing the same thing. They both clear it, but both of them case a little bit. But right here, you see Chisholm lose a little momentum. He lands on the face of the, t of the step on, step off, and that was the difference. Man, Chisholm, as you said, clipped the top of some of those tables, but he certainly didn't give up. You see him hitting it with a rear wheel there. He gave it everything he had to try to make that ground up, but Partridge didn't make a mistake. Partridge put it together. I like the knees in front, but it's still manual and just skipping like two, three, kind of going old school where you're not hitting every whoop. So that bracket is now set. Partridge defeats Chisholm. He'll go against Brayton, and you'll have McElrath against Dean Wilson as well. And we'll show you the bracket here in the open division. We have completed the round of 16. Remember earlier, Stewart came out on top of his matchup with Scott Champion. He will now go against Josh Hansen. Josh Hill will go against Malcolm Stewart on the left side. Group B will have Partridge against Brayton. Miguel Rath against Wilson. That's the open class. Now, what's really critical here, when you get to a technical circuit like this, we talk about making no mistakes. But, I mean, we're talking the difference team jumping six inches too far or six inches too short could make everything when I have a run that's these close. Exactly. When you got this rhythm section in the middle where guys are some are doing double, triple, some are doing triple, 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 some doing double, double, triple, triple. I mean, it's a crazy amount of different ways that you can do this. And if you overshoot it by just a little bit, and we we're talking about having your nose high or low, you want to make sure that you get that front wheel down so that you can drive directly off of that. So let's take a, let's listen to the other riders because the riders have a different met, metho, methodology of what they want to do when it comes to riding this track. Absolutely, and we've heard from some of these guys talking about what it takes to do well here at Red Bull Straight Rhythm. <laughs> What's so great about this event is anyone kind of has a chance. It's about how aggressive you can run down a course one time. Anything can happen. Originally, you know, what we thought with the straight rhythm was, you know, it's just going to be pretty simple and you just wide open. But now after walking, it looks like it's pretty technical. The technique side of it is huge, too. You just got to be on your game all the time. You got to stay low. You got to hit your lines. You got to be really smooth. It's really important to get the wheels on the ground as fast as you can and get a good drive. Trying to time the last jump of the rhythm section so you can get through the rhythm as fast as possible, but land on the last jump. There's different ways to get through rhythm sections, whether you're going to double or you're going to triple. You have to find uh, the right rhythm. Will they change the rhythm through here? No, nope, they each go double, double, triple. Yeah, double, double, triple, triple. You just kind of get the feel for it. I mean, we, we just walk the track, and we kind of can see what we can do and what we can't do, but you really don't know until you get out there on the track. This event is going to put every rider kind of on a more equal playing field. I think the key is to be consistent, uh, no mistake. 20 or 15 laps or whatever, you have time to make a mistake and make up for it. Well, this time, you don't have any time to make it up. It's going to be interesting for sure, and it's going to be cool to watch. And this is straight rhythm, and I think the, the coolest part is that 
there's so many people going to be different, doing different things. Uh, if you're doing something different, it's going to be spectacular, I think. He's got to put that whole shot button down and go for it. Can Wilson do anything about it? Yes, he can. He comes back. Join the show here, Red Bull Straight Rhythm, live on the web. Hashtag us, Straight Rhythm, on Twitter and Instagram, and join the conversation. We've got a big crowd on hand. I'm sure a lot of the people are taking pictures and firing off tweets as well from the grandstands here in California. And we're making news in so many ways. Of course, the first time we've ever had this event, the first time we've ever seen riders eliminated now. We've narrowed it down to eight 250 riders and eight open class riders. That's exciting. We have even see the backflip. Yeah, yeah we did see the backflip. I guess that's the one thing we probably should have expected, as crazy <laughs> as that is, once you get Travis involved. But also what's really cool, some news, a rider who's not competing today, but certainly making some news anyway, Ken Roxon here. Welcome to the show, my man. I know you're a long-time Red Bull guy, but big news for you, switching teams for 2015, making the announcement this afternoon. Yes, exactly. I'm being, uh, I'll switch teams to RCH, the Soaring Eagle, uh, Jimmy John's team. And, um, you know, really excited about it. Um, everything stays the same with Red Bull. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. You know, it, this is a great event. You know, I, I never, I've never ridden it, even on that, that practice time we had once. But I just flew in from Europe, actually. So I couldn't ride it. But, man, that looks fun. So, Kenny, tell us about you were a Suzuki guy for so long. Then you did so great on KTMs. Now you're back on Suzuki. Does it feel like you're back at home? Or is it a completely different motorcycle? You know what? After uh, after about four years of riding KTMs, it, it is definitely quite different. You know, obviously, we have two total different frames, uh, different materials. So that makes a huge difference. And uh, even the suspension is a big difference. So I've been putting in a little bit, uh, a little bit of time on the bike, feeling a lot more comfortable than in the beginning. And uh, we have had a couple of test days. And we have the bike set up already really good. So so it's really right now, I'm at the point where I just say, look, just leave the bike as it is. Um, I just need some time on it, get confident, and uh, I'll be ripping. I know when I, when I made a switch from Yamaha to Honda, it's it's uh, it's a new bike. It's something exciting. You you know you've ridden KTM's and you you did so much training and so much practicing on it. Now you're on something fresh and new. Does it sort of revitalize you to make you want to get back on that bike? It definitely does. You know, um, after four years and it, you know a change, a change is good. You know, it just it gets. You know, something exciting, and, um, you know, it, it depends where you are mentally, but I think for me it was the right choice to do, and I think uh, I fit in great into the team, and uh, I think we'll, we'll definitely do some damage in 2015. I'm really excited for, uh, for the upcoming season. All right, cool. We got uh, the uh, quarterfinals coming up here in a moment. Let's send it back to Kelly to talk to one of our top 250 riders. With Justin Bogle, who beat out Ryan Surratt in the first round, now we'll face Jordan Smith. Justin, were you able to try out any different lines in that first round that could help you here in the round of eight? Uh, yeah, I tried a couple different ways through the rhythm section at, at first and a couple different options throughout the track, so it was good. Uh, coming up against my teammate, we, uh, we used each other to pace off each other yesterday in practice, so uh, it should be a good one. We're pretty close. We qualified right next to each other, so it should be good. Do you have to do anything differently racing against him? Is there something, a, a, place, a place you can take advantage of his style? Uh, not really. Just making sure I uh, time everything right and, you know, minimize the mistakes. And uh, regardless, one of the Geico Hondas will be going on to the next round, so that's cool. Awesome. All right. Well, Justin will be up second. But first up, we've got Darren Durham, who's going to face off against Marvin Muscan, who was our top qualifier. As we start to eliminate guys, is the intensity picking up, Darren? Yeah, it is. It is picking up, and uh, the finals are coming up. This quarterfinals, so I'm, I'm excited to get out there and get a good run. And have you been able to see anything that Marvin's doing? I mean, what's your what's your plan of attack here? Uh, my my plan of attack is try to get off to a good start, get off to a good start, and just stay, you know, stay close to him. And then uh, the last stretch is where it seems to be happening. So try to put a good run in the last stretch and stay consistent. People seem so relaxed. Are you having fun? Yeah, I am having fun. It's it's relaxing when we're here, but when you get out there, the heart gets racing, and it's a lot of fun. All right, a lot of bragging rights, among other things, on the line here at Straight Rhythm, and the 250 guys are getting ready for the round of eight. All right, thanks, Kelly. And the fans are getting ready, too. I mean, it is hot out here, but there's beverages on hand to help out with that. <laughs> 100 degrees, flat, perfect 100 degrees here. Not much humidity, of course, here in California. At least there's a little bit of a breeze. But, RJ, you were saying maybe the best situation would be to be on a motorcycle. Turn exactly. the breeze up a little bit. Or if you are old and retired, <laughs> up in an air-conditioned booth <laughs> okay. watching it on TV. But, uh, Kenny, let's talk about what you think about this. You know, I mean, you, are you kind of bummed you're not riding? I'm definitely bummed I'm not riding, you know. But um, sometimes you just got to, you know, just kind of got to go with it and then, you know, listen to your gut. But, um, 
it is this is such an amazing event you know a, like jason said earlier the tiniest you know couple of inches short on a jump can cause you so much and uh you know the, the funny story is you want to be aggressive as, as aggressive as you can but at the same time you need to be as clean as possible because there are no turns so you can't really you kind of can make up a lot of time but not but you don't have any turns so and, and it's a really short race so it's so interesting to watch and we've already finished the round of 16. He's look at the race format here. We've finished it in each class. So now we're on to the quarterfinals. We have eight 250 riders, and we have eight open class riders. And the quarterfinals will begin right here. This is how your bracket started in the 250 class. And then you see who moved on. Muscan able to defeat McNeil. And this brings us to the updated bracket. Muscan, like we said, defeating McNeil. He'll go against Durham. Jordan Smith, Justin Bogle, who Kelly was talking to down there. And Kelly has picked up more riders down on the starting area. Let's go back to her. Well, I thought we should get the other side of things. These guys will be starting in the left lane. We start here with Jordan Smith. How do you feel about going up against your teammate here in the quarterfinals? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we we practiced together both days, so uh, we're pretty close. So it should be a good race, and uh, at least one of the Geico bikes will be in the semifinals. Anything you want to do differently from that first round? Uh, I just need to hit my marks, uh, make sure I get all the rhythms. Uh, Justin's pretty consistent, so uh, it's going to be a tough race. Awesome. Right ahead of him, and who will be first in the gate, Marvin Muscan. As I mentioned, he was the top qualifier. Marvin, i got to ask you what I've been asking these other guys. Have you, did you learn anything in the opening round? Will you do anything different here in the quarterfinals? Uh, no, like I said, uh, when I was done for my first run, I, I really want to stick with uh, what I know, what to do the best, you know? So... I know I can do like more like triples and stuff, but you know, I don't want to make any mistakes, you know, during the run and make sure I hit everything good. And uh, and that, that, that's it, you know, uh, it's, uh, we got to wait a long time, you know, in between uh, each runs. I mean, after you're done with the run. So it's uh, it's a little stressful, you know, you're like, you know, you're, you're so excited and you want to get, you get back on the track. So uh, I'm excited. Like I said, I just want to make uh, my way through the, the main event. It'd be nice. You're the top qualifier. Do you feel like you have a target on your back? I think so. I mean, always. We, we always do. Like any any racing, you know, when you're the fastest in the morning on the practice, you, everybody is looking at you. So, but I don't think I don't think that those guys are uh, are worried or anything. You know, they we all gonna give our best, and uh, it's gonna be really really uh, like short in the at the finish line. So it's really exciting. Looking forward to some close racing. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you. Justin Bogle back there staying warm doing jumping jacks. It's warm enough just sitting there. Well, but it's one thing to sit there and sweat. Kenny, you could talk about this uh, because you're a current guy. He's sweating, he's hot now, but he's not warming up. What is he doing? Well, you know, what you want to do is, um, you know, like you said, sweating, sweat, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a different thing. You want to get your muscles warm, you know, you want to stretch them out, you know, keep them moving, and uh, that is what makes you uh, feel as comfortable as possible on the bike, you know. Um, uh, you know the riders will know what I'm talk about. What I talk about. If you start in the morning without a warm up, without stretching, without anything, you feel really rusty, and you just don't have the feel of the bike. So you want to, you know, what you want to do is keep stretching your muscles and uh, stay warm. You know, as you can see right there, and I think that's uh, that's key, even though it's hot temperatures out there. Well, in this, imagine it's lap after lap after lap. It's 20. It's 50 seconds. Stop. So it's interval training, just like when you do on your bicycle, but they're coming to a complete rest, and then all of a sudden, bam, going at it again. I know that you guys, when you do your Supercross training, you do sometimes longer motos and shorter, shorter motos. So you want to elaborate on that? Exactly, and um, what, I, uh, what I think, too, is you know, if, you, if you're, uh, you're kind of cold and you, know, you want to keep yourself warm because you don't want to have any load up, you know, like if you're not if you're not really warm and you know your legs start loading up and you kind of get fatigued even though it's just a short race but you know you might want to keep that in mind right what he's talking about by loading up is that you get a uh, basically a leg pump and you know like you get in your arms you get a big uh, rush of blood and it floods the muscle and also you you feel like you're loaded up like you got lead in there so you have a, you have an opportunity to get those muscles warmed up get them firing and being ready to go well Everyone is here to see this unique racetrack. That's why I have such a big crowd on hand. Let's learn a little more about what it take what it takes to build something like this. The funnest part, most exciting part for me in Supercross is the rhythm section, you know? As soon as those guys really start getting a rhythm through the section, they gotta put on the brakes and turn. For us it was like Let's just stretch that thing out and uh, change the game.
is the longest rhythm section that guys have ever ridden. More than 80, almost 90 different jumps on the track. In a super cross track, you can take two bulldozers and really zip around and prep a whole track. Well, it would take me 15 minutes to go from one side to the other here with one dozer. So we staged three dozers, done some crazy things. It's been fun. The question is going to be whether the spectators like it, whether they like this sort of idea, this sort of setup. And when, if the racing gets to be good like we think it's going to be, there's no reason everybody won't love it. And people using that hashtag straight rhythm and pretty cool. So stuff we're hearing on Twitter, bring it back. <laughs> Childhood memories of Excite Bike. <laughs> Those when people wanted to be Rick Johnson on Excite well, Bike back yeah. in those days. Hey, now you're dating yourself. So that person <laughs> has to be over 20 or 30 years old yeah. if they remember Excite Bike. And we go to the quarterfinals for the first time. It's going to be Muscan against Dorham. Kelly talked to them before. Dorham says the goal is to try to stay as close as possible and then really uncork it in those whoops toward the finish. But hanging close to Muscan is not going to be easy. He has been on fire all weekend. But you've heard you heard Marvin Muscan talk about I want to be consistent. I don't want to I don't want to triple where I don't have to. I don't want to do anything unnecessary. I want to be clean, and that's the way this Frenchman has been year after year after year. Well, I wonder then, RJ. Will they start to take more risk as the riders they go against get faster? Remember, it was first against 16th the first time around. Now it's one against eight. Well, they have to. It's not a matter of if they're going to. If they plan on making it to the next round, they're going to have to start taking some chances. Right now, Muscan with a slight edge over Durham. Durham is new to this KTM motorcycle and actually missed a ton of racing this year. He was a Kawasaki rider, but injuries cost him all the motocross races. So he's working his way back up, but Muscan is in fine form. Kenny, what do you see when you're watching this? You know, you can see that uh, Marvin is jumping very clean. He has a lot of intensity, and he didn't mess up once, you know, compared to uh, Derek Durham, you know. That's uh, that's basically key right there. You see it's a pretty good gap for uh, you know, for a straight rhythm, um, and uh, but that's that, you know French people are known for that. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of good Supercross racers from down there, as you can see. You know, we always have people coming to Supercross and from from France, and they're always pretty good. So uh, just one of those things, you know. Look at that nice whip from Marvin. Sweet man, that was a good run by the 25. Fastest in practice takes a good solid win over Durham. Here we'll get right back to it. Our next matchup is Jordan Smith, Justin Bogle. We previewed it. These guys rode together in practice yesterday. It was electrifying. I mean, they were wheel to wheel almost the whole time. And they are teammates, so the equipment is equal as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out with Bogle against Smith. Simple question, Kenny. More motivation or less motivation to beat your, to beat your teammate? Definitely more motivation. <laughs> you, right, definitely, okay. you definitely want to be in front of your teammate, period. <laughs> because that's the thing is they're like, oh, we're teammates, isn't that? I say bull. Every, you want to be the fastest guy under the tent. So if another teammate guy, you're not, you want to win all the time, but you want to be the fastest under your tent. Yeah, maybe a little, maybe a little bit uh, less pressure for Smith. You know, he's just uh, basically came into everything, you know, where mm -hmm. Bogle, he's kind of like a veteran, you know, and, and, and has been a pro for a while. But right now, Smith has the edge on him. Bogle, a little bit different rhythm, though, here. Let's see if he can come back. No, Smith, the kid, wow. holding off his very established and Supercross title winning teammate. Now explain a little bit what I was saying earlier about Bogle. When he does his scrub, he gets way off to the side. Yeah, um, you know, that's what you want. That's what you want to do. I think I'm kind of the same way, but there are different scrub techniques out there. You know, I, I usually start really early in the jump to, to be able to go as fast and to stay as low as possible, you know. Fans are going crazy because these guys have been side by side the whole way. Sorry to cut you off, but we got a finish coming up. Smith coming Look back up, Bogle again. Wow. He might have it. Jordan Smith gets the win. Nice. Unbelievable. Great job for that young kid, man. And he had to earn that every bump, every jump. Great job, Jordan Smith. Wow, they must have passed each other three or four times. I look thought Bogle had run. it, but look at this. Why did he get the run, kid? Um, I just think he probably might have set up a little better, you know, and uh, it's really, you no. Know, I mean, it happens so fast, but uh, for, uh, for a rookie, you know, good job for yeah, basically a Supercross type of track. Yeah, beating a Supercross champion right there. Wow. So Bogle's going to have to beat him the next time around. It's the best two or three format. If Smith gets another one of those wins, Bogle, one of the favorites, is out. Is Smith a 1,000th slower than, than Marvin Muskin? Basically the same lap time, both 51.4, Mar uh, Marvin 51.42, and Smith 51.43. So that was not a gimme. They were both flying. Do you hear how they were revving the bike to get every single power <laughs> yeah. out of it? You want that You want that wheel spinning as fast as possible every time it touches the ground, and, and you know you know better than all of us. Jesse Nelson against Chris Blows here in their first run. Jesse Nelson with a slide advantage. 
Lowe's going to try to come back, jumping right up on this wall. This double, Ryder saying one of the trickiest on the whole track, because it sets you up for this entire section. Lowe's is not a young kid, so he knows that he cannot give up, and he, he had to come back on Pulitelli, so he, he had to make sure that he's working. And he is making Nelson work for it, inching his way back up, and now I believe putting the wheels out in front of Nelson. Yeah, good racing between Lowe's and racing. Nelson. So, Kenny, when you're watching this, what you're feeling it, right? You, you can, you're like dog your head back and forth. You're, you're, you're knowing exactly what you would be doing out there. Right now, Jesse Nelson gets back Showdown out front. again. Here we go. It's going to come down to the whoops. We knew it would be a little bit closer to the quarterfinals than the group of 16. That's exactly what's happening. Race to the finish. Nelson makes it happen. This is a good I've, battle. I've noticed that with Marvin and with Jordan Smith and with, Blo um, with Blows right now, it l seemed like that one side of the whoops is quite a quite more slippery than the other side oh okay. yeah it looks like a lot of side to side action exactly. you see the guy no matter what they're both hanging it on but the guy on the right always seems to pull it together so great eye ken easy against hill that'll be our final in this uh, first group in the quarterfinals this is interesting izzy and hill yeah izzy making the comeback only been on the mic about five times before this event but looks so good so far this weekend but hill second fastest in qualifying and really fast out of the hole yeah, Hill with a great start, uh, getting out in front of Nico, but also Nico's still still a gamer. You used to race against Nico in the 120 in that lights class. Izzy has to try to come back now, and they're headed toward the tabletops and now the sand. So Hill's a little bit young guy, but Ken, you got to race against uh, Nico Izzy back when you when you came and we were racing on the lights. Yeah, for sure. And it's actually been quite a while since he's... Oh, look at Justin making a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Um, he hasn't raced in quite a while, so you got to remember that, you know, that you kind of lose that intensity. Plus, he's on a different bike than, you know, about a week ago. Yeah. So that makes uh, that makes, uh, makes a huge difference, you know. But uh, oh, yeah, you Hill. see that side yeah. to side in that Ooh, same Exactly. Same spot. Great eye. And then, it, as Ken Roxon pointed out, the guys on the left side seem to be swapping more. As they're trying to throw it down, they're getting less water. So Hill able to take down Izzy that time. Rematch here. Moosecam won the first run. It's best two of three. So Durham's got to try to come back on him. No one has been able to match Marvin so far. It was fastest yesterday. He's won all of his bracket races so far today. Durham was about two and a half seconds off his first run. So I don't know if he, once he realized that he didn't have it, he backed off a little bit, but um, Durham's a gamer, man. I've watched him time and time again in the lights program, and he's not one guy to just sit back and, and take a beating. He's going to definitely swing out. Well, when it comes to riding style, a lot of the guys like what they see it at Darren Durham. Just a fun guy to watch ride, and he always seems like someone doesn't take the riding too seriously. He always has fun with the motorcycle, but he's got to push that aside right now. It's dead serious. He's got to be boot scan or he's out. Both guys on KTM, but now Troy, the Troy Lee team has now moved over to KTM. So we see factory KTM, and then we also see uh, Troy Lee's, but basically they're the same bikes. Man, being paired up against Marvin is tough in this event. He has just been aces. We haven't seen many mistakes, so he doesn't give you many opportunities. And that's the thing that, that Kenny was talking about, that a lot of the French riders are very smooth and very technical. They, have, they do a lot of training with their, with their guys when they're on mini bikes. Now, for you, did you have a lot of coaching, or was it your father just pushing you a lot when you were, when you were young? Um, it was actually, it was my father, my father, uh, you know, he just had that eye. He never let anybody talk him into anything, and he just did his thing with me, and then so for me, it seemed like it worked out great, and um, I never really had a coach, and I didn't really believe in it either. So I really just did my own thing, and um, you know, thanks to my parents for you know finally having me here. And Muscan gets the win over Durham, so Durham has been eliminated. Let's check it out here, RJ. Right there, Marvin, as, as Kenny said, Marvin, very, very clean. You watch him when he comes on the downsides of these doubles. When he scrubs, he stays very low. But when he lands on the downside, there's no wasted energy. He doesn't land a little short. He doesn't land a little bit long. He lands right where he needs to get and carry that speed into the next obstacle. So Marvin will move on to the next round. That will be the final four. We'll see who we will meet in a moment. First, he's going to meet Tina down at the finish. Well, and Marvin has been looking so smooth and fast all day long. How are you balancing out being aggressive with that smoothness on this track? Well, you know, it's all about the same, I would say. You know, just be uh, consistent, really, really fast, obviously. <laughs> the fastest as you can, but uh, no mistakes and be smooth. Uh, I'm having so much fun right now. You know, it's really intense, you know. The guy next to it, you know, is, when he's good, you know, you, you got to be really consistent because it's, 
it's so close at the finish sometimes. It's gonna get closer and closer through the, the main event. So like I said, just wanna be uh, consistent and go to the main event. Well, you guys heard it. It's gonna get closer and closer there at the end. Well, we've been waiting for the upset here at Straight Rhythm, and right now it could be in delivery. Justin Bogle, a Supercross champion just a few months ago, back against the wall. He has to beat Jordan Smith here, or he will be eliminated by his uh, rookie teammate. Rookie, he's not even officially a rookie yet. This is really his first pro race. Hasn't raced a Supercross at all. But Kenny, don't I know that you feed off the energy of the other riders, and also you dig deep inside yourself. What do you think about this? Where you're in your own little box when you start? Yeah, it's it's definitely different. You know, I, I actually think it's pretty cool, just because uh, you can really focus on yourself and. Um, you know, sometimes in the races, you 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 know, you're always next to other people, and it could be worse for the one dude or not. You know, so it, it's definitely for everyone the same here, and uh, everybody can focus. Smith Jordan with the Smith, advantage. Yeah. I mean, uh, what I like about Smith is that he carries a lot of speed. Watch when he comes up to the walls. He comes up and carries a ton of speed. He's out actually out breaking Bogle a little bit. Right here, he comes in, stays low, and he still has an advantage over our Supercross champion, Supercross Lights champion, Justin Bogle. Kenny, you are not kidding. These bikes are. So Screaming when these two are out of the track. They're right at the rev limiter and side by side again. Little mistake from Smith. Bogle's got a little edge. Remember, Smith came back on him in these whoops the first run. Let's see if he can do it again. Whoa, whoa. Bogle Sorry. has it covered. And he'll force him to a third and deciding run. This is exciting. I want to see these guys run about 20 times, not Bummer. three. Bummer for Smith. He had yeah. a, he had definitely had a wheel on uh, on Justin Bogle right there. Yeah, but he scrubbed a little bit too much, and that's the thing is that they're trying to slow down and scrub the speed and not over jump, and he actually under jumped, and that's what bit him. Blows against Nelson. Blows gave Nelson a real strong run in that one, but Nelson came out on top by about four tenths of a second. They're locked and loaded down there. And you know what's very different too on the start right here? I think you can really try different techniques because yeah. they're actually not, it doesn't look like they're starting on dirt. No. So, you know, no, you want to exactly. have your body off, less RPM to get maximum traction. Yes, yeah, it's actually a freestyle ramp laid down and they get good traction on that. And the gate's a little wider than usual, so you can move over left to right. Blos pulling back up on Nelson. Nelson gets the edge. Blos comes back. Nelson pulls back away. I like Nelson. He's got the wheel down a little bit, a little bit more attack, slightly more forward. Blos is a little bit sitting too straight up and down, and his front wheel is slightly high. So that's he's going to start losing a little bit. And you can see right there ends up with about a bike length behind. You could really say you could really see when they were next to each other that Blos is actually quite a bit higher than uh, than Jesse. Nelson throwing a lot of body English. We were showing him in slow-mo in his runs earlier today. That helmet is almost slamming against the crossbar pad when he scrubs it over every one of these jumps. Looks like he's got blows covered. But he's staying the straight well. And, and right there at the end, it comes back. Just like Kenny was saying, that the guys are getting less traction in that left lane. Everything was straight. Last couple starts to swap side to side. But let's take another look at that whole shot. Walk us through it, Kenny. Yeah, you can see right here, like you said, it looks like they have a pretty good traction, so they're still keeping their body pretty far forward. And, um, you know, as soon as you hit the dirt, it could be, you know, preference from left to right side. You know, it depends how the rut is. It looked like he looks lost like a fork guard. Let that I think that might have been his might have been his launch protector. Yeah, it might have. It probably was still hooked. And uh, you know, sometimes if, if the button gets stuck or something, it doesn't hook and doesn't unhook. It'll just rip it right off. Yeah, if you look on the right hand side, what, we, what we're talking about is a launch control. They can compress their fork, hold it down, and then what happens is that holds the front suspension down so they can accelerate harder. But right now, let's talk to Jesse Nelson with Tina. Well, that's right. And as these guys move on, and you will be moving on to the semifinals, what's the pressure like amongst you guys? For me, there's no pressure. I'm just going out there, trying to have fun, uh, hit my lines, put solid runs in, and hopefully come away with uh, the title. Well, yeah, and how comfortable are you feeling with your lines at this point? I feel pretty comfortable with them. It's just sometimes you over, I mean, you misjudge things. You get a little too heat, caught up in the moment or the battle, and you just go a little too far and you lose up a lot of ground, so uh, just got to be safe. And I almost lost it there at the finish, so it's got to be smart. Yeah. Well, it's paying off so far, moving on to the semis. That's right, and we have uh, another set of competitors here for our second run, Hill against Izzy. Hill got the edge the first time around, so Muscan and Nelson have moved on. Smith and Bogle have to race one more time, and these two are competing. If Hill can win this one, he's going to the semis. Well, out of all the winners, the slowest time was Justin Hill. So let's see if he can pull off a quicker time this, this time out. Right now, he's got about a bike length on Izzy into the first wall. 
Here we are through this rhythm lane. Izzy trying desperately to sneak back into it. Still a great comeback story for Izzy, who was not even close to condition to ride a motorcycle just a few months ago over the summer. Has now made a comeback, says he does plan on racing Supercross. Hopes to be at Anaheim 1 on this Yamaha in a couple of months. And this is where it starts. Even if he can't take downhill, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. It's been a good Absolutely. run for him. Absolutely. I have nothing but props for Nico Izzy for, for coming back. Hill with a bad little bit 3-3 uh, combo, pulling a little bit bigger lead on Nico Izzy. Into the tabletop. That leads them toward the whoops. The kill backed it down a little bit through there. That was I was actually thinking earlier. It looks like they look very hard, the whoops. So what we do usually in Supercross is once you actually back off a little bit, it makes you it makes you go faster. The well. funny thing is right here, we have a Supercross set of whoops, and it goes into rollers. So, you know, you really got to figure out your technique. And we're going to show you the whoops. You can take us through what we're talking about here, Kenny. Yeah, right here. So you come into the whoops. They're really close together. They're very hard. But it seems like you have pretty good traction. But most of the time, when you get in those rollers here, you know, we don't, we can't really see if it gets cupped out or not, but there are some hard spots, and sometimes it helps if you back your throttle off a little bit to, uh, you know, to not go sideways. Well, one of the things that I worked with Ricky Carmichael, because he was always so hard on the gas, and, and we talked about it, if you're going through that, and I hate to use sound effects, but if you hear bop, 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 and you don't hear the motor slightly bogging down, what you're doing is you're losing traction. You want to gain traction. So you hear that motor bog a little bit, that's traction. So right now, we got Hill with Tina. Well, that's right, Justin is moving on. And at this point in the in the day, a couple more races, possibly another win. What's the game plan? Uh, like I said before, pretty straightforward. But, uh, you know, it's it's getting tricky now because there's some holes developing and, and things like that. So we're just going to have to kind of, you know, be careful. I think that at, uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be tricky. So we need to just be smooth and make sure everything's uh, consistent and nice and uh, nice and easy now. So you want to be smooth, but how with those holes and everything, are you guys having to hold back at all? Uh, not really. I mean, you know, eyes and you know they. Just, they I think I'm kind of taken back. And we're ready for this showdown matchup, Bogle and Smith. And man, they have been so close. Sorry about that. Justin Hill had a couple uh, mic problems down there. We'll get that rectified. This is it, Bogle and Smith, and they've probably been the closest matchup we've seen throughout this event. How do you even pick a winner in this one? Uh, I'm going to put him on the spot. We got the guy who's been here that's done that. Kenny Roxon, who are you taking? Um, uh, that's a hard question. You know, I'm, <laughs> that's you know why what? I'm asking I'm gonna, you. I'm going to take the risk and go with Smith because he's been looking really solid. And if he doesn't do a mistake like he did in the run before, he has always had a wheel on Justin. So uh, it'll be interesting. Here we go. And also, we, he's got that right lane. Even though he lost the start, he has the advantage. What we talked about, you said you saw the guys going faster on the right lane and the whoops at the end, and now Smith with the advantage. Yeah, yeah. it looked like it really looked like he had a lot of wheel spin. But look at him. Did he just do that quad? <laughs> exactly. That there much. you go. <laughs> that, uh, he's the first 250 to do that. Bogle still able to hang with it, though, and in fact, pull back away, even though Smith had the big combo. So Smith's going to have to ratchet it back up. But yes, that whoop section, Bogle's going to have to take on that very slippery left side. Trying to get as big a lead as possible before he gets there. Smith's going to get desperate now. Both do a double, triple, triple. Into a double. Now we're coming up to the last section. So right now, Bogle's on the left, and that's when we've seen some slipping in here. We see Smith and making a comeback. Justin here it Mike. is. Oh, they're going to go side by side. Who gets it? I think Bogle is able to edge him by just did, a bit. Did you see that lap then? That was a 50.5, and the track is definitely not getting better, so. Exactly. Yeah. That is phenomenal. 50.5 for Bogle, 50.6 for Smith. Two of the fastest runs we've seen any 250 riders put in, and they did it against each other. Justin Bogle actually had quite a good lead towards the end, and it seemed like uh, Smith just you know, came right back at it and was a tenth off, so well, that was pretty impressive. Well, very, very good call out there, Kim, because you could see uh, on, the, on the left lane, you watch Smith dig and just hanging old school off the back, and here we see Bogle swapping side to side, so Smith not giving up. And that whoop section on the left side, very difficult. Bogle just able to hang on. Look how close this Look is. Look at Jordan Smith scrub. That's pretty sweet. Oh, man. And that's the end, unfortunately, for Jordan Smith. What an effort he put in against his very established teammate. But he has been eliminated by Justin Bogle. Let's send it back to Tina. Well, and you guys were neck and neck there at the finish. And you went to three also for amongst you two. Just describe that battle of racing. That was intense. It's a, it's a fun deal to do with your teammate. Obviously, our guy Kohanda's are working incredible. Uh, track's pretty slick. Made uh, Got some different tires with Dunlop to uh, kind of combat that issue. But... Uh, it was tough. He he got a lot better run than me through the whoops I lap. So I'm gonna go back, watch some tape, look at that, and uh, 
try to come out in this next round. It's going to be a good one, me and uh, I believe Marvin. So it should be good. That is going to be a good one, guys. All right, we're down to the final four. We want to thank Ken Roxon for stopping by up here. When is the first time you expect to be racing on that new motorcycle? People want to see it, I'm sure, real bad. Yeah, you know, I wish I could actually, you know, race today or tomorrow, but yeah. uh, we're going to have to wait until Anaheim won. But, um, you know, who knows? That, you know, it's, that's, what, that's what it is. And, and uh, you know, put in a lot of good work right now and, you know, come back strong in 2015. All right, thanks for stopping thank by. Thank you very Enjoy much. the show, man. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations, right. and uh, we will see you at Anaheim, champ. That's Ken Roxon, who I know is itching to be off the starting gate in one of these. Here's our tournament. We started out with 16 riders in the uh, 250 class. We moved it down to the Elite Eight, and now it'll be the final four. Muscan against Bogle, Nelson against Justin Hill. Now we have to get down to the final four in the open class. Your first matchup, Josh Hansen, James Stewart, two of the most talented, two of the most spectacular riders on a motorcycle. I know some people wanted to see the Pastrana Stewart matchup in round two, but Hanny is certainly fun to watch in his own right. And he said it wasn't until that final race against Pastrana that he got that first rhythm the way he wanted. Let's see if he can use it against Stewart. James Stewart slightly going off to the left. What I like about James is that he doesn't always run the line that everybody else runs. We saw him earlier when he's in the right lane running right up against the right. You watch James, now he goes for that quad. He hasn't, that's the first time he's done it, so he's getting ready for his brother. I think Stewart saw him pull a tear off. <laughs> what leads to that having to happen in a race like this? Well, I've, I've, we've talked to him before, and you see he'll reach up and adjust his helmet as well. A lot of times he'll use that as kind of a relaxing thing. Take okay. a hand off, pull a tear off, and do his thing. And also, any Anytime you take a tear off of it, it just takes a little bit of glare away, makes it a little bit cleaner. Little gap over Hanny now, and the crowd comes to life as Stewart can now see the checkered flag, but he's got to go through these whoops. Hansen making a late run at it. Hansen making a run, but making a slight hesitation there. But Josh Hansen, definitely a gamer, but James Stewart brings it home. That's tough to beat Stewart in an event like this. He is clearly on his game today, and that is the fastest time of the day. I believe that's the first rider under the 52nd mark, 49.67 for Stu. Yeah, and then let's just tell you, that was the difference between one jump. He just dropped a second, so great wow. job by James Stewart. And that beats the fastest time of the day that was put in by this man, his brother, Malcolm Stewart. Excuse me, he'll be facing off against Josh Hill here, so we'll see if Malcolm can one-up his brother again. He was able to do it on lap times in the previous round. Yeah, the track, in some cases, might be getting faster because the whoops are getting knocked down and they're getting into the, the better. But we see uh, Malcolm Stewart over to the left, but he makes a small mistake coming off there, but very, very fast through those first rollers. Wow, leaping through those rollers is Malcolm. But look at he'll come back with aggression as he scrubs that wall, wheel to wheel. Right Stewart. There. Oh, that's a perfect way to get through that section. Malcolm pulls the triple off again, or the quad, I should say. So right there, we, we normally see James Stewart helping out Malcolm Stewart, but I think Malcolm gave him the class on what to do there. <laughs> so Hill, seeing what he's got to beat now, he knows he's got about two bike lengths to make up. Can he do it through the 10-pack or the whoops? Right now, they're, they're pretty even there, but it was that quad at the beginning that made the difference. Here we're going in, and uh, actually Hill is in the preferred line, but Malcolm has got a great run. Boy, that bike did not go sideways on the left side at all for Malcolm. So he's able to overcome those track conditions, breaking down a little bit, and makes that bike go straight. Well done for Malcolm. Uh, the time, 49.54, he did it again, <laughs> he's a tenth quicker than James. James is not going to like that at all, but here we got Justin Brayton and Kyle Partridge getting ready to go head to head. Kyle has been one of those guys that's pulled off some good stuff, but right now he's up against one of the favorites for this race in Justin Brayton. But Partridge had a quicker time than Brayton in the previous round, so he means business out here today in the 144. It's Brayton taking the Partridge style of getting over the back of the bike through those rollers. Partridge edging ahead. Right now, they're, they're both head to head, but oh, they're right there, Brayton makes a small mistake, but he does regain his composure and get back out in front. Well, Brayton has a background in arena cross. That is very high-paced, quick racing. So he's able to shrug those mistakes off. Despite a few of them, he still has Partridge covered. Ah, but, but just by a bike, like one case, one small uh, wheel slip, and it's going to change. But right now, Justin Brayton has about a bike length ahead. But Partridge is so good in these whoops. He's so tall, so much leverage on the bike. Can he use it to come back on Brayton? He's not in the preferred line. He gives it a run. 
Brayton's going to come out on top. Brayton a little bit slower, very, very low 50s. is a 50.1, so he's about a half a second off of James Stewart. And next up will be Shane McElrath against Dean Wilson. So right now, Stewart brothers and Brayton have won the first of their matchup. This will be the first or the final of our first set of runs, and then we'll flip it back, start over with James Stewart and Hansen again in their second race. Here we see a slight difference. Dean Wilson is lined up slightly to the left side. So guys are looking at that rut just on the other side of the game. And you see what they're dealing with. We'll highlight this. They have that whole shot device you're talking about, locking the front wheel down, and they hit that first set of whoops with the front end locked down. It's a strange sensation for them. They're able to overcome it pretty well. Ah. Wilson right now with a little gap. But Wilson only landed on the downside of the step-on-step -step off instead of quadrant, so that's going to take a little bit away from him. Right now he's out in front, but he has to be thinking about the next round as well. Yeah, still experimenting. And remember what Justin Hill said from the 250s. The track is changing quite a bit. I love the smile on the Hill brothers, man. They've both yeah. got big grins. They're just like they're so stoked to be out here. Wilson appears to have Miguel Rath covered as they're headed to the woods. The crowd comes to life. Wilson has been fast all day today. He was second fastest yesterday. Both these guys brand new to the KTM motorcycle. You wouldn't know by watching them. No, no, no. We, we talked about that, that uh, Dean has, was uh, looking at um, going faster every time he was out there. So yeah. right now, James Stewart is leading going to this next round with Josh Hansen. So right now, it's checkers or records for, for Josh Hansen. So he's got to, got to fight back. And, He's fighting one of the Giants, James Stewart. We might be building toward a Stewart versus Stewart battle. Yes. <laughs> in the next round. They both are one to nothing right now. Malcolm over Josh Hill and James over Josh Hansen. And it's time to fire him up and go riding. Malcolm was all the way, like you said, on the right side of his gate. Now Hansen choosing to go all the way to the left. Wilson did the same. Yeah, we can't see how bad that rut is, but I, but I got to give you, man, I'm watching this. I'm getting nervous and nervous because yeah. it's such a fast pace. But right now, Josh Hansen with the hole shot. Yeah, beautiful start by Hansen. Perfect. Kept the bike straight up. Didn't hook that rut. He is giving Stewart everything he has. James Stewart scrubs a little bit more, and he goes for the, oh, step on, step off, and he goes for the quad. And Stewart, a little mistake as well. So hanny has got him right now, but look at Stewart come right back on him. Remember uh, what Kenny Roxon said is that you got a slight advantage when you come into the whoops on the, on the far right hand lane. So James Stewart in the preferred line for the end. Whoa. Right now, Stewart oh. airs it out. It backfired. It didn't work. Hanson still has the lead. Can Hanson pull off the upset? The Here whoops remain. Listen to the crowd. They're going nuts. Hanson so aggressive, but can he hold it through the final stretch? Stewart comes back, takes the lead and the win. Oh, Hanson gave it. A great effort. Awesome and run by Josh Hansen. Man. And right there, you can't, you know, when you're racing against a guy like James Stewart and you get beat, you just got to throw props where props are due. And uh, there was actually a lot of mistakes by James. You see he doubles, double, triple clutches, and he loses the whole shot to Hansen. And Hansen does a great job. But midway through, James Stewart starts to pull it together. And what James does better than anybody is when it comes to the whoops. And watch his body is low, head very balanced. That bike is barely moving, and throttle is wide open. So great job by both Josh Hansen, but most of all, James Stewart. You know, and I have to wonder, I'm going to throw this at you. Hansen has not been a full-time Supercross rider in a, while, in a while. And what do those riders work on more than anything else? Whoops. whoops, whoops, whoops. Maybe Stewart's edge there was from that section. Let's send it down to Tina. Well, and the crowd is cheering for you, James. Let's talk about those whoops because that made the difference. Yeah. Uh, I knew I was in trouble in the beginning. Uh, I kind of spun off the gate, but uh, Josh was running good. I knew I uh, had to pull a... But Strana moved through the whoops and just let it all hang out. So I appreciate you guys hyping me up. If you guys weren't there, I probably would have lost that one. So I appreciate it. Well, there is a potential race against you and Malcolm. He still has to race. What would that look like amongst you, between you two? I believe you thought that one's exciting. I think this next one's going to be even, if he makes it through, even harder. So, uh, hey, that's what it's for. Uh, brother love. And that's racing, guys. Well, what we're starting to see here as we work from that first round where you had first against 16th in qualifying, we are bringing the fastest riders together and the races are getting closer and closer. Malcolm Stewart against Josh Hill. This should be a good one. Hill has to win it. 
Yeah, and he'll show some remarkable speed. You know, he's talking about being the monster and taking advantage of everybody. But right now, Malcolm Stewart is unbelievably fast. You know, he's learned a lot from his brother, and right now he taught his brother about that that quad. So he's been the, he's been setting the pace for straight rhythm. He has been the fastest rider throughout most of the brackets today, Malcolm Stewart. So that's a tall order for Josh Hill to try to go through this. And even if he beats him in this one, he'll have to do it again in a third run. Malcolm with a really good, consistent start. You, you saw James kind of bobbled a little bit off the gate, but Malcolm that time very, very smooth and very straight. Right now he's got about a half a bike length on Josh Hill. See if Hill can stay cool, calm, collected here. He knows what's happening. Mistake by Malcolm. Puts him right back in it. But still Malcolm able to maintain it into the sand section. Hill pushing hard, has to edge ahead. And remember that left side of the whoops, as Kenny Roxon pointed out earlier, that's a tough line. Hill's going to have to deal with it if he's close. Both these guys are going double, triple, triple, and then double at the end. And right now, an advantage to Malcolm. But Hill is going to have to do something special if he's going to make it back. Hill pushed this. Hard as he can, but it's too little, too late. Malcolm Stewart beats him two to nothing and a 49-2. That is the fastest lap of the day right there, people. So we saw everything. So jo uh, Josh Hill did everything right, but Malcolm did it that much better. Watching the start, you see very straight, doesn't miss a, doesn't miss a lick. Wheelies, manuals, the first three bumps. His wheel doesn't touch and undo that, that whole shot device until the fourth whoop. Wow. Man, Hill put together a great run of 50.5. That would get the job done almost under any circumstance, but not against Malcolm, who is clearly feeling it today. Right. He was only a tenth off of James Stewart that won the, the heat between Hanson and that. So uh, Josh Hill needs to be proud. Did a great job for uh, Mitch Payton and Pro Circuit. But we have the matchup. It'll be Stewart versus Stewart in the next round. Let's send it to Tina. Well, and Malcolm just keeps getting faster and faster, and you will be now racing against your brother in the semifinals. What can you say about that? Man, it's a, it's a dream come true. We were uh, trying to do a little bit of strategy. Hopefully we can, you know, get, I hope I was hoping I would get to him. So I'm pretty stoked on that. And now it's big bro time now. So well, if I beat him or not, I still love him. And uh, hopefully he wins so we can split it 50-50. <laughs> 10 grand richer. Well, we saw you earlier get the quad and then he got the quad. So are you guys helping each other out? What advice are you giving to each other? Oh, yeah, we're helping each other out to be uh, to be other guys. But now I can't help them anymore. So all I know is the fans, you better get ready to get on your feet because it's going to be a great race. It's race time. And I know James has the edge as far as championships and race wins, but Malcolm has been faster most of the runs today. Let's move on to the next run. It's Justin Brayton against Kyle Partridge. Partridge shadowed Brayton through most of that one, then Brayton was able to get away at the end. And it was very, very tight. Only half a second separated those two riders. And now you put Partridge in the preferred lane. And we keep saying preferred lane. We're mainly talking about what Kenny Rocks had pulled up was the traction through the whoops at the finish. And you can see that starting line area is beat up after all these hole shots. Partridge out in front of Brayton early. Brayton comes back. Partridge with the whole shot. Brayton over jumped a little bit. Partridge doing a slightly off rhythm, but now they're back, back head to head. That is sketch. This guy's scrubbing it together side by side on top of these tables. One huge mistake, and they're both going down. It's, it's hard to call right now. I'm trying to look for something, something to point out. They're both doing everything right. So great race. So you know, enjoy, people. Here we are into the tent pack. Brayton with a slight edge. Boy, they are close to, again, only about a foot between them from right to left. Into the whoops. Into the whoops, and this we got an advantage, but right now Brayton is out in front. Let's see if he can, can hold traction. And Brayton is always one of the best through the whoops, and he uses it to his advantage. He defeats Partridge two to nothing. Partridge, though, the privateer put in some great runs during this event. He has to be proud. He did a great job. Kyle Partridge doing an awesome job here. We're watching the, the step on, step off. Both guys getting on top, floating the front wheel, keeping everything light, working on traction on the rear wheel. Awesome, awesome job. So Brayton moving on. Will he be against Shane McElrath or will he be against Dean Wilson in the semis? And that's the finish there. Partridge knew he had to get desperate down the stretch, but uh, Brayton just too strong, and the whoops couldn't make up any ground. Too so Brayton little, gets too it. Too little, too late. That's right. Hey, I want to throw a quick shout out to a, to one of my boys that's going to be heading overseas and get some work done. Michael Keller and the boys from Fort Bragg. So I'm so stoked to be working with them, and also I want them just to go over and do what they do. Right now we got Tina, 
with uh, Brayton. Well, that's right. Moving on to the semifinals. That was neck and neck for amongst between the two of you right there. But what made the difference for you at the end? Honestly, both the runs, I messed up the quad and, and didn't jump it. But uh, still cool to be able to get the win, move on to the semifinals. And uh, man, it's coming down to the whoop section. It's uh, you fans are are in for a treat come the, the, the semifinals and the finals. Gonna, it's going to be fun to watch. Well, we've seen that. Like he said, it is coming down to the whoop section amongst these guys. And our next matchup, Dean Wilson, Shane McElrath, back against the wall for McElrath. He's down one to nothing. He has to pull the upset here, beat Wilson. And if he does, they'll go right back to the starting gate and race for a third time. And we have a surprise guest. I don't know if I'm supposed to announce him yet, but I'm going to ask him, who are you picking? Mikel Rath and uh, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, Travis Pastrana. How's it going, guys? <laughs> oh, I was hoping to be down there still. I know, <laughs> still racing. <laughs> Sorry uh, to see you. Dude, Wilson, I, it's a new bike, but he, he looks really good, I tell you. Yep. Analyze this a little bit. It's talking about the whoops. Brayton mentioned it coming down to the whoops. And... Uh, we had Ken Roxon up here saying the whoop section really started to break down and change. It, it is a lot. And honestly, the, the whoops, um, it, it's just, I mean, here, these guys are, are neck and neck. This yes. is such a great, uh, everyone's kind of going conservative route there. It's th to get the quad, I think that's because of what it takes to win. But look at these guys just What wailing. a battle. Miguel Rath knows what he's got to do. He's got to figure out a way to beat Wilson, or Wilson will eliminate him. Miguel Rath on the 350. Yeah, he's on the smallest bike in the field, and you have the largest bike, Travis. So do you see any advantage for Miguel Rath with being on, being on the 350? Uh, definitely not in the whoops. I feel like that's where this is probably going to come down to. And right now, the, the whoops being the more power you have, the more power you can put down. Well, I mean, he's proved me wrong right here, but. Wilson gets it done. Nice effort by, by uh, Miguel Rath, but he has been eliminated, and we have ourselves a final four of the open class. Wilson, Brayton, and the Stewart boys. Take us through this, I, RJ. I, I think the scrubs, though, it would be better on a smaller bike. <laughs> yeah, well, Miguel Rath made it happen. Well, and if your knees I, I can't bend, scrub either. If but. your knees bend, that helps scrubbing, too. But we watch Dean Wilson. He's one of the taller guys like you, but see how his knees bend, Travis? That's a, that's a great advantage when you're riding motorcycles if your joints move more than 30%. I, I feel almost as old as you, Rick. <laughs> almost. <laughs> hey, Travis, talk about racing that 500, man. You still feel like it was a good decision? Dude, it was awesome. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, dude, you got to be kidding me. This was, this was a great, great day. We're going to send it down to Tina, who has Dean Wilson, who just advanced. Well, that's right. He did advance. And just Dean Wilson, our number two qualifier, will be going up against Justin Brayton, our number three qualifier. How do you strategize going up against him? Uh, I just need to work on my star. I'm spinning a little bit, so I need to fix that. And... Uh, yeah, I just need to uh, hit everything clean, hit everything fast, have a lot of forward momentum, and I think we'll be good. Well, it's all about the forward momentum, and right now, let's send it over to Kelly. You know, we're all ready for the epic showdown of Stewart versus Stewart in the Final Four. I've got their father, Mr. James Stewart Sr. How on earth are you going to watch this match go down between your sons? I know it's going to be a Stewart win it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's exciting, you know, I mean, to, for Malcolm to go up against his brother on a factory motorcycle, and I call his race and his bike pocket race because, you know, we bought his bike and everything to get him to this event, you know, and that's just unfortunately, you know, I told him he's got to dig his way back into this thing, and he's going to give his brother all he wants. He's had the fastest lap, Malcolm, that is, but yesterday when they went head-to-head, -head, James seemed to always get the edge on Malcolm. How do you see this one playing out? Just like they was little kids, you know, I always told Malcolm, you know, it's going to be tough to beat your big brother, you know, because he's not going to let that happen. So, I mean, it's, he's going to really have to dig anything out of his hat to beat him. And James won't roll over and let him beat him. I can promise you that. We're ready for the sibling rivalry showdown coming up in the semifinals. Thank you, James. Yes. All right. And the racing just keeps getting better and better here as we're taking the fastest riders and pitting them against each other. We started out with 16 riders in the open class. We went through the quarterfinals. We are ready now for the semis. It'll be Stewart versus Stewart and also Justin Brayton and Dean Wilson, the brand new guys on KTMs dueling when we get to the open class semis in a little bit. But uh, we are joined by uh, uh, Travis Pastrana. Here we are. Now, Travis, let's talk about this. I know you didn't want to be in the booth because you wanted to still be out there racing, but it was an awesome victory. You did get one over Hanson. <laughs> Got one. Yeah. No, definitely um, this straight rhythm is amazing because when you mess up one jump, you have to think so far down the, the road, okay, which jump do I need to get over? And I tell you what, Hanson was on fire at the beginning, but uh, <laughs> that, that 500 put some power down the whoops. I was wondering if Hanson was worried about that. Down the stretch, you definitely seem to be the fastest rider through the rhythm lane. 
with that 500. We're showing you the 250 brackets here. We'll get back to Travis in a second. Your 250 bracket, your final four, you see it right here. It'll be Hill against Nelson, Muscan against Bogle. Your next matchup with this final four, Muscan versus Bogle. These are riders who have established themselves with professional championships. Let's see how it goes. We'll uh, keep Travis up here in the booth with myself and uh, Ricky, and we'll go racing again. So Travis, watching these guys, and uh, so who do you like when it comes to to this heat between Muskin and Bogle? Right now you got two oh, champions. Here we go. Five seconds, man. This is going to be so tight. I, I'm going Muskin, but I, that's just that's just a guess. That was, that was a hunch. <laughs> oh man, look how fast these guys are blitzing that whoops. See, this is the, the scrubs. Amazing. Yeah, that's what <laughs> you're, like, you're like. How do you? I don't even know how to spell scrub, and these guys are. Dominating. Oh, a little, little bit of a mess up right there. Getting a nice little gap on Bogle. Bogle trying to come back. Bogle's been pretty quick to the whoops his last run, but he's going to have to be really quick to come back. Muscan has just been aces so far in this event. Dude, look how he's not even jumping the backside of the tabletop. He's getting the power down as fast as he can everywhere. It's a, uh, he's, I mean, I guarantee he's running Harvard at 200 on this short track. Yeah, it, it, it's great because he, he doesn't, he doesn't over jump. He doesn't under jump. He gets right on the downside and his scrubs are impeccable. Marvin Muscan, I think he's getting faster as the day goes on. He's going to flirt with under 50 seconds here. Just misses at 50.9. Track's getting tougher. Muscan's getting tougher as well. Wow. And we'll go right to our next race as we're into the final four of the 250s. Hill versus Nelson. These are two young kids who are not afraid to be aggressive on an event like this. Oh man, Hills, I mean, these guys are, are awesome. I think Nelson's just so stoked to be there right now. He's gonna be putting it down very, very hard. And both of these guys are new to KTM, so they're, they're getting more and more comfortable each round. A little bit of a rolling start there for Nelson. He actually gets the edge on Hill. There's not a backstop back there like there would be in a typical motocross or supercross start gate. Hill Someone's comes back. their back tires on that. Oh, yeah. there we go, both got the triple. Onto the table. See, this section is so, oh, here we go. It's oh. so hard to hit consistently. Yeah, man, they were facing some of those things, but not losing much time. Little edge for Hill. I love the confidence of Jesse Nelson. Step on, step off, never touched his front wheel. That takes a lot of balls. Yeah, he's just wheeling across the tops. And honestly, when you're a little bit behind, you see his front wheels locking up over that. They are on the brakes so hard on the takeoffs. Oh. Nelson making a comeback here, closing back in. Here we go into the last section. Step on, step off. What are you thinking right now, Travis? I think I want to be in the left lane, but oh my gosh. That's what we saw, that right lane. Everybody swapping side to side. That's the difference maker. Hill oh, takes the to win. Flat. Woo! That, that is that's why I love the lights class, man. They are not afraid. They're just like, I'm winning. I don't I do not care. <laughs> If you're doing a backflip, you have an excuse. You can, ident you can identify with that. that, Travis, just a little bit. <laughs> I, I never got out of that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll move right back to the starting line and get this uh, semifinal complete. It's going to be Bogle, who has to beat Muscan here. He's out, but Muscan, he's been like a machine out there. But let's no look at the times. Muscan with a 50.91 and Hill with a 50.90. These guys Jeez. are so, they're, they're neck and neck. It's virtually the same. All right, can Bogle continue this? Can he extend Muscan to a third race, or will it be lights out for him? Muscan has not given anyone an opportunity to beat him so far. He's been perfect through his runs. I, I tell you, Muscan has just, he puts the power down. He is he is looking for time everywhere, and that's what it's going to take in a straight rhythm. I mean, he's scrubbing every jump. He's pushing the bike down. He's running times. I mean, these guys are all running times just as quick as the you know the big bikes. Exactly. And the thing where he's talking about is consistency. He goes, I don't want to make any big mistakes. I was thinking about the quad, but eh, I don't know. Better to be better to be clean. But Bogle with the whole shot. Barely. Look at that. Oh, coming back. Yeah. Somehow, Muscan is still able to get the lead, even though Bogle got the better start. Bogle staying low on top of that table. Well, Travis, you're watching the riders. A lot of times they're hitting the brakes to scrub to not jump too far, but it seems like Muskin, when he scrubs, he's rolling a little faster, so he doesn't break the momentum like the other riders. Bogle's got to be so frustrated right now, and it's so hard not to overshoot these, these brakes in the, uh, basically to, to slow you down right here, to not go too fast there, like that right there. Like, yeah, Muskin a little bit late, and now, oh, here Bogle. comes Bogle, and he come, makes a comeback. And no one has been able to beat Muskin so far this weekend. Can Bogle be the first to do it. Moose get a little lower, and that hey. double entering the whoops. Oh, oh no. no! Sideways, Bogle! And that's oh. gonna cost him! 
Muskan takes the win. But look at that. Bobo's just, he's popped. He's like, you know what? I gave that guy a run for his money. That's the thing. You got to, you got, like I was saying to you, there's no shame in the game, man. You, look at the front tires. The front tires are locked up. The back tires are locked up. They are doing everything they can to slow down for those things. They're roosting backwards. <laughs> they come, they're, throwing, they're throwing dirt the other way. But when you put everything down, you got to hold your head up. And you, and Travis, I got to give it to you, brother. You did awesome out there today. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't enough, but, man, it was cool. Man, look at those bumps. Yeah, oh. that left side. What is it cupped out? What has happened down there? The left side, you can actually come in faster because they're kind of smaller at the beginning, okay. and you get a little too much confidence. <laughs> <laughs> you the I think that's what happened to me. Uh, we'll have Tina with Marva Muskan, who's moving on. Well, and he was the number one qualifier in the 250 class, and you will be moving on to the finals. How motivated are you to finish up on top of the podium? Yeah, I mean, I'm so motivated because it's a Red Bull event. I love my sponsor, Red Bull, and, uh, and my key team crew. For today, uh, it's, uh, it's a great day. I mean, first time uh, Red Bull straight rhythm. I think the fans are loving it. And uh, everybody is loving it. It's so excited. So, uh, yeah, finally, I'm in the main event, and I uh, just want to do the same thing. You know, I feel like the right side uh, from where we start, the right side is uh, not the best. I like the left better. But uh, anyway, we got to do both. Well, you got one more race. Best of luck. And there will be one more race, by the way, for the riders who've just been eliminated. We will have a showdown for third place. So Bogle will be back in that one. He will go against the rider that does not advance out of these two, Hill versus Nelson. Hill got the win the first time, so Nelson has to try to make it happen here, or he will have to go into the battle for third with Bogle. And they switch lanes, of course. That start is queued up, and Travis, the gate is wide enough where you can actually make a decision left to right. Yeah, it's great because there's no ruts on there. Oh, look at Pretty big lead right there. All right, Jesse wow. Nelson with a great oh. hole shot. Oh, oh but a big oh. mistake by Nelson. Hill takes the lead. That's one of those situations, Travis. You're coming in and clearing a jump on the brakes, so it makes it so difficult. What? That, that jump, I never hit the backside all weekend. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's such a steep jump, it's so hard to time the back, the back side of it. Well, we saw you go single double at one point going to that first jump. Well, it's sometimes in the Supercross races, you're using the back brake to scrub to stay a little bit lower. These guys are stopping almost completely, and so you're guessing how much to slow down. And look at that seat bouncing through. Man, Hill really coming to life here. It's pretty awesome, folks, to watch Travis over here because he's mentally thinking, man, if I would have known that, I would have done this <laughs> and I would have completely oh. strategy. But Hill, unbelievable. All right, so that is it. Our final is set. It's an all Red Bull KTM showdown between Muscan and Hill, and we will have a battle for third place in this one between Nelson and Bogle. And a high five to the new, now fellow KTM riders. It's Nelson joining, as they call it, the Look Orange Brigade. Look at that Brigade. right there. He just did, he, just slowed down a little too much. He was coming in faster than he's ever come in. He got some good traction wheeling into that thing. And then just, it was, that first section is so difficult. I was going to say also, if you're behind in the run, how difficult is it to not start over jumping things just because you're desperate and you're trying to push harder? You still have to do things just right. Not too little, not too much. I, yeah, I, I never got that. I was just You just went for it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I asked the wrong guy. <laughs> Let's send it down to Tina. <laughs> well... Justin will also be moving on to the final racing up against Marvin. That's going to be a battle. Where's the motivation sit with you right now? Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we did it. You know, we came here as a team, and this is a Red Bull event. And to get two Red Bull KTMs, one and two, no matter what, we're excited about that. You know, from now, you know, me and Marvin are our friends, so let's just have some fun with it. Have some fun. It's going to be a battle, guys. All right, the new guy under the tent there. Already performing well, and he'll go against the teammate who's well established with KTM, Justin Hill, Marvin Muskan. That'll be your first ever 250 final. I, I, I feel that, I know we got this, this bracket right here, but I feel that Hill is really smooth, He's but Muskan just, he is wanting every inch, every millisecond. It's going to be really tough. I mean, Hill's probably a little bit smoother, but it's going to be such a good battle. That's going to be fun. We do have our, of course, semis in the 450. And here's the matchup everyone wanted to see. James Stewart and Malcolm Stewart. And remind you again, throughout most of the runs today, Malcolm had the edge. He was a little bit quicker each time over James. We certainly know James's credentials. Doesn't need an introduction from us. So, so Travis, so who do you like? Pick. You know, I, I go with Big James as uh, guess. I think Stewart's definitely going to win this one. Oh, hey, you know right. what? Nice. That's nice what I like on. about you. You're a smart guy. <laughs> but uh, be between the two guys, being taller and one's a little bit shorter, um, obviously, both. Uh, honestly, Malcolm has been on fire, but every time those guys, they ran practice all together, and yep. 
James definitely has the mental edge. James is not doing the more technical first section where Malcolm is, but Malcolm is taking a huge risk by doing that. That's what Hanson was doing the you know the quad. Yep. It's uh, if he gets it, it's going to be a James catch up. But James and the whoops at the end, holy cow! <laughs> exactly. Stewart versus Stewart in the semis. James with the edge off the start, but we're headed into that uh, combo section that Travis was talking about. This is where Malcolm has made up big time. Oh, James switches lineup. Here we go, James going for four. Yeah, he was he was just staying back. Oh, no yeah. one forward out though. And Malcolm still a little bit quicker through there. Close it up. They're now side by side. And in fact, Malcolm I think's ahead. James coming back on the on-offs. And as you said, going into the last last whoop section, it's a little faster on the left, but at the end we see the right favorite with a little Whoa! more traction. They said the race would be good, and it sure is. They almost came together scrubbing that. Listen to the fans. It's gonna be hard to get on James here. <laughs> James is just so fast. Malcolm tries, but Travis, you call it the whoop section. Belongs to James Stewart, and so does the round win. 49-1. <laughs> Come on, Woo! guys. Man, look at this. Almost contact as they scrub together. Honestly, I mean, James started the scrub, but Malcolm is the scrub master right here. He is on fire. <laughs> and they'll have one more run together if James wins it. It's over. He goes to the finals. If Malcolm wins it, there'll be a third run. I feel like that left lane is better, though. I feel like Malcolm, if he doesn't get psyched out right now, he's got a shot. Okay. Now it's go. Brayton against Wilson, two newcomers on the KTMs. They've each only been on it basically during the week here, leading into this weekend event. Wilson has been very fast on it, though. He was second fastest at qualifying. Let's see if Brayton can take him down. Brayton on the on the on off tabletops. He is putting the power down. Five seconds to go. Dean Wilson, I mean, looking so good on that run. Yes. Brayton with a slight advantage going in, into the wall, but Wilson using his leg to help get him to the wall first. Oh, this is going to be close. These guys have been nearly matching each other in times throughout the weekend. Very hard to figure out who's going to have the advantage. Whoa, Brayton, oh, yeah. didn't do it. Oh. Someone needs to quad out. <laughs> <laughs> This is absolutely axle to axle. Little edge to Wilson now. Got through the on offs a little bit better. That, I, the fact that Dean's going faster on the on offs is just, it's amazing. <laughs> Boy, they both came oh, in so hard. tired, locked off the. He's trying so hard to catch up, and Deaner is just on it. Brayton's going to get desperate. Last double jump. Here come the whoops. The left side has been tricky, though. Doesn't matter. Wilson has Brayton covered, and he wins the run. 49-8. I, I, I just got to tell you, like, when you watch this at home, like, I, oh, man, here's. Watching the replay, <laughs> both scrubbing right here. We see Wilson with a slight advantage. Both of the guys doing the same rhythm section, but Wilson kind of an on-off, and this is where right there, the quad, but then he doesn't quad out or triple out, actually. Yeah, triple out, then you got the single, though. It's, it's tough. If you don't quad, you kind of lose time on that. But, but whatever the Stewart brothers are doing, they're, they're over no, half a second faster. But when faster. you watch at home, you don't understand even the easy stuff. Like, I was just riding fairly, feeling aggressive, and it was not, like, anywhere close to these guys. They're scrubbing over jumps you can't scrub <laughs> off of. you got to pull up to get over them. Well, and there you got you, you – we, we just showed Big James. He's back there. He's so nervous, he does not want to watch this. Imagine what the Peyton father felt like when he was watching his two sons play the Super Bowl together. That's right. Same kind of deal here. And so for Big James, he's like, well – I know Stewart's going to win, just like they, Travis. They didn't play Super Bowl, but again, this is the next last round. You so know what I'm talking about. Thing. It's Not, cool. it was a long time ago. Back-to-back <laughs> -back years they played. All right, so here we go. We've got Stewart versus Stewart. Malcolm has to win hey, this. Hey, there was a lot but of Travis, home runs you think at that time. Uh, I'm going to go Malcolm. Left lane. I got a dollar on Malcolm right now. Right, dollar, uh, Malcolm. dollar. Wow. And here we go. Oh, James immediately at the edge off the start, though. He Mal knows Mal what he's got to do. Watch this. Watch this scrub. Come on, Malcolm. Oh, James over jumps it. You're right on the money, Travis. And Malcolm Quad. able to get the edge. James has a mental edge on Malcolm, 100%. And he will not let his little brother beat him. But I tell you what, Malcolm has been on fire all day. Again, he's had the faster time. So James, he might have to rely on those whoops right before the finish. Because Malcolm has not covered through the oh, first no. half. Oh, Malcolm! Oh, no, Malcolm! Big mistake! Stewart in the lead. Well, obviously, James Stewart. <laughs> now Malcolm is going to have to get him in the whoops. And he's trying. He's got a run on him. Here we go. Stewart versus Stewart. And it's going to be James gaining the win. 
So who'd you lose that dollar to? Uh, I, I don't, did I just bet you? No, I, no, no. <laughs> Man, was that close. It, honestly, Malcolm, it is hard. James is, he's just the man plus i mean malcolm's grown up with him being the yeah. faster one the yeah. whole time any when you hear james behind you like Ugh. stuff like that happens because yeah. you're pushing you know he's coming you know he is the best rider in the face of the earth yeah. right now yep exactly and right and i gotta give it to to malcolm man he's just showed like you said he's been the man all day long one small mistake and you got to hold your chin up if you lose to your brother and the guy like you said who's so dominant in james stewart look at james right on the edge there on the the right side it's getting so hard packed and James is just, he's just getting off of it and then getting really, really good drive. Man, at one point the 50 mark was tough to break and they both went 49s in both of their runs. And Tina is going to talk to both James and Malcolm. Well, James, what a battle. One of the most anticipated heats of the day. Cheering for you. What did you guys think of that race right at the beginning? Were you talking to each other? No, nah, not really. Uh, we you know we're brothers, but we want to race, you know, but I ain't gonna lie. He should have beat me that last one. He messed up on that last single and uh, had a chance to get it back. So big brother's teaching him too much, man. He's coming up too quick. How much was he pushing you? Oh, uh, he had me out of control out there. <laughs> no, nah, it's just great. He's been one of the fastest all day and uh, to be paired up in the same heat as my brother. Uh, it's unbelievable. I, big brother can't keep beating up on him a little much. He's getting good. All right, and Malcolm, you know, James will be moving on to the final. So what advice do you have for him? But I take that money. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but uh, no, nah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, he was faster and that's my brother and I love him to death and I hope that he wins, you know, and uh, if he wins, you know, we come home with $10,000. We're going to split it up. So we already made a we already made a bet. So that's what I called brother love right there. So fans don't ever forget family first. All right, they love you down here. Best of luck in the finals. What a fun race to watch. So now Malcolm has to go back to cheering for James. Yeah, I believe it's 20 grand to the winner of this event. So they say they're going to split it if one of them gets it. There's two riders left. They can prevent it from happening, Wilson and Brayton. I, I guarantee you that was just right then. <laughs> <laughs> that was, there was no deal. No. We're gonna, hey, we're going to split it, right? Sure. Right? <laughs> right? James already was motioning no because he's got control now. So Brayton Wilson. Wilson got the win the first time. Brayton's got to beat him here. He's going into a battle for third against Malcolm. Coming in so fast, and they both got the downside perfect. Real good right through. Oh, going for the quad, but it's just... It works out about the same if you don't uh, if you double double out. Oh, man, Look at so Brayton. Close. That's what I'm talking about. He gets the power down right there. That's helped him get a little edge. Yeah, a lot, a lot of speed little, through those on-offs. Little wheelie out of Brayton, but he still has the advantage by about half a bike length. This is a good race. The crowd is all on their feet right now. Ooh, a little mistakes from Brayton. Can he still hold on to it? It is side by side into the whoops. It's all going to come down to this section. Oh, no. Brayton skipped sideways. Oh, Wilson. Oh, 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 he's got it. Oh. It says tied oh. on our screen. An absolute dead heat. How are they going to call this one? I was, I was Brayton, but it was, it was close. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Unbelievable. Are they giving it to Brayton? Yes, by two hundredths of a second. Right so we are going Brayton to send death. He wheelies in a couple, skips a couple whoops. You got to hit the front and the back whoop, uh, back, back wheel to every whoop, and he missed one, but he pulled it out, man. That is amazing. That's as close as it gets. Watch this. Unbelievable. <laughs> I, I think Wilson had it. If he just was willing to go to flat, I think he had that one. Exactly. If he was, if he was one of the like the Hill Brothers, man, it's gone. It. I'm going to flat. Or like Travis, do a backflip, right? You look like you kind of hung about halfway through that flip. Well, I hung because I was thinking I was going 10 feet past the landing, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> so with Brayton getting that, that means we're going to have to have a runoff, a third race. We're going to show you the photo finish again. Clock is saying a 49-3-3 for Wilson, a 49-3-1. And there is the mark. That, that's not the margin of victory. I still can't tell by looking at yeah, the photo I can't finish. Tell. <laughs> well... All right, we'll just uh, rely Th yeah, on the map. Thank the goodness for transponders right I there. But I, I, t I tell you what, it was just that little bit more willing to to break off of that almost vertical freestyle 80 foot gap at the end. Exactly. I got to hit that with both brakes locked. I got to clear an 80 foot gap with the brakes on. Yes. Mm. Sounds Simple. Good. Easy. <laughs> First time we've seen this scenario. Oh, we got a little tweet here. Watching the best motocross riders in the world tearing up Southern, Southern California in a drag strip. Absolutely. It's double the length of a drag strip. And these fans have been down here in the heat all day. Now they're getting treated to some great racing down to the finish. It's amazing. I mean, it's 105 degrees outside. 
Yeah. Yeah, Travis is right there. <laughs> well, I, I sincerely – thanks, uh, Big Tuna 828. I really appreciate it, man. <laughs> I, dude, I had so much fun out there. But this – and like the, the first guy said, thanks to Red Bull. This event, I mean, you know, uh, Chase Garrett, uh, you know, everybody at Red Bull for, for putting this thing on. Um, it's been such an amazing event, so much fun, so much excitement, and it's going to get better and better as this goes on. And how, and how, how, much, how much was the, uh, the crowd a factor? It was huge. When I had the lead for like two seconds, <laughs> the crowd was, I could hear them over the bike. And that's a 500. That's a really loud bike. Exactly. You know all about that. It, is, is but it. it had to smell good inside that little box. It smelled two oh, stroke yeah. oil again. Oh, here we go. Five seconds. Winner to the it. final. Yeah, winner to the final. Other one goes to the third place race. And you cannot get any closer in speed between these two based on the last one. Unbelievable how fast they're going. Wilson with the, Wilson with the head shot, the whole shot. Wilson's going to be hard to catch. He does not make a lot of mistakes. Brayton really working the motorcycle through that section to try to make up whatever time he can. Here's the on-offs, Travis. You think Brayton has the advantage here. No, Wilson not letting it happen this time. Wilson got a little more angle. He's just like he's charging a little harder this time out. He's I know it's not I willing to lose. No, yeah. I, I agree. But here's the problem when you charge a little hard, you make mistakes like that. Oh, Brayton made a huge mistake. Brayton not able to triple early, tripled late. Running out of time. Does Wilson have his Wilson ticket to the final? He's got a turn on the Brayton. outside. Brayton, a huge run. I think he's got him. He's got it. Holy a come from God. behind win, and Brayton is going to the finals. And well deserved. Brayton has been on fire all through practice and all through qualifying. I, I cannot believe he just got Wilson there at the end. It looked like he grabbed another gear, Travis. I mean, is there a six-speed in there? It must be. <laughs> it has to be. Because he got on that right-hand side. And what's funny is uh, Kenny Roxon was talking about how the guys are swapping side to side and losing traction on that left lane. And so it just goes to show. It, it's the wildest thing because the left lane has been better all week through those whoops. And everyone lines up on the left thinking it's going to be faster. And the right has just proven to be better time and time again on this last heat. But it's something you don't know if you're not watching all these things. Wow. Let's send it to Tina. Justin Brayton going to the finals. <laughs> That's right. Justin will be going on to the finals. That end section made all the difference. Walk us through those whoops. We've seen that from other racers before. Yeah, how was that, guys? I told you. <laughs> now nah, the whoops, man, it was, uh, I knew it would come down to that. We're all so close, but this is, uh, it's just fun. I'm stoked to be in the finals. Well, it is going to be a battle up against James Stewart in the finals. What preview can you give us? Obviously, James is one of the best riders in the world, but, uh, I'll give them all. We'll see what happens. Ah, oh, there you go, guys. It's going to be a battle. All right, Travis, let you get back down there and watch these finals. But uh, overall, I know you have fun with everything you do, but this one seems to rank pretty far up there. D this was the most amazing event ever. Um, yeah, Jeremy Malott, all the guys at Red Bull, thank you for allowing me to race. And uh, I cannot wait to maybe do what Kerry Hart did and just uh, pre-run the course from here on out. This is going to be epic finals, and uh, I'll be in the stands watching. All right, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, thanks for coming up, bud. Thanks, Rick. It's always a pleasure. Uh, all right. Well, pleasure's all mine, brother. We are going to show you the updated brackets here as we have final set and races for third place as well. So some of these riders are not quite done yet. That's the finals for the open class. James Stewart against Justin Brayton. I have to say the smart money probably would have been on those two. Brayton is always good in the whoop sections and learning jump combos. We know what kind of damage James Stewart could do. But in the meanwhile, Dean Wilson and Malcolm Stewart are going to match up for third. That'll be in a moment. But we have our third place matchup in the 250 class coming your way. This is for the bronze. Jesse Nelson and Justin Bogle. Bogle just barely eliminated by Marvin Muscan. Nelson just barely eliminated by Justin Hill. And these guys are waiting for their run. This will be the uh, podium in the 250 division. This one's going to be very close to call. That's what's cool about this, man. As the races have gone down, RJ, you're getting a better matchup between riders that are equal in speed, and we keep having these near photo finishes, or in the case of one run, an actual photo finish. And these guys have been fighting tooth and nail all day long, and the, the course is getting worse and worse, so the racer with the more, more experience could be the guy to pull it off. Man, I think Nelson's a slight edge right now, but it'll depend on how Bogle attacks this combination. Bogle does it, gets the lead. But then Jesse does pull back up a little bit. Everything is going to come down to those whoops. We've seen the right lane is faster. It seems to be deteriorating less. I don't know if that's the way the water's hitting the track when they water and prep it. But right now, Jesse is in the shadows. But Bogle is doing an awesome job up front. Bogle has to watch those whoops on the left side. Look at Nelson closing back up on him here in the 10-pack. Listen to those motors. Just yeah. They're screaming. 
Nelson's got a hope for a mistake from Bogle. He got a little one. Is it big enough? Side by side. They Nelson, give it to Nelson. Wins. Nelson pulls a come from behind victory. Great job for Nelson. And it's less than a tenth of a second, about six hundredths between Bogle and Nelson. Nelson takes it. Now open class, the first run of their battle for third. Dean Wilson, Malcolm Stewart. Again, almost impossible to pick a favorite between these two. Their times have been so close throughout the weekend. And they're both similar in stature. They're both taller, bigger riders. They've both been fast all weekend long. So once again, uh, I'm going to give the advantage slightly to Malcolm. But you know what? Wilson is going faster and faster every run. I think what's cool about this is there are four or five different sections on this track that can make the difference. This obvious first jump combo is tough. We've seen pass in the whoops. We've seen the single before the 10 pack make the difference. What will tell the story this time? And that was it right there. The quad quad, it seemed to make the difference. But Wilson is right on his tail, so it's not over yet. Wilson looking for a drive on top of these tabletops. Malcolm Stewart so far so good. It's actually a Honda underneath. That's a Malcolm Stewart squad. He was on the Troy Lee Designs Honda team for all of 2014. But as his dad said, that's not a factory bike. They put it all together themselves. They do double, triple, triple, back to a double. And now it comes down to the last step on, step off, and the whoops. Wilson's in that left lane. That is not favorable in the whoops. And Malcolm Stewart's going to hold him off and take the first win. It's best two of three. So Wilson's going to have to beat him the next time they match up, or he'll settle for fourth, and Malcolm Stewart will go to the podium. And he did that. He also was 49-3, so still throwing down awesome lap times. Now we have Nelson and Bogle. If Nelson wins it, he will have third in the 250 class. So Bogle's got to top him here. You can see how bad the ruts are coming off the start there, and that's Jeez. why the guys are moving to the left and to the right. But sometimes the rut can help you. It can hold you in place, and also you're digging down to some, looking for any kind of moisture because moisture is traction to a certain point unless it's mud. But right now, Jesse lining up, looking for that rut. And the riders are saying between the transition from metal to a rut to a very a short flat section to try to get your shift right to get ready for that first roller, that's a lot of things happening in a very short amount of time. Both of those riders coming off dead heat, but it looked like Jesse Nelson with a slight advantage. Yeah, Nelson does lead them over that first double. So Bogle's gonna have to get desperate and he trickles in. Step on, step off. Bogle comes down the backside and makes up a little ground. Now we're back to a dead heat. Bogle's gotta win this one or he's out and it will finish fourth. Oh, yeah, just listen to them winding these things out. And what Kid was talking about is when you're on that rev chip, you got your wheel spinning as fast as possible. So every time it touches the ground, it's lurching you forward as much as you can. So you are wringing the neck out of that thing. But when you hit the rev limiter, that cuts the power of the motorcycle. So you got to time the shits just right to not bump that too much. Here we go, side by side, into the whoops. Will it be Nelson or will it be Bogle? Look like Nelson with a slight advantage. And from the left side, feet off the pegs, gets the job done. Jesse Nelson's going to take third at the inaugural Red Bull Straight Rhythm in the 250s. And that, he had some serious pressure. He had to make the left side of the whoops work, and he pulled it off. And you're also racing against the defending Supercross, champ or Supercross yep. Lights champion. So right there, a big move mentally, physically, everything for Jesse Nelson. That's right. He's going to be thinking about that come Anaheim Supercross. Wilson and Stewart. Malcolm got the edge on Wilson the first time. If Malcolm wins this, he is your third place finisher in the open class. Wilson wins it, they'll go back to the starting gates for a third run. You can hear that low RPM. They come over that, there's so much traction they get on that metal. Wilson jumping into that jump. But see, Malcolm scrubs a little bit more, just like Travis said. Malcolm has been the scrub master of the yep. day, even though James beat him. But Malcolm has been keeping the bike lower and, and, and taking advantage of those jumps more than anybody. Into the on-offs. Malcolm still has the edge. Ten pack is coming up next. But this single jump is where Malcolm made a mistake against James. He gets it perfect this time. Here we go, double, triple, triple, then double at the end. But now Malcolm, um, actually Wilson is in the preferred line, so if he can throw it down, he might be able to pull it back up. But no, Malcolm Stewart brings home the bronze. Just too strong. The bike got sideways, and he just made it happen. 49-0? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. You know, Travis was alluding quite a bit to the mental edge 
between James and Malcolm. Malcolm, when he hasn't raced James, his runs have been aces, and that 49-0, I believe that's the best time anyone's put in. That, 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 that's the fastest. That's the fastest uh, race to the fastest. Um, I want to say lap today. Yeah. But uh, I've been getting a uh, tweet from my friend uh, Lee. Told me it's a straight. It's not a lap. It's not a lap. Uh, run. But anyways, the fastest run. So we are set for the finals here at Red Bull Straight Rhythm. The 250 class will be a Red Bull KTM showdown. The new man under the tent, Justin Hill, first race ever on that motorcycle against Marvin Muskan, who's been riding a KTM for the last couple of years. Who is going to take it? Hill has been spectacular to watch. Muskan has been so solid and consistent. It's going to be very hard to pick a winner in this one, Ricky. Ready to go. And they both did the electric start of the KTMs. They yeah, fire them up. How do you pick that. a winner in this one, man? Well, you got you got experience and uh, youth and enthusiasm. Yeah. But you know what? Experience has been shown in everybody. When you got guys like Travis Pastrana and also Kenny Roxton that are impressed with Marvin Muskin, you have to go with somebody like that. But hey, this is straight rhythm. Anything's been happening. Hill on the 32 in the left. Muskin picks the left side. The rider's left. Here we go into. That very tricky first rhythm lane. Muscat with a little bit of an advantage. And he goes for the triple, step on, step off, but Hill's making a slight comeback. But as everyone's been saying, it, it's, they're so impressed with Marvin is that he doesn't make any mistakes. Everything is precise and so clean. And Travis Strana earlier talking about him hitting everything so perfect. You can see how much roost he's creating on the back side of these jumps. He's hitting the back the perfectly. Look at the roost every time he lands. Yep, right on the downside. There's no resistance. He's doing everything that he needs to be doing. But Hill is staying right in the wings, and he's in the preferred line through the whoops. So if, if uh, Mus Muskin can keep it straight, which he does, he will bring home the win. Uh, Marvin Muskin has been so strong in this event. Well done, Hill second. It keeps it close. We're set for the 450 final. It's the open class. These riders have been strong. We expected them to be good coming in. They have lived up to the billing. James Stewart and Justin Brayton, they are going to be matched up to go for the gold here for the first ever Red Bull Straight Rhythm. Stewart, he is going to pick the rider's left lane. He had the first pick. Brayton is going to be forced over to the right. A lot of riders feel that the left lane is better for most of the track, but the loop section on the left is very difficult. We've showed that that, uh, that the right lane comes in at the end. If the bumps are a little bit bigger, but it seems like, I don't know if it's shadowing or sunlight or whatever, but the right side seems to favor everybody through the whoops at the finish. The first ever open class finals matchup. Brayton wheeling through those rollers, running side by side with Stewart. James, a little edge there on that triple. They brought it together. Quad, yep. So right now, Brayton's matching him, but James has a little bit more speed, hitting everything a little bit cleaner than, than Justin. So they both pull the quad out here against each other in the final. Brayton bringing everything he has to it, and yet Stewart's still able to pull away. Into the 10-pack. Stewart's got about two bike legs on Brayton. But can he keep the bike straight on this left side? The whoop section coming up. It's very difficult on this line. But Stewart is so good with throttle control. And right there, you can see why he goes so fast through the whoops, and he brings it home. 49-5 for Stewart. That's enough to top Brayton, who put in a good run of his own. But not enough to top Stewart. Both of them doing the quad side by side. Big scrub. James gets a little bit lower, but here we see triple. Right into the, right into the, I'm sorry, triple, triple, right into the quad. You can see that James is a little bit lower, and uh, Brayton actually over jumps a little bit, and that gives James about a bike length advantage. Two fifty riders are back at the gate. Muscan versus Hill. Everything on the line. If Muscan wins this, he is your champion of the 250 class. Hill has to try to beat him and extend it to a third and deciding run. I, I can't pick a favorite because I love both of these guys. I love Marvin. He, he's just so clean, so so smart, so smooth. But I love the smile of Justin Hill. He's always got a big smile on his face. He's such a gamer. So in my book, they're both winners. But guess what? One of them is coming over with the gold. 
Who's it, it going to be? Hill Moose actually had the edge. Advantage. Yeah, actually, well, I thought that Hill actually had the advantage coming off the, the gate. gate. Yeah, and then Moose Camp got him in those rollers. Hill's got some work to do. And actually, Hill was a little bit cleaner on that quad. Right now, he makes the advantage and he comes back. Yeah, he's actually got the lead on Moosecan now. Very few riders have been able to even do that, let alone beat him to the finish. Moosecan back again. It's going to be who makes the who makes the least amount of mistakes right now. Both of these guys are putting 10 tenths down, leaving nothing on there. But right there, Marvin seems to be a little bit better on the break when he comes up to the walls. Here it is, triple, triple. Double out. Hill's got to find something special, and he is not in the preferred lane. Can Moosecan keep it straight and smooth to the finish? Both guys looking really strong through the whip, but Marvin Moosekin with the win. He's got the first ever championship in the 250 class of Red Bull Straight Rhythm. The Frenchman was the man to beat all weekend. They had the target on his back, and they couldn't figure out a way to solve him. So you're watching both these. Both these guys, no one was making a mistake, but Marvin was just that much cleaner. And that's when you hear from words from like Kenny Roxon and also Travis Pastrana that are impressed with that. That's, that's uh, it's hard to question guys with that much talent. And then you, you watch Marvin through here, very clean, very focused. Hill doing exactly what he needed to do, but just was off a little bit. Clean has been the word we've used, our move scan throughout. And he likes to celebrate old school style with the heel clicker, taking it back to the 90s and also taking it to victory lane with Tina. Well, that's right. And Marvin, you just kept it so clean all day and you rode powerful. How would you sum up this win? You're the first champion in the 250 class here at Red Bull Street Rhythm. Yeah, I'm so happy. I mean, everything went uh, actually perfect. I mean, yesterday I was the fastest in the Today I was doing uh, pretty good and I feel like um, each run, you know, everybody was getting better and faster and like Bogle, Nelson, Justin Hill, they were all uh, doing better and better. So, I mean, like I said, I just had to, uh, to be really consistent and hit the wood perfect, the rhythm perfectly. And uh, like I said, I was not doing one of the rhythm, but the triple triple, but uh, you know, I was doing my thing clean, you know, so I'm so happy, you know, Justin rode, rode really well and I'm so also happy that uh, 3K GM on the top three, so uh, that's pretty cool. Thanks to, uh, to my friends for coming, my, all my sponsors, my family watching, and all my friends you know, in France. I'm sure they're, they're watching even if it's uh, late in France. So uh, thank you, everybody, and thank you for all the fans for coming for the first time. Red Bull Straight Rhythm, and uh, see you next year. Congratulations. The strategy paid off, guys. Will this be the last race of Red Bull Straight Rhythm? If James Stewart takes the win, it's over, and he is your open class champion. Justin Brayton needs to beat him here to force a third run. Stewart has been almost unbeatable, although his uh, brother Malcolm looked to have him on the ropes in the previous round, but James was able to come back. Well, can Brayton put him in that position? Well, he, yeah, Brayton definitely can, but as, as Travis was say, saying about James, is that he's very mentally strong. When he's in the right frame of mind, nobody can touch him in the world, but Justin Brayton is one of those guys that's gritty, did arena cross, he doesn't care. He's a gamer, he's gonna go for it. Little edge for Stewart in the rollers. Brayton tries to respond by jumping huge in his first section. The double quad again. Neither able to quad out, they go double-double. Brayton is right there, but that's the thing. James is not making any mistakes. He's winning by inches, and what you do is you make another inch, another inch, another inch, and that's how you put it down. So Brayton is doing an awesome job. He's right there, but James just needs to make one mistake, and he'll be back in the game. Into the 10-pack, tripling through the middle. These guys have both figured out the perfect way to dissect this course. They're doing the exact same combos. Into the whoops. Brayton's got to find something special here, or James Stewart will have it. Stewart does. The first ever open class champ of Red Bull Straight Rhythm is James Stewart. And the Stewart brothers are going to be on the podium together. And well done for Justin Brayton, the runner up today. Well, definitely. And for, for a lot of the guys that even though they might not have won, here we're watching these guys go, go head to head. And you can see James just stays a little bit lower. And this is something that Brayton can take back and get ready for the Supercross season. You get to ride side by side and basically get a riding lesson from one of the best guys. So. There's no losers here. Everybody, no injuries, no big crashes, and awesome racing. This has been an awesome day.
<laughs> Every rider we talked to said they just had a lot of fun with it. I'm sure they were getting nervous at times, too, especially with the big prize on the line here in the final. But that mental toughness, you mentioned it, James Stewart has certainly been here before. He's won plenty of races and championships. He put that experience to work, and he goes in the history books as the first ever winner of the event. Let's send it down to Tina with our winner. Well, and James, you told me earlier today that you were going to win this. You were out to win. How much did that focus pay off? I think you misunderstood me. I wanted to try to win it, but, uh, man, a uh, couple of us that last race with Hanson and uh, those two were my brother. Might not have been here, but I appreciate you fans coming on out, especially we got to give a shout out to Red Bull for them thinking outside the box, doing something cool like this, having you guys come out and uh, as, as racers, it's here to stay. So uh, definitely happy to win this thing, but uh, pumped to see a great event turn into a good one. Yeah, where do you see an event like this moving forward? Man, honestly, I'm more tired now than I do when I do 20 laps. So uh, yeah, I think it's a great test for us uh, as racers. And like I said, for the fans, it's, uh, it's simple. It's head to head racing, win or go home, baby. Congratulations. What a huge win and great day of racing, guys. Stewart family has to be happy with this, putting both brothers up on the podium. Malcolm and James, Justin Brayton, like we said, solid performance, making his debut on a new bike. That's a good way to get it started. A whole lot of a whole lot of greatness going on. I wanted, mm -hmm. you know, big props to Jeremy Marlott and the whole Red Bull crew, as James said. Thinking out of the box, doing something different. And I'll be honest with you, when I first heard about it, I'm like, ah, how exciting can that be? I am a fan. I am a big fan. There's the, it's endless what they can do with the with the course as far as making it more difficult, faster, slower, all these different things. But all in all, it was safe. The riders were challenged, but they weren't hurt. So it, it was a great event, man. I'm just so stoked. And you know what? I finally got to sit up here next to my hero. Jason Wagon. Oh, but, well, I think you could mention maybe Pastrano or Roxham with that. I kind of feel the same way about you. It's good to work with you, RJ. <laughs> We're watching you at the Midlands winning races when I was just a young buck. Hey, hey, doing hey, what, hey, uh, hey. It's all right. But People hey, look, are looking up to James Stewart in the same way. And the crowd. Southern California came out. This is a hard crowd because it's a hot day. A lot of people, you know, California fans are kind of fickle, but we're in the IE, the Inland Empire, where dirt bikes, energy drinks are king. And right now, Red Bull and Straight Rhythm is uh, reign supreme in the IE. And James Stewart reigns supreme over all that. Great to see him back in action. Certainly had some setbacks, some health problems late in the motocross campaign, but he is obviously back to 100% now. Malcolm, he's kind of auditioning, by the way, for a ride next year. Talked to Big James earlier, and he said, you know, if we get the phone call, we'll be glad. Oh, he's going to get a phone call. Team. Yeah, he's going to so? get a phone call because there was it, this was a stacked field. Brayton and everybody. Yeah. There was a lot of different guys. You know, Ryan Dundry had, had a little bit of problem over donations, and so he wasn't able to come race this, but... I'm telling you, Malcolm was faster than his brothers most of the time. So if he can just get that monkey off his back, being the alpha male, being James Stewart on top of him, I guarantee you, you're going to see Malcolm, Malcolm Stewart win some championships. If you're looking for a ride next year, it's a pretty good resume bullet to say I was actually faster than James Stewart at times. Exactly. So Malcolm can say that. And I showed James Stewart how to do a quad yeah. in the straight rhythm. So a lot of great things going on. Uh, big props to the whole Stewart family. They did a great job. And uh, that man, that's the guy right there, the man of the hour, James Stewart, came back and put it to everybody. And we'll celebrate also our 250 champ, Marvin Muscan. A lot of these riders want to carry the momentum into Supercross, and it begins in January. Muscan has come so close so many times to a championship there. This could maybe be the catalyst to make it happen in 2015. And that was the thing. You know, a lot of these riders had the opportunity to try crazy different things on the motorcycles. But as you were saying, a lot of them want to stick with the normal program and use this as a springboard, race what they expect to race every weekend. Yes, but will they come back with something different next time? So they're uh, right now they're learning, they're trying all these different things. I think every I, – I didn't hear one negative thing. All the riders nope. had smiles on their faces. The fans loved it. I hope you guys loved it. I enjoyed announcing it. And uh, so we got to come back. We'll wait for the podium here and a chance to celebrate with our top three in each class. We mentioned it's uh, two Stewarts and Justin Brayton in the 450 division and an all KTM podium in the 250 class with Nelson Hill and Muscan. That's Rado, longtime friend of uh, James Stewart, lives out here in California, so he's always around when we're at the races on the West Coast. He's actually handling Malcolm's bike right now. And they're headed down toward the uh, podium area to shake some champagne and celebrate. Yeah, there's a little bit of money on the line for the win, too, although I don't know if James is really going to split it with Malcolm, like Malcolm yeah. thinks he is. <laughs> about that. 
about that splitting well, it thing. I thought that I had to deal with Malcolm. I, I, oh. Is he going to split with all the Red oh. Bull athletes, even though I'm an old truck driver? Maybe, you know. We're starting to fraction it up quite a bit there if yeah. we get to that level. Yeah, Malcolm, good luck on that, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got to beat him in the race, I guess, if you want the money. Also, it's interesting, so many riders making debuts on new motorcycles here October 1st. We always say it's kind of uh, Christmas Day in motocross terms yes. when the new contracts begin. It's amazing how quick these guys were on new equipment. Yeah, they, and we saw yesterday, like Dean Wilson, it was his third ride on the bike, so the first round a little bit uncomfortable, wheeling a little too much, endoing a little bit too much. But then as the runs went on, he went faster and faster every time. So Roger DeCoster, the man was letting Dean know that, and uh, all these guys should be proud. Yeah, well, I talked to uh, the KTM folks, for example, and they're like, we love having this as a welcome for our new riders to the team. We have two new riders with Justin Hill and Dean Wilson, and to be able to race in a really fun format like this where we're all learning together is a great way to build the chemistry for the championship racing that will be starting in about three months. So there's the podium in the 250 class. It is all KTM. A brand new ride for uh, Jesse Nelson. He's been part of the Troy Lee Designs and Red Bull family for a long time, but they have now switched from Hondas to KTMs. Hill moving over from Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Second, and uh, Nelson going up to the podium. And it looks like it's uh, Kevin Kelly and David Iger, the boys from DMXS Radio, handling the uh, live podium. And there's the big trophy. Looks like a little replica straight rhythm track right there. A little there. dirt jump right there. Yep. But Jesse Nelson doing great. He's, he's, he's come, overcome a lot of adversity, was kind of a breakthrough last year, and I think he'll learn a lot from this. He'll gain a lot of strength from this, a lot of confidence. I look forward to seeing him being running really, really strong because KTM now with TLD, it's a whole new ball game. Justin Hill second. Hey, remember Justin Bogle's a guy that now has a Supercross title under his belt, and they were able to come out on top of him, although Bogle gave them great a, run, a great run and finished a close fourth. And there is Muscan in the center and on the top of the box. Basically untouchable all weekend. Only a few times did anyone even get in front of him, and no one was able to beat him. Very impressive. And the great thing was is that he said what he was doing is what everybody saw, the consistency. He goes, I could have taken bigger chances, but I chose to take the cleaner line and not, not push the mistake. So those three riders need to have a lot of pride. They will remember this day for the rest of their life. First ever winner. We're going to be talking about this for a long time. Muscan's tired. Hard to hold that thing up. <laughs> I mean, James Stewart said he's more tired after this than a 20-lap main. Well, and like I said, it's intervals. You're, you're going max, then you're coming back down. Max, then coming back down. In a Supercross race, sometimes you start you start to get tired, then you start to adjust your body position and what you're doing. These, by the time you figure it out, it's after the fact, and then you're, <laughs> you're catching your breath going down the drag strip. All right, we celebrate with some Red Bull and, of course, some champagne as well. All right, let's see who's got the, you know, does the Frenchman got to figure it out better? See, he, he took his glove off so you can get a better seal oh, and a longer squirt. Oh, you don't analyze you anything. I like this. There you go. That's why we have RJ up here. <laughs> yeah, Nelson needs a little more practice. Slow on the draw. You always take your gloves off, guys, because the thumb has a better, has a better seal and you can squirt people better. Wow. Now, a lot of times we'll see them even run the goggles up there. Yeah, you get sprayed in the face, but these guys are all teammates, essentially, so they're very kind to each other. Jesse well, Nelson finally figured it out. He's got it going. Well, he's a young man, so he's not yeah. used to opening champagne. Probably but plenty of that in his future, though. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. And we'll wait for our open class podium as well. There's Stephanie from KTM. Marvin's happy. And uh, for a lot of these guys, I think what also puts them in a great mood, this is easy. They're mostly based in California. They take their drive up the road, get to hang out with their friends and family. Yeah, even though he's, he's from France, but they, he, they they all live out here because yep. the factories are here. There's a lot of uh, South Coast, you know, or uh, Southern California racing, and also the weather. All right, it's starting to snow in Wisconsin already. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's starting to rain back in Europe and also on the East Coast. But out here, we got a lot of sunshine, so the guys can get a lot of testing in the winter done. Yeah, it's prime testing time out here, and this is a good way to get it started with the straight rhythm event. And now we're setting up the uh, open class podium with Malcolm and James Stewart, and Justin Brayton. I know that, uh, you know, the Stuart, uh, Malcolm and James, they're certainly flashy riders and everyone expected them to be good, but you've worked with Justin Brayton. I've known him for a long time. In Supercross, for example, early in the practice sessions, he is always one of the fastest riders. When it comes to figuring out rhythm and jump combinations, he's always quick to the draw, and that's the kind of skill that pays off here. And he's impeccable when it comes to his training. You look at the, you know, obviously he's pissed off because second place sucks you know what i mean <laughs> no one wants to get second yep. place but still you look at him he's very very composed I, I loved how how his work ethic he's very strong but 
solid. That's the word, that's the word you think about when you think of Justin Brayton. He's there every time. But I'm so impressed with Malcolm Stewart. So get ready for your phone to ring, buddy. That's right. I mean, he needed to perform here to be a little audition for a ride next year. I can't imagine a team isn't impressed by what they saw from Malcolm today. We've never really seen him race well, a 450 right. indoors. He was yep. mostly lights and stuff. And being a bigger guy, it's hard to tote that 250 around. You know, it's, it's carrying every 10 pounds is a lot. So when you get somebody like get him on a big bike, he, he can use that weight to his advantage. He certainly did today. Brayton ends up the runner up. Uh, was decent yesterday, but again, these guys on the new bikes, he seemed to get better every time he rode. Yeah, and this is great because the, uh, every time you race against somebody, you always bring, you, 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 it's different than practicing, qualifying, and all that stuff. When you're racing, you're given everything that you got, and you put your mind into a completely different state. And right now, James Stewart is the man that was had it all going on. Well, he certainly was the favorite coming into this one. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but you got to deliver. It's not racing on paper. It's racing on a racetrack. And James Stewart does it today, winning oh. Red Bull Straight Rhythm. Finally made a mistake. He, <laughs> he's, he is tired. He can't pick up that trophy That's and balance right. his Red Bull. So you know he's not going to be a waiter because he can't balance one drink on, on a tray. <laughs> so I think, James, stick to racing. You're awesome at it. So <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's going to have to switch jobs. Yeah, I don't, see, I don't see that anywhere. He's doing all right. Obviously, everybody, I was joking. James Stewart <laughs> is the man right now. And also the crowd stuck around right here to the final moments of our finals. It was obviously very hot out here today, reaching over 100 degrees, but they all wanted to say they were part of the first event. I know we're proud of saying the same thing as well. I think he's here to stay. Definitely. Final thoughts here. I am a uh, Red Bull straight rhythm fan, and I can't wait till next year because I, I know Red Bull, they're going to make it even bigger and better. I, I get to race Frozen Rush in January, so I've, I've experienced their events. This is going to be bigger and better. Thank you for having me on, buddy. No problem, Ricky. And you know that all the riders that competed and all the riders that are watching this are interested in upping their game and coming back even stronger the next time they run it. It has certainly been a pleasure bringing you the coverage here as James Stewart and Marvin Muscan are your champions of the first ever straight rhythm. The, all the great racing action and excitement we expected, this event delivered. And as the rounds went on, the racing got tighter and tighter. The speeds got higher and higher. The temperature went up. The racing was hot as well. Certainly was fun to watch. For Ricky Johnson, Tina Dixon, and Kelly Stavis, I'm Jason Wigand. Thanks for joining us, and congratulations to our first ever winners, Marvin Muscan and James Stewart. <laughs>